eyes. I do want to see the items. I don't know what so the far. fuck happened, okay, chat. Did pick up the belt for a little bit of CC, but damage is coming out. We'll try. Yeah, this might be it for the side of Area 77. Oh. You can see down. Half health is the car. This could be it for the fiends. God. Against Area 77. GG's. I don't know what I'm the shocked. fuck happened. I've never seen my OBS made like a beeping this. noise and then it was GG's. Like it just fucking everything just went downhill. Like I froze and then like my my YouTube was like, you better you better do something. You better do something or we're gonna turn the stream off. I was like, when they have the gas they're able to kind of ended up winning though. God damn it. Stupid, stupid, stupid YouTube shit. Fiends is going to be moving up the bracket with a three-point lead, and that's. I don't even know. You know I gotta get these other teams with ready, bro. With BTK and also wow. <laughs> Devious Act will be putting them up on the board here. Yeah, for at least the next hour, we're fiends finding themselves at the top of the leaderboard right now and in dominating fashion here. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you can even take a look at the score here 12 to 9. It, it wasn't uh, a full fiends game, but once they I have no idea what happened, chat. The advantage, they did not let me let me go, go make sure that this fucking quick, live. Oh, uh, God. A quick, a quick the thumbnails here. ass. 40% cooldown for Zyda Kohari grabs the belt it's like using my actual course and the golden staff so lots of damage and, and 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 you can see he's just using his second skill dash and gets the auto attack dash and gets the proc and i i do want to mention though pro destroy and uneven even with the zero two zero three early on all right uneven thumbnail thumbnails correct it impact in the late game but i want to say pro destroys violent uh, like he is taking and soaking up all the damage he played that utility jungle perfectly now a77 you know we love the roger please play that <laughs> ah, that was so much it. fun to see but unfortunately you guys just fell a little bit short in this match I, I want to say there were a lot of engagements and I mean even for me looking at it it looked like you had Kohari down dead to rights uh, but then he just oh turned, man and you can see taking, <laughs> even damage taken uh, Kohari not shy to get that stat as a well gold per minute okay. damage dealt and damage taken here an absolute Ooh. menace once he got those items once he was and only and that's the thing the great thing about Kerry and how Kohari played it only needs two damage items he can start setting up with a lot of that defense but as soon as he gets those two items for damage he I think is ready sure. to rock and roll and that is exactly what we saw in this game and, and quite honestly i i don't think my obs crashed somebody take the so i'm like fucking and the sand i don't know what the hell happened it, it computers just forgotten ones but definitely taking a poop a very strong and dominating performance from yeah. somebody quite honestly that majority of north america have not seen right and this guy getting bloodhounds ready of roles. it seems like he's definitely found his professional role uh in the industry the marksman definitely fits his style and you know i i was yeah, fiends ended up winning Harry was not finding too much success oh god this series but there's Cole too much shit going on pretty my brain's gonna melt on me 89 percent team fight participation this man is just taking everything and winning every single fight and I, I want to say that is the mark of one of those right. really great players in North America. Well, in, in the world, when it comes to players, you, when you are able to exist and be successful, uh, despite how your team is going, despite if they're on the on the rocks or if they're falling back, he Kohari is just one of those players who doesn't might end up having to take a break here for the NACT. He alone in his lane is going to be successful, and he. If uh, there's no he sound, I think that's you, yeah, because I can hear the, it uh, in the field the battle liz predictions well said well said, unless i'm uh David, unless i'm tripping definitely that that man in that lane who's going to be a game changer and turn the tides around i mean i'm surprised by the fact that you is the one who says oh i'm shot by the i was like i can hear it i can see it playing that. so, so you is, tell us how are you winning in that prediction game this season i i love my boys you know quite honestly i'll so, sometimes you just got to vote where your heart <laughs> desires and you know you shouldn't let anyone stop you from living your dreams if i want to vote fiends on an upset match would i think a77 has dominated this first half of nact they they, they prove and they've gotten the hard matches and they've done well against it but fiends here with the fire with the sparkle is like that's 
it's so beautiful. I mean, because you actually voted for Fiends for many of the series, even against the hardest ones, you still have your faith in Fiends. So do you do you believe that Fiends is on the top, maybe top two or even three spots? I I always say that, especially a lot of the young teams have to prove. They, 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 they have to show the results first. And Fiends right now is showing the results on the biggest stage of North America where prize pool, money, people, everyone is watching in. So are you 77 trolling? On the way now, do I think they are a complete I mean, could be. I still think there's plenty of great. Sorry about that, Chad. I'm not DA, quite sure what DK, happened to my OBS. DK now has Maybe I was just doing way too deaths. much. And come back. So, you know, there's still a lot of games to play, Liz. Yeah, you do is just trying to balance the tier right now. So MVP, of course, is Kohari the Great. <laughs> the Great. Private, let's take us through some replays and the player. I mean, I, I Kohari, I mean, even here, I, doing such a great job of, of being able to, like we talked about, he doesn't need his team to be successful for him to be able to become, you saw here, this is the start of it, where they really underestimated how Kohari, if they were going to be able to take him down. And this kind of started the one to two man that, uh, and then I want to say the three kills that he was able to get here. They dove for Kohari here, but a great set by the side of the Fiends allowed him that space. And then here, Sniper. he's going to come out on top, just absolutely. Absolutely dominating. Gonna take down ISO here. Finds a kill onto Yureshi here as well. Two uh, two kills here unanswered from Kohari there <laughs> with that like one HP as well. And then here, I mean, a burst down on the Jules Cutie who didn't even realize. Didn't, <laughs> you, you could tell he's back at base right now, wondering about the truck that hit him there as he thought he was safe under the tower. <laughs> And, and and we not only have to talk about the the micro that he has right he was able, he's dashing forward onto plays that i think everyone would start running away so we're not talking about his micro efficiency but his macro his iq his game sense the way that he shots calls goes into the bush on the boss side gets a double kill shut down on two of pretty much the most dominating performers in that match like this it's, it's a new prince I think. absolutely i mean 200 <laughs> iq gameplay for sure kohari i can't believe i underestimated him or <laughs> actually i just voted for the underdogs you know a77 are you able to kick people out of the vod ninja season. that's exactly why Jewel, jules is still in it i'm sure that's the same for private as well <laughs> it's okay for uh we both have are keeping each other <laughs> I, I tagged the him bottom of the uh, yeah, i tagged him right but now. i was like <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not me. Yeah, he's just like so, big chilling. 50 50, but, you know, I got the luck of the draw this time around. Yeah, I think this season is not the season. I never listened to you? In terms of the <laughs> ocean. How? how? Of, is it uh, Ocean? Like Ocean. Definitely not the season where you want to play the <laughs> How do I not I'm listening so to you? All the teams, they're performing so well, and all the new teams that have risen. Who beat them? Fiends. Fiends. But I do want to say, like, even the, I enjoy playoffs the is just I've been wrong so for testing times, right now, to be honest. Like, the playoffs are, are good, but where you don't exactly know who's gonna win. I want to we'll say the see. past seasons, it's been kind of uh, I mean, there were some do we uh, do we have there, to let the, the part, observers know, know that we're to kind of just going back to normal? Who was the strongest of them inviting right now, though, at the top eight right now? I want to say there's about five teams that are just back and forth. Uh, it's hard to tell which which one's gonna go over just because team a beats team b doesn't mean that uh team a is gonna be able to beat team c Hesu, what's team, up? C beat team b it's just that the, even the, none of the formulas throw everything you think you Kohari, know about ISO. out the window or predictions Sheesh. out the window because right now i want to say all of these teams are showing just how hungry they are day's going again, good man obs crash we're trying to do rock, right? this is not the double elimination these teams they're placement here and yeah course, matter, damn be they're gonna be meeting each other in the upper bracket, G the G bracket the spot. so there's just so and meow in the house past it, but let's go show the true colors got the real top G in the yeah. in the chat meow even if you're standing Sheesh. there looking a little grim right now, you still have the opportunity to come back up. But first, we actually have an interview with Kohari the Great. Ooh. 
Hi, Hi Tohori. What's up? Uh, wanted to interview last weekend, but it seems like last weekend there were a little bit of uh, iffy on your mic. Let's but go. Meow the see. MVP. Let's try to tune what in what some. I appreciate it, man. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Dialing Tohari the Great. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear. How can he not okay, hear? Yeah. Maybe the connection is just right. not there between me and Tohari. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I can hear you now. Hi, Tohari. Welcome to the guest. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, I can find Hello. it. Hello. <laughs> nice. Wow, congratulations on that that definitive victory. Um, Tohari the Great. How do you feel <laughs> about this nickname that like Trex first called you, but everybody else is calling you now Tohari the Great? Are you really? Do you feel like? I think Private Dancer called him Kohari the Great, but maybe not. I don't know. Fiends, Fiends did win. Yeah. That? Yeah. I go like, flex in the chat. Let's go. Because uh, I'm just gonna spill it. Like they have the same drop, uh, Tarzan and Mombasa. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be easy. <laughs> so you I feel it. You feel Damn, like Damn. Kohari Tarzan said Momba Zane's gonna be easy. Mhm. Mm and right now, cause you just yo kind of that goal lane right now. Who do you feel like is someone that? on the marksman lane that you feel like is a competition for you that's crazy for me um no one <laughs> they said no, no one, one. <laughs> you really are kohari the great damn Sorry, I just <laughs> dang the Yes, confidence is very Boy important is cocky. for winning any lane, really. I mean, mechanics is one thing, but definitely momentum is the other thing. And for Fiends this season, what is you guys' goal? What is your goal yet heading to Vegas? Uh, I guess so, yeah. We just want to get the top four. Well, I thought oh, you nice, say nice, nice. To MSC. Little... I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> There's just too much to work on before going mm -hmm. to the MSC. I mean, how? Because you guys came in so strong this season, and you did. Um, some of you guys did perform in previous seasons and on other teams, but this season you really kind of cemented all that momentum and then formed that team. Do you guys practice a lot every day over the weeks? To be honest, no. no. <laughs> like we haven't even played. How do you spell Grok? <laughs> G R O K. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So you. So you're saying that you're just strong. It just. I guess. <laughs> too strong, too good. <laughs> yeah, because. Uh, oh shit. I guess we have the synergy. It's like G Rock. To beat this mana team. I agree. You can ask uh, Basic mm -hmm. about that. Basic. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone? I fucking call and him Groke. Who do you think is the strongest? <laughs> Groke. Fucking Groke instead of Grok. Me? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> You are definitely Kohari the Great. Thank you so much for an interview. We're so excited to see you guys' performance. So continue roaring, continue dominating that lane, and we'll see you in the next time. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> wow, the confidence and the composure, I like it. It, it, it's almost surprising the composure too because i expected him to kind of come on there and be like yeah you already know the deal especially with how he plays out there he plays like an animal out there and to see this very composed very uh somewhat modest he admits that there's still a lot of things that they need to do to grow and i'm actually excited to see how much that fiends can grow not just uh, through this season but possibly through uh continued season here in nact yeah and you know Back in the days when I used to play, I was able to get top five in an ACT. So when he said top four, it like warms my heart a little bit because uh, I always kind of use that to uh, kind of uh, aggressively. Yeah, yeah. Talk let me go check guys. on Bloodhounds. You know, be like, hey man, like I've been there before. All you gotta do is go into top four. Yo, yo. Me, and you guys able to, to get everybody? Again. And you know, this time around, getting to see these kids to do these okay. things that are like unbelievable, beating right. you know. 
quite honestly like the biggest brands in North America like it's 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 so exciting to watch them play here yeah you you is talking like a proud father looking at his kids <laughs> grow up and for all the lovely viewers who stayed with us all this time we have a giveaway for you guys Ba -na 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 -na. On the screen, you have a giveaway code. You guys already know the drill. Scan that code, type that code in to secure yourself oh God. one of these permanent skins. We have 31. Is this saying is it counts lock? Come first serve. Make sure you type that in. We have the hallowed lance, lance, in young mage. I would want the in young mage for sure. And we have Ruby does a lot of great skins, so make sure you type that in. Yeah, and you guys already know Tell that don't lock his account. He's probably already tried to claim two of those skins by now <laughs> with his fast fingers, so you might want to hurry up as there are a limited supply. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, mean, hey guys, he's not. Uh, you ways the Shaolin <laughs> Showdown don't kid? Don't go in the comments and be like, why is Weezy typing in that skin? Now he's not doing that, guys. <laughs> what happened, Akio? What, what do you mean? Everyone, uh, oh, my stream? The stream crashed. You guys, so definitely go gather that up. It's only 31 limited quantities. So hurry up. Yeah, hurry up, guys. I well, didn't like relaunch it. It was oh uh, fucking OBS like crashed on me. It wasn't it wasn't good. I mean, it wasn't good. Meow sent us five memberships, so we win. Standing at that zero gravity, uh, but let's see if they can actually get some momentum from this game. So coming back to uh, Brave, GG versus Bloodhounds. Don't go anywhere. We'll which, see you back in five. Let me take a look. Hold on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what the? I think that's an, I think that's a, that's a capital I. Yeah, capital I. Yeah. I was thinking that as well. But norm normally. Oh, yeah, true, true. Oof. <laughs> All right, guys, GG's. Good luck. All right. Hey, one of the players were having trouble logging in. Uh, I think it was Ramsey. I'm not. It was Temp. It was Temp. Templess. He's uh, subbing in. Yeah. Yeah. I think I. I think I put it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hoon Hoon joined uh Bloodhounds. Boca Boca is gonna roam. <laughs> you just subscribed by mistake? Sheesh <laughs> Dang Iko, how to get Liz. Well first you you gotta learn how to sweet talk women. Let me tell you. You know how to do that? You get step one down. Then you gotta take him on a fine date. That's step two. Uh, who, who is on GG? They, they were just... <laughs> Why did you say, uh... <laughs> How the fuck area 77 lost? I don't know, bro. I don't know. Step three, follow her home. Jesus Christ, LG. You take her home. You don't follow her home. And then 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 when you take her home, you're just like, hey, you know, you might it might be eight o'clock at night, but how about we get some coffee? 
And then, and then, then she knows what she knows what's up. Or you, or you invite her in to play Monopoly. What up, Iconi? Cheers from Albania. What's up? What up? What up? What up? I think we got uh, all the players ready. All the players are ready. Chat are getting ready. She told you to get out of her house. Jesus, you overstayed your welcome. Listen, man. Some women, you just gotta. I don't know, man. You just gotta get in, and get out. <laughs> don't don't try to settle down now. What'd you what'd you do? How many steps do we need to follow? Follow what? <laughs> you are advertising the poor guy to get a restraining order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be streaming the mass tournament. Yeah, that's a that's also a good uh, good thing to to bring up, Ken Sue. Is that the the mass tournament's gonna be coming up here soon as well, chat? If you guys haven't joined it. I made a, a community post about it. Uh, definitely check it out. We'll be we'll be watching that. We'll be uh, doing the production on it. We might have some casters. We might not. All depends. I think I see like uh, comments on my last stream. I don't know what happened, bro. I didn't want the fucking stream to end. My OBS just went beep boop. And then fuck it broke. I think easy peasy was the other camera on on uh bloodhound so i think we're only having two because they had to sub out easy peasy uh yeah they're forced to to use two cams America. They have beaten a lot, especially Bloodhounds came through through the first week. I unmuted that at the wrong time. Uh, so Private's like they're beating them. Of wins in their basket. Beating who? We've been talking about the top <laughs> of North America. We've been talking about how that mountain is ever moving. That goalpost is ever getting higher and higher. The standards uh, getting more and more, and it just feels like Bloodhounds have hit a lot of hurdles and maybe mm. kind of stagnated uh, when it comes oh. to their skill level for a lot of these teams right now and there's something ah, that needs to be done chat. for them to kind of rise uh, back to a team that was steadily progressing like the fiends like the area 77s like like these other teams here in the top of north america yeah i think that's a great point uh private pointed out um for the side of bloodhounds unfortunately it feels like they are still lacking and a lot of homework to be done catching up on the meta or maybe even like you know changing up their style because quite honestly right now it, they're not really able to compete against any of the top fives um in our league they have to compete against night horde if they want to stand a chance now they're going up against gaming gladiators which you know quite honestly is the most dominating team so to to you know try to find a win in this series is going to be quite tough but i do think that if there is a time to bounce back maybe not today but doing the homework and you know watching the games and trying to figure out what is wrong could you know give them success for the next half of the season you're right and changing the style is one thing but one thing that they did change is their rosters again <laughs> so this week they have changed up their rosters. Let's see what the change is. We got a swap between Easy Peasy and Templates. Anything you guys want to add there? 
Ooh, that's a. Uh, it's interesting because that is a core role. That's the jungler, easy peasy, going to be coming in with uh, with Templis on there. We already saw uh, just moments ago with Area Seventy Seven what uh, possible issues might come up when it comes to like synergy with a roster swap like that. And here we're taking out the jungle, uh, the jungler for uh, Bloodhounds. Got right. BH versus you know, the, the uh, GG. Now it's going to be Sleeps, Ooga Booga, Boca, Templis, and Ramsey. Now, not to take anything away from Templis, but uh, Easy Peasy has dominated in the professional scenes uh, for quite some time. He's, he's been in almost every single NACT. Always played. Yeah, Area 77 got sweeped. You know, pretty much as him starting up the meta in North America. But now, this time around, Templis has to fill that shoes for the side of Bloodhounds. Currently, uh, Fiends is in first stage. place, so, yeah. You know, as, as much as I, I would say Easy Peasy might be the stronger one in this role. They're two points behind of, GG if they the sweep, uh, if GG sweeps Bloodhounds. push them into a better direction and, you know, get the victory against GG here. I mean, not to mm. put it on GG, but they do mm. have a chance because we know how much GG likes to troll, apparently. So GG might Damn. just troll the series and gonna give Bloodhound a win. So we never know, it could happen. But let's take a look at GG's rosters, if that right, if that's Take a look here, I'll show you. I'll show you guys. seen some of the videos on so, the North American uh, mm -hmm. Mobile Legends channel here, uh, which greeted us to each one of these members. It's gonna be Zia in the Marksman, Shark in the Rome, Hoon mid, best player in the jungle position. That's the damn Chia pet that uh, uh, Yue the looks team. like. Yeah, why, why Cur is currently no right now, that red and blue if GG gets that swept, nice then Fiends is in first place. <laughs> yeah, man, like he's he's got a nice. If GG wins, uh, the teams in North America, um, a lot of the X members of so if they teams, but now if they get two two the one side, then they get one the point and then they're tied with Fiends. If they two place, one Bloodhounds, the then they earn two points and they're in first place. If they two on, yeah, they're in sure. three points, and which like then Travis would put them in like, first place. Mari has always made an impact, no matter if the game's losing or winning. Chicken seems like also that addition for GG. And let's oh, take a look at our casters for additions for the series. <laughs> I mean, any UA wig. What was that? That was a chia that, pet. You ever, you guys out. ever see a chia pet? I know, I know for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can see uh, pretty much a, a clean sweep for GG, and it's not without merit. We've talked about it before. Bloodhounds already have hit their hurdles, hit that turbulation, had uh, some holes that they need to kind of uh, work on as a team. And I mean, when you're talking about going against a team as strong, as precise, as uh, sharp as gaming gladiators, I mean, it's uh, it's no contest when it comes to the votes. And, and, I, and I mean, for me. Gaming Gladiators, once again, have dominated in all the matchups. But once again, Bloodhounds with the new roster change might just add that element of surprise that is missing from the dogs over there. And, you know, they, they are going to be able to, you know, stand up against the Gaming Gladiators, but it is going to be a very tough fought out series. Yeah. And uh, speaking of tough series, let's take a look at the draft, guys. You know, you, you brought up a point here. <laughs> about having somebody new on the roster in the jungle position. Is she just echo one for of you? the biggest critiques that I've been seeing about Bloodhounds is how they have this yeah, confidence well, I think to it's kind Dave. of really go outside the box when it comes to their meta picks. No, no, Uga no. Uga especially uh, doesn't like to kind of stay inside those meta picks. Say so cap. maybe we might add no cap a little here. bit of groundedness that you have a jungle that you're not exactly super synergized with, which might make you uh, your confidence just a little bit more grounded to the point where chat. maybe you do stay. Let me see if I can them. actually maybe capture some good highlights this time around. Normal picks. It's really hard to watch the game and capture more, headlights for the NACT and do my own content. And, it's hard. You know, you talked about kind of the uh, out of the box pick. One does get taken off the board. All of my I last management positions were a lot easier than this. I think it's quite smart here, you know, forcing the side of Bloodhounds to play a little bit more stand right you talked about how maybe they're gonna find a little bit more success 
uh playing a little bit more i gotta bad. find so highlights out or bloodhounds by um, the way but at the same time you know Uga Uga has can can bloodhounds do anything against gg Granger, is the real Goldane. question uh, the Bellaric has also Where's Deku at? I don't know. Hylos, Deku came uh, came over to cast in the, the games of the future, but the board, for some reason, like, the hero pool just a little bit I don't know. The, the it was weird. I'm not quite sure how shit was, like, group. messing up on him. It's very interesting. We actually saw this against BTK as well. They went ahead, banned the Hylos. I think even took out the Valir, which is uh, a staple of um boca roscoe who likes to play that especially into the meta where we have a lot of utility junglers a lot of beefy fighters that come into play valir does come online very nicely for those and we've seen it kind of taken off the board we're still waiting on those last two bands from both of these teams i i do think the valir might be the outside element that bloodhounds is looking for but once again you know gaming gladiators especially with best player on the team is one of the best assassin players quite honestly and he's gonna be able to kind of just full send and die we've seen it plenty of times on his fanny he could you know, how do you how can you claim liz with, well any assassins so, first of all i don't think you can enslave people bloodhounds especially <laughs> and they, they do decide to ban out two of his i think i think they so ban that uh quite standard, i think that's illegal um, for the side of bloodhounds to defend against <laughs> the assassin pressure that best player provides just just himself there yeah, I, I, yeah, full force onto those jungle bands for best player. Bloodhound still looking for their last one. Navaria. Why do I have to capture highlights? Because we gotta like, I'm here. like the content kind of, uh, creator for the teams, we but like what we capturing content for the teams are so hard. Like gaming gladiators who have the confidence, have the skill level. What happened to, to the Hawaiian theme? Well, we private and and UA didn't didn't do a Hawaiian theme. You were wondering about maybe Barat's XP lane. <laughs> uh, and you would, we'd already seen Roger, but I mean, there's still the option of him being here in the marksman lane, possibly. Brat's first pick. It's going to be a Brat's first pick. <laughs> like, that's the standard of what GG loves to open with. Brax, Vexana, they like to play heavily into the meta. Now, it's not always that they are going to be picking them up in this perspective role once again we've seen chicken on the brats we've seen Yurishi on that but no and the matilda be shark picking up this matilda gg said we ain't letting the matilda focus. fly by again we're gonna use the matilda farsa or eve or even the valir that you kind of picked up uh which those heroes kind of have been shelved um there's a lot of options that bloodhounds can choose for we saw a great kohari uh carry earlier we saw the minotaur a five foot cardboard cutout the position the kaja could also you be could here. i think that's like her her, her actual height Vexana, Barats, like there's so much to choose from for both teams yeah, a very interesting pickup here. Shark picking up the Matilda, which we haven't seen too often this season. But I mean, I like in it. past seasons, Shark has been a menace on Matilda, which kind of led into a lot of people's skepticism when a gaming gladiator. Wait, Hylos? BTK and Matilda was actually the bane of. They their banned Hylos because of uh, Uga Booga. A, a victory against BTK, which was uh, a very interesting to watch. So here mm. we see Bloodhounds picking oh up that Exborg and the Valentina as well it's it's hey, geez where's des i don't know i think he just took the the week the, the weekend off of having a utility jungle my damn stream ended it now it's not saying that it's you know it's gonna cure all right now we're on like the take Barat, two does so well with the uh matilda and, and you brought up the btk gg match you know the the akai could also be a possibility here he sounded um, like so a little kid a second ago from. i do think though gaming gladiators may opt to uh save the jungle for the last pick because there is not much jungles being ban onto the board right if you pick the barats if you pick the uh hanabi it is going to be countered by the export naturally but is hanabi starting to be like an actual like mage played in pro which has quite been popularized in the asia to is, well i think uh right if, if members are coming in huddled up group as five we call it kind of the ube death ball strat area 77 versus well um fiends uh team fiends fiends be the area 77 also has been widely popularized in the c server is that gosu ue deals now that's a chia pet bro damage against especially with the export can burst out braga armor and now putting the paquito up against the export I think that may be a bad matchup unless it's going to be the dinosaur in the XP. 
<laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's an interesting uh interesting thing here and especially Lu Yi, we don't usually see her too often in the meta because while she has that yin yang a decent amount of cc and damage she lacks mobility and can get caught very often but i mean as we see with that first pick we've got matilda which pretty much makes even the most immobile of heroes i don't even know if i spelled like that Lu right heroes like ixia who have to or even like a farza who have to stand still for their ultimates you can use that guiding winds to kind of drag them to a I, safe I didn't spell distance it. or reposition them so it's gonna be very interesting to see how that is utilized here on gaming gladiators but of and and, and that's the thing we were talking about Paquito still has to burst through both of these, the either the Exborg or the Barats. But on the other side of that, you have Lu Yi here, who's gonna be able to I mean, she's gonna be able to chain those yin yangs back and forth. Yep. It's gonna be quite tough for the Barats, honestly. He's not gonna be able to move too much, especially. Booga booga Hanabi is quite big. You uh, think he's gonna pull it out? Back there. Now, you know, the side of Bloodhounds, they are looking for that marksman and the roam position. There is still plenty of. Well, what are they gonna go? Hanabi Roam? Uh, you go for the quad. <laughs> um, you know, quite honestly, you can pick anything here, and uh, it, it sleeps the well, marksman. Side of GG, they are missing uh. their juggler and their marksman. So both teams looking for a good marksman pick. So you talk about the Exia, which pairs well against Matilda. I like that with the Croosian, along with the DHS, to kind of burst the brats from far range. Also dealing with you know the export quite well. Um, but there is a lot of physical damage on the side of game. Well, they're going Eaters, hard. The pack on the XP. So a potential setup for Harith and a physical jungle could be a viable a band bless, for best players whole hero pull the tournament a huge focus and respect here put on the best player as i want to say four <laughs> bands going over to his picks basically here, here. so Can't i mean and though. then yeah and then yeah well then that's kind of the problem with trying to ban out somebody like that's best player. his hero pool is so deep it's like Eh, you could say you could have used all the bands on him and he still has a pretty sizable pool that he can choose from on um, gaming gladiators there they're going to go ahead and focus down on the marksman position mm, and you know when we talk about the bands the fredrin is still available oh gosh that matchup the akai which <laughs> doesn't do so well against the brats is also available for the front line but i'm kind of looking oh no the side of bloodhounds is going to be one pick away i think it's smart i do think the herod sets up quite well for the side of gaming gladiators right herod doesn't need that set in the front he could just use the xenon force to kind of jump towards his target so it fits well with the matilda the <laughs> Kito, which isn't like a Teresa, which sets up a lot of the front line. Uh, but on the other hand, Bloodhounds do. Like yeah, Moontan got on to on me one time. One time. They like asked me to to, to do like a, a hero video, and I said her name wrong. And the export. They're like, what the fuck? I was like, and I, I'm like, American. You know, what I kind of mentioned, <laughs> you know, gaming writers did set up for heavy physical XP for Zia to pick up a it, it is low ye it's quite warming here because I think I haven't seen that much Natans yet so far yeah I haven't seen that many but the amount of damage he can output oh. uh, especially from the low, early game you just unlock low on ye. two of his abilities low, and low he's got ye. so much attack speed what did it chat what did I used to call her I don't even remember anymore composition you either want that true damage low ye kind of burn through it or just that high amount of it's damage low ye. magic damage and the Tom what did i used to call her perfectly oh dude i don't even and remember response coming out from bloodhounds a traditional counter to the mart says even though he's mm. gonna be in a lot of the cc the divine judgment is something he cannot deal with so definitely a good draft coming out from the side of bloodhounds i Lil think they have what it takes to be able to turn the tides especially in their standings here but gg is still a very yo little yeet three magic two physical on their side Yuzong's wife hard to defend yo. especially with the comp that bloodhounds is running yeah, I mean, Back in the I day, say, I used to call her uh, something dude, else. It, honestly, a great draft from Low Ye. here, especially the Low Ye. Pick to kind of Low Ye. counter the potential of a, of a carry G. coming from <laughs> a gaming gladiators. I like it, but as we've seen before, especially with with a team like gaming gladiators, it's gonna come down to the execution, and, and that's where a lot of teams, I mean, especially in the giant shadow that gaming gladiators can cast. Uh, a what lot would you say about? Bloodhounds if GG lost game one. Well, I'd be like fucking Bloodhounds over here just destroying it.
gladiators game let me take one. off the chia pet or, mm. well, we are actually going into a pause just kidding gotcha so we have a little bit more time to talk about the potentials <laughs> mm -hmm. of uh, some of these compositions Ewing. there's a there's a pause yeah, so, in the game you know i kind of want to mention best player on this martis right i've played with him quite a bit before he's extremely proficient um before he even how to get how did they get the chia pet out of there grind he was playing a lot of martis especially in ranked games and i you know i had the pleasure to be able to see see it my, for myself and play against my old bully chat he's done so well <laughs> on this hero he's definitely gonna have a lot of immune especially when it comes down to the uh stop i just like flaming opening. people but again i still feel like there is he a troll bit of trouble especially having to deal with the cards right Getting yeah there's a pause right, right now the front line to be able to soak up the damage uh Ooh. compared to what's the pause say, about games, right where they had the guinevere where they had the the, the tanky dyra right so best player here might have to be the soul tank building you know the antique the guardians helmet uh the curse helmet yeah. i do think that is going to be the option yeah. for the side of gaming gladiators but once again you, you said it great yourself bloodhounds they have everything that they need to be able to win this game they have the divine judgment they have the hair yo yo too, the which, games you know, paused the, uh the they, they had someone like lose top access top to their mic the ton, which I it should uh be starting here up. soon and also the barats and the exborg the front line that you know without a demon hunter i, I did or what, what even, was it 40 uh, seconds like a glowing wand is going to be five seconds quite hard to shred down to the side of game i don't know if i'm fast enough one word we're, we're sorry we're starting in five seconds five seconds from game and gladiators is aggression especially mm -hmm. in right. that early game that quick enough. shark's gonna shine out there as soon as fried chicken gets that we're level good to four go on paquito he's gonna be mashing Lu Yi doesn't even need her ultimate. As soon as he gets first two abilities, she's gonna okay. be able to chain together those yin yangs with that passive and do an immense amount of damage. And we've already talked that was so sassy. about the early game of Mart uh, Martis and his ability. I mean, we've seen so many savages, I want to say, from last season that he was able to get there. And then we were talking about how a Natan can shine as soon as he can tag together some of those abilities. This is going to be uh -huh. an early game burst. And if Bloodhounds mm -hmm. want to be successful, they need to be able to back off they need to be able to no 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 s no 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 i was uh i was saying that someone was asking someone someone asked if uh what what would happen if they did beat gg uh and and continue doing that. someone came into the vc and was like okay to withstand okay i was like what the fuck you know you talked about it bloodhounds definitely need some time to scale right here okay he needs to build up um some items the game started now really chat deal a lot of the damage the feather comes into mind also the we'll, we'll be back and going now uh, that thing comes into mind we'll, we'll, uh, the, we'll, the we'll, needs we'll, something like we'll see you we'll see you we'll see you uh, brute force war axe those take some time boca needs uh cool down to be able to uh spam his second for the terrify yo uh, pound uh, town who, cool so who put pound town on the screen <laughs> Wait yo. To to level four. Don't really need to go too aggressive. Even though yo, who put Pound Town, pound to town on the screen? Game. You talked about it. GG. They're very. It's it's starting. Team, almost like a five. Uh, it's starting here soon. Ball, kind of like uh the Golden State. <laughs> Shouts to them. Um, and, and and it's quite a beautiful comp, right? It, it does it does a lot of damage. It has very. Fast it's starting soon, chat. Pack second skill. You yo, you didn't see it? Look at look at the uh, bottom with the rotating text. Also got it's like a minute himself. delay, so, so you guys won't see it for like a minute, but the game is definitely starting. To be able to rotate around the map, pick as two, three. BP using hero besides Fredrin and Boxia. Once again, well, I mean, when you get your whole hero pool. Ube, right, setting up correctly with the kaja getting the x4 to come out and play getting the imu uh probably taking either uh the decimation coming out from the martis or the circling eagle from the matilda well thank you so much for your patience <laughs> ladies and gentlemen but now for reals this time it's gonna be the right, chat. taking uh, on let's go gladiators, a match one and bloodhounds definitely looking for a win here and my dream comes true once again we get the brats on the xp lane i'm excited to see how he does i want to see more brats on the xp i think it's quite bound back i don't have enough time to be able to watch mpls unfortunately it's been all over the map the xp the the jungle position a small early aggression from the side of ggs but shark is gonna be able to get away and 
you know you talked about the early aggression from the side of gg i do think they're going to take advantage of that the wild part is my stream's also yeah, at 2080 I, I do like the collapsing from bloodhounds as soon as shark was seen up there, on who's gonna win members from bloodhounds there mm -hmm. and <laughs> at the gold lane just patience from both of them that's all that could be said there you see best player in a little bit of a fight with ooga booga looking oh, for he? that quick escape actually might need to see some escape. plays here as best player come on first blood uh well, we gotta look out for some I, outplays I'm team really fights or wombo there, combos to go forward to come on bloodhounds we need content and, content and, you know, he ends up getting taken out with no Ooh. trades but on the other side of the what just happened countless. you know we, we, we talked about the raw element the element of surprise and he's definitely showing us you know even with a sub in from side of bloodhounds they're able to you know go head to head mm. against one of the best teams in north america yeah, who's winning game one chicken and plenty Probably gg of gold being soaked up by ramses right now on mm -hmm. to that tower so one to one a piece right now who got Turtle soloed right now fried chicken got soloed by templates kind of getting into that level three level four spot what the fuck? Of the members once again do you think bloodhounds is best bet is to you know, go zero zero on this turtle. They could try to force a retribution. If they're unable to get it, so what, right? They're they're much better. Kind of wish I would have seen uh, how he got uh, the like retro gap. Able to get the turtle completely. Oh, they're getting my belly. They're getting my belly, Hoon. Oh, but they clapped back. Yo, best player. Oh my God. Oh, is he gonna end it all? Best player with a triple kill. Does he get out? Is he gonna go for it? He goes for it. He dies. Oh, chicken that gets killed by the tower. And doesn't find the killing Yo, what just happened? Is to get four on best players so early on, but the shutdown came honestly right away. Templars is four and one too. Yeah, and right yeah, now you, you, you're making us think too much. We got to figure out some way to get. Went back in there, uh. was afraid for his life there as Uga Booga comes back here to back up his marksman. Now he was looking at the gold crap. He wanted to take the. You need the, to implement the, AI into this Google Sheet so it can just auto generate titles. HP is just a little bit too small, just a little bit of the greed. But now the jungler matchup is really interesting. It's a four versus four kill versus four kill but templates should be able to shred the marches out quite well the export that is does well. that, why is that not and, here um, you know the the, the that is epic of uh mobile legends right we're talking about the, the tanky front lines we're talking about a lot of the fighters and in this matchup paired up against the martis you know he's he's gonna do Ooh. quite well there. the moment i looked away oh, action so happened combo here, and then you have the circling eagle there sleeps in a little bit of trouble down uh oh uh oh that zombie, a force Ooh, to gosh and slept and pulled in ooga booga best player capping back though looking now rion ooga booga being pressured and he gets to Destroyed. but now nah, with sleeps taking him out a little yo they're gg's just being majorly aggressive right here that's crazy uh you know two 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 zero deaths but this time around bloodhounds is actually getting quite the action here they're able to take down best player probably grabbing this turtle uh without a retreat from the other team yeah, oh. Shark actually in a little bit of trouble here, and oh. they actually find a kill on him. Oh. Shark, uh, the turtle goes over to Templus as well. I want to say as a dominant or as aggressive as Gaming Gladiators is right now, Bloodhounds doing a decent job of matching pace. And it seems like the side of GGs they have like a missing piece in their drop. I think it might be due to the Matilda because look at the impact Ooh, that, chicken uh, caught they're making. With a divine judgment is uh, using those champ stance to try to get himself and create that distance. Three members and fly chicken says you're going to need a few more if you want this lane. Now minions starting to crash in and fly chicken is going to clear these up quickly. And we're starting to see a lot of these, you know, trades in lane for the matchups, right? Earlier we saw Fiends and A77 mirroring each other on the match, but this time Hoon's on the backside. Yeah, Hoon with that diversion. This is the second time he's found himself behind enemy lines and Shark there with uh, that great pull to put Hoon back to safety. Templus catches himself a yin yang and a lot of damage. Shark and Zia still continuing on the pressure here, but I want to say good save by the side of Bloodhounds to uh, clean up the creeps here. 
But this is a very tough situation for the side of gaming gladiators, right? When I said they wanted to go 0-0, zero, zero, 7 to 7 is honestly a best case scenario, especially when uh, the X Borg is, you know, quite farmed. You can see X Borg just himself is just zoning members away. And Ooga Booga on this uh, Kaja has done quite the good amount of work too to, you know, pop out a lot of the spells to uh, make uh, some of the rotations a little bit harder. So, you know, the side of gaming uh, Bloodhounds, they're holding up extremely well against the early aggression that gg has yeah the only real difference here is the conversion gaming gladiators doing a good job of turning these kills and this pressure into towers already have two towers to the bloodhounds zero yeah and you know mm -hmm. a, a good opening for the side of gaming gladiators even though they're not really up in terms of the kills you know overall they're still getting you know whatever that they are looking for and a circling eagle Oh, Ooga Booga wisely uses his dash to get himself under. I'm trying to like capture highlights and create titles. Templus and mm. Ramsey's here at the turtle. Boca Roscoe getting zoned out by Shark right now. Zia coming in from the top lane here. Now the turtle being pulled out. Best player looking for an opportunity. Uses that mortal coil, but decides against it. A little bit low is Ooga Booga. Finds himself a divine judgment. And they find a kill on Tahoon. Is <laughs> this going to be enough? Best player still hiding in that bush. Yo, are they trolling or nah? Mine as well. Circling eagle onto Ramses. A big the Yo. lands onto best player. Here comes the last insanity and the mortal coil. Bloodhounds. Best player out of harm's way, but this does mean a turtle possibly. First dub against GG. Still see shark and best player trying on the backside. Dude, the shield and then the retri. Oh, look at the teleport in. Yo. Oon. Sneaky, sneaky little dude. Oh, they're clapping back though. Ooh. Both almost teleported them away. Yo, that was crazy. I don't know. Ying Yang over That was a good fight though. Boca flickering forward, seamlessly trying to get. Uh, Templus one HP smartest. trying to get the blue buff. Retribution coming out from side of gaming glider is definitely showing why they are the top team in North America. But it's a very tough fight, right? They have to deal with the Raga armor of the X Borg along with the immortality, which they haven't really. Had Templus, they subbed so Easy Peasy out, and Templus is going ham the in the jungle with this X Borg. Tough, and the later these games go, right, the Hareth is just going to get more dashes. Brats gets more tanky. The impact on the Divine Judgment picking off a solo member just gets better and better so the side of bloodhounds they're definitely going to be able to skill quite well Ooh, Templus. Templus Fraga armor is Ooh. off he's gonna have to back up denton is welcome lands on oh to zia to get back with that, oh uh, they suppressed and pulled best player in shark is in there bro look how much shielding why does he get so much shield that's crazy uh oh they're gonna attack though fried chicken took out sleeps shark and who coming from the back line oh that was definitely a great diversion look at best player going in for the kill on the boca they take out the tower though in trouble right now best players gonna use that oh, oh yo what is temple is doing he went in there ramsey left alone my god they were able to take out zia though that was a long fight play coming out from gg of course we expect the best of the best out of the best teams in north america but once again they're still dominating in most of these team fights for k goldie dropping a kill here and there but it seems like they have the full map in control too the bot lanes is gone mid and top outer towers is also that's crazy the chat so of GG, all right chat the, the live stream crashed kind of earlier once again we're at 45 have likes we gotta get to 100 like the stream Ooh, for your boy trouble here gets oh my god Ooh, what shield. a good flicker and still oh. yo what is up with the shielding on the game right now and chicken just know, literally right, made it out of there with no problem yeah, that's crazy the they're still attacking though Bloodhounds trying to hold on the last insanity. Oh, the best player, best player in the thick of Bloodhounds, but couldn't take him out. The diversion. Moon coming in. Oh, GG's. Here comes Zia. Zia cleaning it up. Goddamn. 14 to 9 game in favor of Gaming Gladiators.
Now, Gaming Gladiator is one of the things that they have in their comp that is quite hard that to was do. crazy in a ton right and he's definitely scaling into favor right now he did die earlier underneath the tower but you can see 50 to 100 and then the stream crash that's youtube bro youtube it's all very very good why don't so nact play on stage like mpl mainly because we just don't got the funding also north america is just too big damage that they're looking for and everybody in north america going into that the the cost of living is just way too much fucking much so did use and couldn't even get him off the map so definitely a good build for the side of best the only there. way in north no, america if well we could team to be able to soak up to have an offline tournament, tournament would be to have like move yeah, everybody to one area gold lead, uh, everybody in north america has to, to work right now. It's, it's, or it's we go broke and we live on the street moving out of the lane i guess we could all become hobos and then play mlbb with a mortal coil shark there on the back side to back him up and now Dude, plane tickets in america cost like every single time he he dives with a salary like just one plane ticket for his entire team could feed like mm -hmm. multiple yeah, families overseas from the multiple side, they have the export it's gonna it you feed know, you for weeks it's gonna be hard to try to penetrate the defense from the side of bloodhounds because they have harith for the clear they have barats to build should interview the best player they also got the exports kind of clear the wave so bloodhounds have everything that they well, need how does he have not have a camera this. but once again GG what is has this so much magic damage has so much burst the physical followed up on the hunter strike from best player along with fried chicken it's a little bit overwhelming to deal with if you're side of bloodhounds because how you know, why magic, that doesn't make sense build physical defense here well and we were talking about a little bit about the synergy maybe it comes down to the shot calling as well i did see that bloodhounds <laughs> kind of wasted a conceal play at the mid time they all kind of hung around it didn't really seem like they knew didn't they, where date? they wanted to go they that could make use sense as an opportunity to maybe charge into one of the bushes maybe find themselves a little bit of a set but uh, like i said it might come down to the shot call yeah not not as, enough uh, uh player base and not enough funding the same page right now best taco not best player in favor of of game and gladiators but it's kind of tough because you can see shark's position he's not really scared of getting pulled from the divine judgment right oh god it feels like they're i think they're i know what's happening control and they're willing to kind of just fight it out if they hold on let me mute my mic just, on stream they're, they're, they're not scared of what bloodhound has to offer right now Ooh, Templis almost on the bad side of a diversion from Hoon. He's been using these almost shades of Nicolette from a few seasons ago on that Lu Yi, who used to be so great with those diversions. Haven't seen her use it yet, but Hoon, man, just a, making a, a, a statement for a mage mm. that we don't often see here in North America. Mm. AK gold lead, 14 to nine is the overall scoreboard at this 14 minute mark. The first advanced all right chat sorry i couldn't give you that map, that that scoop they were asking some some Shark scoopy stuff the circling eagle you know quite sparely oh they do go ahead bait out the lord but here comes the rest of bloodhounds big oh pop-up lands denton is welcome is it gonna be 407 1407 big, oh, big flicker from rams he's gonna have to see him trying to get away creating that distance and all right, gaming gladiators and here comes zia trying to clean up here in a bad way. He's gonna get nice down. nice he nice trade his life boca boca takes out Rasta, zia but this might open up the lord for gaming 14 gladiators. 14 yeah, 15. Say, that was a pretty good fight for coming out from both teams here no one really dying 14 not sure if that is 100 percent worth it but they definitely have the numbers advantage uh for this objective here yeah, doing a good job here right now, about 10%. Ramsey's in the front line. Templis coming in. He does have that immortality. Is he going to be able to do something here as best player has already started chaining again? Those decimations. Immortality. Jesus Christ. Going to go ahead and try to create that distance. Yeah, I got, I got some scoop. Zoned out you guys can hear it. As best player picks it up. Circling Eagle from Shark. I got some scoop, some, some drama. It. He's using that so sparingly, but he's not really dying left and right. He doesn't even have a purifier <laughs> to deal with a lot of the CC. He has an Aegis to be able to sustain uh, the damage paired up with the Flask of, Oa of Oasis, which has shown so much impact, right? He saved Chicken plenty of opportunities. <laughs> he saved Best Player, right? So Shark is- How can he be called Best player, player when the kid got fucked up by BTK no top eight? On Templis. Sheesh. It's gonna be proven to be a 
Sheesh. Targets that might be a little bit I heard, I, I watched a video that a, a clipper clip uh, of like Zane reacting to chicken saying chicken said that he was that they were trolling. Is that drama? That's what we've been waiting for. We read your lips. It'd be fun at fucking funny. Last insanity, but the rest of GG wisely backs up. Minions starting to crash down at mid again. Ramsey's in a little bit of trouble. You can see those yin yangs, the marks already on the team as they have to kind of separate a bit. Minions up at the top, high ground tower. At five chicken comes in, burst down the Fawaga. The Armor from Templis and if you can read my lips, maybe. Off by Hoon. The rest of Bloodhound scattering to try to defend. There's always drama, bro. From Game and Gladiators. You they never know what's really gonna happen. Minions. Yeah, it's just the team fights are just getting a little bit too one-sided at this point, right? Earlier we did see a few traits here and there. Ooga booga. Okay. Yeah, ooga booga with that Ooh, nice Oh my there, god. Oh yo, what a cleanup. Might be all she rogers only. GG literally. And this is going to be first game going over to GG. Wow. The amount of times that he was able to and get like a two three man stun with the louis was crazy right Side that was one, crazy and, damage know, again, we talked about it in the drafting phase we're seeing all sweeps draft, today chat the x borg the barats kind of have to do it, it is slowing the side of gaming uh, is slowing the side of bloodhounds to be able to get a uh, a pick off even an opportunity to win on any of these fights and you know hoon has done so well on this louis uh, on this louis i don't know if he's gonna be getting the mvp for this match but definitely Been one for the matilda bloodhounds or dude stuff. matilda just give, gives gives way too fight. much shield for, chat you know the side of bloodhounds all they can really do is group up it, it's too hard for the side of bloodhounds to be able to deal with the yin yang overturns with the marks that's going on it's just pulling everyone together and wrecking havoc in all these team fights yeah i want to say when it comes to like raw stats best player had and matilda broke and kills, but that's what you get that's, that's why gg get like the lost to btk then matilda is just Matilda's nasty able to get your team where they need to go hey, at least you guys can see the the emblems that they're using behind the towers to get these surprise attacks these surprise ganks onto the bloodhounds or even normally like good mobas normally like nerf shit every week from the base you saw him i think moon time doesn't nerf stuff fast enough the xp lane so he can help clear it out like some stuff is just ridiculously broken i want to say i i've seen a lot of teams sometimes lack when they use the lu yi is that diversion yeah so definitely hoon was able to pick up the carry well deserved there with the lu yi dealing tons of damage there rich guy is going to be falling on to zia and shark picking up the forgotten Not like one. there's a bug Trigger's done a great job in this game we talked about it aegis paired up with the flask just so much shield along with the oh, second shit. skill has that zia versus sleeps so many different members head to head uh, from the side of gaming gladiators and a lot of the team fights got drawn out uh to to like a very sustained heavy where you know if you balancing's ass on this initial, game yeah there's uh, no balancing the damage especially when the when, when shit gets op you either ban it or not like that's that's all there is to it pop and the side of gg still has the sustain yeah just the flask it's a perfect counter I, because i feel like you know, like they need in order to stay like a float these team fights and you saw gg just completely i feel like they need to update it like every every week winning or every two weeks at least even when they're down not fucking they, every they season a great game honestly yeah, and I mean, I mean, you can see from the damage here, especially uh, Hoon and Zia. I mean, uh, uh, Zia kind of like, I want to say is one of the uh, other unsung heroes here. Yeah, the new production's online, way... I mean, uh, is amazing. Possible for him to stop. <laughs> they're getting used to it. The, the, the production team's new, so... Ramsey's they're, uh... The boards there. <laughs> 200, hmm. GG looks like CC. And, and that just tells you just how <laughs> much was being output it's the by Gaming Gladiators. Mm, and you know that's kind of the brats on the or it looks like qq right? like they're, they're crying they plenty of great moments where he got the daytonans welcoming singled out a specific member but the anti-engage coming out from the lu e where he just sets it up right on top of the brats right where everyone is kind of piling on it, it just made the mm. team fight so much more in favor for the side of gg um, gg you know, is like still does that does that not pick does that not right the there it looks like but qq right like like they're crying the it was just too much for uh for bloodhounds to handle there 
Yeah, and not just that, but then you have a shark on the Matilda line up with that uh, oh with my. that uh, uh, guiding wind Certainly. right beside him. So as soon as the Detna's welcome is done, you give him a little bit of time while he's stunned, and then boom, he's swooping out with yep. a whole bunch of shield. Uh, so I feel that same way. Useless, uh, on, uh, uh, Kana. Uh, useless gesture on the side of Bloodhounds. But yeah, I no. say a, a Hopefully, I'm saying that right. QQ. Uh, Tears falling down, I'm telling you. For the that's team, that's team QQ, not team GG. To match that pace. I want to say this is the value you get when you when you kind of pick into they crying. The when you kind of uh, counter out. I want to say the they crying because BTK is coming from Bloodhounds. It's just like we were talking about the execution sometimes, especially against a team like Gaming Gladiators. There's nobody that's going to fault Bloodhounds for uh, that execution and maybe losing some of the rotations to a team like that. But it's something to take down into the notes. Something that's uh, to help you uh improve especially I don't know. when it comes to versing some of the how easy was the last match as well. <laughs> you know, I, I do think the side of bloodhounds played <laughs> well microly especially when we're talking about the first eight minutes before the second turtle right before the second total the the the, the gold lead was close how do you think the you stack up close. against boca rosca hmm? we're getting taken apart uh. <laughs> but when best player was able to pick up that second turtle on the retreat Chicken, why'd you get soloed in the top lane in the very first fucking two seconds? Like there was no punish, right? Gaming gladiators got the top. That's that one. They put three man up there. He got soloed. The bot side tower by himself at the same time. Like the macro plays where they. I think it was like one or two minutes in. I don't yeah, it's by Ramsey. This gold lane sucks. Like, what's up, Let's chicken? You getting top, rusty? Put the Natan with the Louis, e, along with the Matilda. Get that siege started. The Paquito is going to push the bot side. It, the, the, the micro is just too good for the side of gaming. Oh. They dominated past the eight minute mark. Snowballed ahead, got all the out of towers, defended almost every single oh. one. I mean, the towers were untouched here. Like, it was a masterpiece of performance coming out for gaming gladiators. I know the kills were close. I know they struggled in the second turtle team fight, but they played so damn well, especially. We're trying to create interview turtle. questions, chat. The, 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 mic, the, the macro. What's some so interview good. questions we could ask someone yeah, on uh, GG chat? Here for drop Hunt some, uh, drop some interview questions you guys would like to hear. Have that room to grow. They do have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 it's moved just, this NACT uh, along. A little bit more sharpening of that. Like there's not a lot of break times like there are in a lot of other tournaments. To close out the gaps when it comes to their weaknesses very quickly and very uh they close down it, even any type of uh issues with their drag did you troll chicken down with the synergy that they have their mechanical ability their their quickness that they have with the rotating uh that we saw there especially i mean i don't think i've ever seen uh the diversions used like it was basically on cooldown he had a plan where this what this diversion was going to do and how it Execute. was going to help the team either get him behind the turret uh either use it to get fly chicken to the lane quickly either get him to uh, a position for the lord that's karina it, it, it's something that's a power seen, what fucking what type of comment is that get to see here how's that a comment bands here except uh, with the exception <laughs> of matilda being taken out by uh gaming gladiators i think a little bit of ptsd from them from uh matilda from last weekend mm, well you either pick it or you don't i think i got ate know, up by mosquitoes chat um Volca has been so good i was uh we i had to go car the, shopping the i had to go car really shopping really wants to pick up I'm not sure if he's gonna have success with it but that's definitely a traditional ban against the side of bloodhounds and he talked about you know the the traditional bans come out from both sides uh the joy and the nolan gets taken out uh to deny best player of some assassin picks i think that's great especially since <laughs> the mage led team right the mage led team from the side of bloodhounds they want to protect boca as much as they can now there is still a lot available uh the brats which i, I think might get denied here <laughs> let him slip it up slip up chicken as we wanted him to do on a second pick valentino and it's not a <laughs> high priority pick that gets shoved quite often but the chat i'm not a red, a red bull Paramus, i think is going to be much much better and much more comfort i'm not a red bull yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and probably see the answer here coming in the form of a Valentina on the side of uh, Gaming Gladiators. Oh, no. very confident with that Natan. They do, they did like it. <laughs> I wanted to bring up the the the, <laughs> the, the wise saying <laughs> words from Poon's interview last weekend, which was basically drink water, ban Matilda. Stop drinking their, it. Uh, their new, it's uh, it's the sugar free. Water. It's only 25 calories. But oh, uh, all it is is just a bunch of. 
since I want a bunch of rise, vitamin B of Ruby, and a bunch uh, of vitamin B6 and B12 though, and some acid mm. now, the Terizla and Nikon out that the side of GG may back, be back, setting back, up back. for something a lot more aggressive in the jungle. Drink sugar? Nah, bro. I can't drink sugar. Sugar is bad for you. Or a Kai to set up some CC for the team. But this time around, they have the XP on a CC laner. I normally drink Celsius live fits, but I needed a Red Bull today. I needed that B12 and that that the B6. Drink no, coffee? I'm coffee really makes your breath video. stink. Like, why are we not picking also, turns your teeth into like, different colors. <laughs> seen it so many times in the professional scene. Drink water? Out of, you know, water doesn't give me energy. I'm a low, I'm a low in energy type of guy if I don't have ca caffeine. Time, you know, I could just take pure shots of caffeine. Played a great game last game, especially coming out. When I when I was in the production of the last NACT in Vegas, they they had like a they had like a bottle, a bottle of pure caffeine. You squeezed it in, and then it like shot up the tube into like a little thing, and then you would put it in a you put it in a cup, and then you would take a shot of the pure caffeine with water. Why why go aside from what's been working with you, Irithel? Another sniff meth. A great kiting ability from her there, and yeah, this is. Water, water keeps me awake, offline, but it doesn't give me caffeine. That Masha did recently get some buffs, not not buffs to her damage or anything, but I, I believe to what it costs mm -hmm. to use her abilities. Yeah, so first skill, second skill. Uh, back then, the yeah, if they, if they can't swap their draft, then. Uh, HP at all levels, but yeah, scale. I believe it's to 18% or 12%. And then they'd be I mean, on the numbers, picking in a it, specific it order. Quality of life uh, now, what the Masha does for the cold water, really cold know, water after a long day, yeah. either build high damage, which I think that's the typical build nowadays, or you build the more traditional tank. And I do think they're gonna opt to go for high damage here. They see the Rithal that's being drafted, Rithal doesn't really have too much escape plans. And added along that the Masha has the ability to take away auto attacks for a certain Go drink time water. Only hits second. I don't have a it's water a girl. Counter for the Arithal and it balances Jesus out Christ. the magic and the physical damage that Gaming Gladiator is setting up. They love to put Zia on a magic damage dealer provided with some sort of physical damage. So it, it makes it where, you know, they don't have the problems where the Fiends had, where they had the carry and they had the four magic. They won that game, but the the, the draft itself isn't as beautiful as, let's say, the Masha <laughs> going into Drink the prime. Uh, position, potentially nah. jungle, we don't know. And then paired up with Zia's true magic damage. They're, they're buffing so Masha. Extremely hard to deal with. My dogs. Yeah, that's be the Definitely. Thing here. Typically, that boy gets like a giant a ass bowl like position, this big. Especially when it He's got a bowl of water like this Masha, big, bro. Right from the get go, from the early game, Masha was invading, and she was actually pretty hard to deal with in the mm. early game to be able to bring down. I'm actually very curious to see, especially if this is going to be. Right, I'll go get some water. Damage Masha. If that same aggression follows with Shark in the early game, is he going to be able to put that same type of pressure onto Bloodhounds? Especially last game, we saw. Even on the Matilda, where he was trying to put pressure on in the early game, Bloodhounds was pretty ready for it and uh, able to kind of close in on him to kind of make sure to zone him out. If you're on a Masha here, which is going to be a little bit more susceptible to getting caught there, might have a few issues if mm -hmm. Bloodhounds wants to continue to kind of close in around each other and continue to, to be wary of that. You're 100% you're right there, Private. Um, the, 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 the play style, when you compare the Matilda versus the Masha, is very significant Ma uh, you know matilda has so many dashes circling eagle uh the second skill he, he, she can get around and get away from a lot of the fights paired up with you know building the flask with the aegis that's so much utility that was saved uh for the side of gaming gladius but this time with the mosh it's more of a kind of like a solo mission like he doesn't need too much he doesn't need a, too much of his team he has he provides the kill pressure by himself regardless of any lane anyone is next to him Right, so, but the tricky thing about Masha, especially nowadays, is this damage is scaled off of physical damage. Back then, it was scaled off of tank. Nah, off of HP. Nah, so, you know, building three he can't speak. helmets was so hard to deal with for any one player. But this time around, 
it's a little yeah. bit more balanced i'm super excited to see the mosh in action but once again it is a still a very tricky situation and cheers the cold ultra we haven't talked about that the cold ultra deals it's going to sustain so much to the single target burst that the masha has purified clean has, water they have two cleavers they have an export in the jungle i think they have an export in the which is going to deal a lot of aoe damage and the magic damage coming out from zia Yes, yeah, so, and I'm wondering here is uh, they've kind of pretty much ironed gaming gladiators into a Valentina pick here, right? I mean, that, that's pretty much the. I mean, that's the logical spice of the spot. Don't where drink. We go. got. I mean, we got. Drink like water. Don't drink water. We might go for something completely <laughs> off the off the rails here. But I mean, they they took out Vexana, took out Lu Yi here again, uh, and that's guys are really hilarious. Story. Interesting that we're gonna see uh, the Bellaric coming out from Uga Booga here. <laughs> I mean, I, I I do honestly, I like the Bellaric the Valentina with the vengeance, especially if he gets uh, if he gets that armor for. Natan. Huh? That means a Natan. What? If he's try, if he tries to put that uh, that inspire tries to Natan mid lane onto the Bellaric, he's going to be doing a ton of damage. Natan mid lane chat. And Natan can't really. I want to say he has a nerf to how uh how regen items affect him so he's he actually can't really get a lot of that health back the from, mid lane? from his uh from his items who the hell is the I mid lane chat four fighters comp right now though shark is on the masha chicken is on exporg best player is going natan jungle right i i <laughs> I, I i do think zia is going to be the one that is on the natan but we definitely have seen uh ruby in the gold lane before uh some some setups that they could do is natan in the gold and they got the exborg and the trizla mid with the masha xp they could do tons of different variation do you think the masha is going to be in the roam exborg mid Red, ruby mid who's going here? mid well, we're going to find out, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be game two of Bloodhounds taking on Gaming Gladiators. Bloodhounds doing everything they can to try and take this to a game three. Yeah, well, you know, only damage dealers, Natan. In our second series so, today, Jungle Natan, Hoon's Terizla, and Hoon Terizla mid. Uh, you know, frontline at mid. It's we we need a Terizla mid tutorial. The Terizla <laughs> in the mid lane is going to be the best option. I, yeah. You know, understandably, Ruby can go in, Russian the, meta. in the gold lane, but you kind of talked about it earlier. The, the, the Ruby did receive almost a 50% nerf on the lifesteal he gained. I think it went from 10% to 5% uh, base. So it is a significant nerf, but is it good enough for bloodhounds to be able to get the victory in this game three i think i mean game two i think if there's any chance that they will this is definitely one of the comps that they could kind of run through especially since i i feel like charisma mid chat there. Yeah, I, I mean, and it, but it also comes down to the execution there. We can already see that best. Assassin Dave said it. Oh, best player coming in hot gets pulled. And the rest of the Ooh, he is. That boy is skating away. Hoon, Hoon's dead. What? How? How do you let him escape like that? Oh my God! How did Hoon just do that? This is the draft that Gaming Gladiators is really looking for. I understand, right? You can, you can. What the fuck? As the solo. Who did Ramsey kill? When the Shark. In the gold lane, he has more of a utility spell. It could be a purify. It could be, uh, you know. Assassin Dave said this is uh. He could kind of escape and pair his. Uh, dash with he said it's a it's Russian meta ton with Retri. I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to deal with uh, you could say the Belleric ultimate, uh, which is quite good. Uh, paired up with two of the vengeance that the side of Bloodhound has available in this game. Well, and that's what I was talking about. The Bell. Oh, Ramsey's actually getting taken down by Fly Chicken there. But Bellaric, I mean, with the Vengeance, and I mean, if he gets uh, Blade Armor as well, Best Player is going to really have to be careful about where hmm. some of those auto attacks start landing. Because what the fuck's up with the camera? He's chunking himself down. I've faced hmm. it before when I faced a surprise Bellaric, <laughs> and the result is you basically having your own halfing your own down. You see Bellaric, Ogabuga charges into here, and you see Best Player chunking himself down right now. 
with that vengeance on Ugabu, who's going to go ahead and run himself down back to safety. Boca Rosca pulls Shark in at the edge. Uh, 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 oh, oh, Ramsey takes, takes out Shark again. Ramsey's with the decimation now, trying to oh, out. that was good. 3 300. 300 to 310. Kill 300 to 310. 300 to 310. I do also want to say this though. Bloodhounds have decided to put Ramsey in the jungling position this time around, putting Templars on the XP. Not to Three say that the last game, you know, that switch was warranted. Three you know, but Bloodhounds, unfortunately, Easy. especially when it came down to that mid to late game, they were just unable to win a single fight at all. So the switch up, once again, it's an element of surprise. It does not always work, but definitely provides some sort of, you know, element of surprise and it it it, it 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 can give them the win but it's just gonna be quite hard because members are just switching that, that was a good fight that was a good fight here yeah Uga Booga does catch out doing a good job of giving vision for his team letting them know where everybody is zia on the bottom side i want to say uh outside the box kind of uh draft here for game and gladiators and i want to say bloodhounds doing a good job of kind of punishing them at least in the early game here we're in the opening four mm. minutes here so i don't want to get too far ahead of myself but we did talk about it i want to say the first eight minutes of the last game bloodhounds had a very firm a very standard and good successful game against gaming mm. gladiators and i also do want to mention another thing is that shark died twice on his matilda in the last game and proceeds to go undeathed uh throughout the whole entire game oh so this snap thing that he has shark being bro one solo as you were talking about 40 to four oh unfortunately four, the best player does find a kill up at the well, top 439 to 445 here at the top 45 xp Ooga Ooga and one shot trying to catch hoon off that is a tarizla though comes in with a mortal coil trying to put on some damage but penalty zone out from hoon to put him to put him at a safe distance from bloodhounds the side of gg is struggling a little bit in terms of their rotation setting up for a good fight that's not to take away that they are still the contending winners of you know the game here <laughs> it, it, it just seems like this comp is not 100 percent working out you can even see you know shark not having the best time of his life especially after the deal and look at the damage that he's doing it's 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 pretty much nothing at this point Ooh, Shark actually kicks another decimation from Ramses, who's looking for an opportunity to finish that up. Fly Chicken doing a good job of trying to create some distance there. Turtle down to about half health. The rest of Bloodhounds trying to zone out. Gaming Gladiator's best player not able to get close. So this is going to be a turtle, another turtle actually for the Bloodhounds. It's six to two. Now they're continuing on the pace. They're going to try to steal away this orange bus buff from best player. <laughs> the, the orange bu and, and, bus. Know, once again, this is regular season. Of Fucking Jesus! Just UA with the board. Jinx. Every team gets a point if they. Amasha the Rome's getting get clapped right points. now. We saw earlier Fiends was able to get that three points. Oh my God! Gladiators at ten right oh, now. Oh Zia! This is gonna be the second game here. Ooh, ooh! Yeah, I'm offended. Oh, he's gonna get pulled. There. Uh, it's not gonna be enough to though. Help with the defense. That boy said time. he's gonna get that bus buff. Bass <laughs> player just casually walks the out of there. Boca. The of that damage could come through there. Bloodhounds come in there. Sharks gonna have to find himself an escape. I wonder if Ugabuga has gotten the blade armor. Yet, <laughs> this is exactly what Ugabuga needs to be doing on that Bellerin. This is if wild. Soon as he sees and lays eyes on the best player, you see him frontline. He charges for best player and basically begging him, hit me, hit me with everything that you can, and I'm just gonna reflect all of this damage back to you whether it's with my normal kit whether it's with the vengeance or whether it is with a, a blade armor mm -hmm. and if you, if you take a wow. look at bloodhounds this time around though they actually have winning lanes they're able to get the top side tower quite easily look at the bot they're able to get that also and the scaling in terms of their lane clear is just in a merch upon, and i don't know if i've been trying to i I've, right I've been i've been kind of putting some na merch together i got these some shirts day, some cc but these shirts are kind of costly though a little bit hard for the side of gg yeah, Hoon gets caught here, pulled back a bit, Ooh. looking for a decimation. Ramsey finds it. Now trying Ramsey to is nasty in the jungle. The fast enough. Ooga what right the there fuck? By his side. Shark on the back lines here. Here comes another realm from the Yo, Shark. And Shark offers up more. That turtle cam was bad.
Yeah, we're starting to see a, a small diggy strap, but a shutdown onto the top. That turtle cam that just happened like a minute Ramsey. ago was That's kind of bad. Pretty big kill, considering that Ramsey has been dominating. It was, uh, it like, two, one, came up. The yeah, yeah, like, it came up right during, like, a team two, fight. Zero, and, and then, like, the turtle was super far away. Is, you know, holding on to the hopes for the side of GG to get this 2-0 sweep. It's definitely going to be tricky. I can see, like, everything side. in the mid lane and the turtle. <laughs> bringing that up before. That shark, independently of his team. Oh. Roscoe. I always I always scream when a, a good play happens. Jeez. Okay. I I going to be able to find an Shark TP him. might open up the next lord for gaming gladiators. Yeah, the gold lead is now close gaming. Shark TP him, bro. the series. The Martis is another one on Shark I I, I don't think it's a surprise anymore that Shark is kind of dying left and right. The Masha is just a little bit hard to play, especially in the early game. Oh uh, yeah, and especially when you're you're frontlining against somebody like a Ramses who just really wants those melee fights. GG wins so, late game. You can see right here, it's, it's not really stalling out gaming. Gladiators doing a good job. Ooga Booga charges in the midst of this. Big pop up comes from the Lord. Watching Ross, a skill diff. Distance. Best player gets the Lord. Nether Realm is out for the side of the Bloodhound, still putting on the damage. Can they find it? Very low right now. Fly Chicken doing a good job of being that front line. Sleeps gets taken out by Shark Boca Roscoe next on the job. Block and Templus and Ramsey. Oh, fried chicken Ooh. still has that immortality though. Ramsey, one HP. Player. Jeez. All magic damage and shark. Jeez. Jeez. He had six deaths, but Bloodhound's falling back. back. Kills of his own right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Shark is doing extremely well at this. Oh point. my god. Shark, kills does get shut down. He stopped him over an aggression, but you know, I just want to say, damn, this shark is getting players. kills He's right there. And he has the kill pressure available. That was wild. Down pretty much members left and right. And he was able to do so near the mid side, giving the side of Gaming Gliders a good fight along with the Lord marching down. Gaming Glider is definitely going to be taking some real estate here. Yeah, Ooga Booga trying to chase down best player. You can see the ultimate is out. <laughs> He's, I mean, I feel like Ooga Booga's uh, is starting to have less and less of. We need the Hanabi God back, bro. Dealt. Uh, right now, we have another engagement here. Why do Ooga Booga go to Rome? Pushing at the bottom high ground tower. That's going to be an easy kill for the Bloodhounds. Now, with the tables have turned. Why'd they go to Rome, Russia chat? Kind of already getting a I miss, I miss Ooga Booga MM. Yeah, Ooga Booga right now taking a heap of damage. That's kind of the point that he wants as a tank shark jumping in there looking for a kill on the Ooga Booga. Charges in, finds it, and himself a little bit of an escape. Unfortunate for Boca Roscoe, who was not able to find the Nether Realm quick enough. And that's a waste of Nether Realm as the rest of them come in trying to chase him down. Last insanity, they decide against it as Gaming Gladiators turn their sights on to this mid high ground tower. Entropy is out. Best player backs himself off, and the rest of Gaming Gladiators going to go. Go ahead and reset on the map yeah good disengage coming out from the side of gaming gliders look at the damage dealt chart once again fried chicken in the lead followed pretty shortly by best player right it's a physical damage paired up with the magic damage um with the one three one style that they are running definitely best players should be kind of the hyper focus that they're looking for but fried chicken on this x board is dealing so much damage it's not really what we've you know, is it going to be a quick posture, night tonight, chat? It definitely paints a picture for the story here. <laughs> well, and this is uh, something that Lisa talked about a little bit earlier is that independently of the team, Fly Chicken could be successful. Even though they were having a little bit of a, a rough time, Fly Chicken's still doing a good job of making sure to, to keep his lane, uh, keep the pressure it's, there. It's a holiday and, weekend, uh, too. In these fights, able to kind of keep a, a nice little wall there. Ooh, Zia comes in there with that Ruby. Actually, oh, might it's Easter. It's Easter, Easter weekend. Gaming Gladiators go ahead to the engagement. Ramses finds himself a decimation. Hoon in trouble now, getting low. Ooga, <laughs> you don't travel in these dark. Dark Shark a kill onto Ramses. Boca Roscoe next on the chopping block, but down goes a shark at the bottom high ground tower. Just two or actually three members left. Oh, Templis in a little bit of trouble. Entropy okay. out. Okay. Best player is not able to find the kill. A beautiful team fight coming out from the side of GG there. Fighting four versus five, right? They didn't even have, I think it was best player in that team fight, or, or it could be chicken, but they didn't have one of the members in that team fight. They oh, fought oh. that two for two. Shark seven. Eight and three. 
I would like to have the items on the board. I do know that he's going to be building up. <laughs> Hoon's just having fun. The, the amount of damage that he's doing is quite insane. Oh, yeah, you oh. can see there, uh, 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 Blade of Despair. Yo. Team wipe, team So, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, he a rough start for him, but now kind of like picking and choosing when he can go in, get those finishing <laughs> God touches. dang it. I, I want to say not <laughs> overall a successful game for Amasha, but I mean, I, I mean, I don't think uh, it was anybody's... Uh, Anybody thought that game of gladiators weren't going to have a successful Dude, game. Dude, Shark's laying no, in his Shark bed just chilling. Did, did quite well He's got a... Russia. He should be able to kind of push that... out of the team fight if he just wants it. The burst coming out for best Yes. Player, just by himself. Now, Lord, marching down on With a furry side, blanket. Get the slap. Volca Rosco here, though. He's got the furry blanket. Is yeah, Hoon wearing not, sweatpants? Actually, yeah, that boy looks comfy. Sure the Lord kind of took its time He's got his like knee up on the desk. Ooga Booga with the vengeance <laughs> activated. He's gonna go ahead and chunk down best player a little bit. Last Insanity is out. Nether Realm out as well. Best player gets taken. Who's clapping on the backer? Advantage. Can you hear that? Like that? Turning point for the Bloodhounds. You can see Templis on the back line doing a good job of distracting them, but Boko Roscoe gets taken out by Shark. Fly Chicken very low still has that immortality. Same with Hoon. Now yeah, that's crazy. To damage Boko Roscoe that's and the crazy. Rest of the team trying to force a little bit of distance between gaming gladiators and themselves ooga booga in the midst of this fray right now immortality <laughs> someone's clapping cheeks chicken. in comes the penalty zone and zia finds himself a kill on to ramsey's hoon backing up right now oh, GG's. Members, fly chicken has to use that flicker hoon in trouble can templis find the that was me clapping chat for it is able to find I'm the clapping cheeks right now you just can't even see it shark hiding in that bush sleeps in oh. trouble gets caught and shark with those recalls yeah guys welcome back to Masha 2024 <laughs> masha still is able to one hit any magic uh, any you know anyone that has no armor looking to get onto templates here i don't think he's gonna be successful just kidding Ooh, even with the nether realm from boca roscoe hey and best player, Yo, best player going ham cancer. <laughs> Who got I one shot at it? Here. Shark went from 0 6 to the hero of the game 10 8 for taking out two members, saving himself and living. And you can see best player here. A teddy bear, dude, that's a big ass well teddy bear. It's, it's really rare that we get to see, you know, these heroes come out to play. And definitely today we've seen kind of a lot of the off meta picks and how they have sleep you know, sleeps one shot in the story. Now there's 15 seconds on the Lord. Do gaming gladiators play Masha this things. style? Where they go for the objectives, or do they let that fried chicken go for a one v five on the boss side? Oh yeah. God! And that's the amazing thing—it's one v five. Chicken! Oh, oh God! God. There it is. GGS. They're falling one by one. Look at Shark in the back line, just eating them alive. Oh my God! A double kill! Yo, GGS. Four gaming gladiators. Wow. Well, Private, you know my guest coins are paying dividends today. Gaming Gladiator is able to take this series. Two they won already? Am I late? Them three points, pushing them up to the very first standing. 13 points for the season, followed behind by Fiends. Do believe they are at 11. So definitely a very solid performance coming out from Gaming Gladiator. It's a great draft, and we got to see so many different types of heroes, right? There's in the jungle, the Masha in the wrong position. It's, it's painting quite a beautiful picture in this first half. Yeah, and I want to say, man, uh, Bloodhounds had the strategy, especially in the early game, but not able to hold on to those leads. Not just that, but not able to transition that lead into too many objectives as well we had i mean it was a very a very rough start for shark but in inevitably able to come back once he got those uh, two BODs. blade of despairs you can see up there just I mean, had two blade of despairs he was going for a third team of bloodhounds and he's going for a third you know, blade of... dude i don't feel like items right? should be able to stack BODs paired with the blade of heptasis paired with the masha buffed first skill where it scales off of damage like the amount of damage that it chunked sleeps the, the the ultimate almost didn't do too much but the first basic attack just did so much more the rich guy here best player able to take that 883 gold per minute the carry along with the forgotten ones all for the side of gg and the you made the match, end game you know, delay more pretty much doing oh, yeah. tons of tanking he was a sandbag we fixed it Ugebuka takes the title once again 
Yeah, and I want to say, especially in that early game, Ooga Booga was doing his job. He was running, he was taking the damage from Natan, uh, especially with Bellerix. Mm. Is a great counter from Natan, except for when Natan starts reaching. Flex it, chat. Flex it. Where you're no longer taking as much damage. And inevitably, Ooga Booga just, I mean, he was running in with. Yeah, Bloodhound's been having a little bit of a rough season this time around. Mm -hmm. And. You know, Moon it, versus Boca. Kind of <laughs> that is. It didn't work out because I definitely wanted to see a little bit more of that in action. Let's take a look at some of the damage tried. The Bellwick actually. 17 to 27. High, they're nicely over sleeps, <laughs> especially with the Vengeance here. Best player, of course, the standing winner of the damage dealt. But we cannot forget fried chicken. Pretty much leading. I don't even feel uh, like you should be able to buy two of the same item. The early and the mid game, he was the only one that. Played quite personally. I got, there. I got ate up by mosquitoes. Spreads across the board. It itches. Um, you know, Hoon, Chicken, and Zia all played a great part. And these are traditional people that, you know, play the carry roles, right? Zia on the gold lane. I'm starving, really Chad. I haven't ate yet. Can I get some tacos? Too much damage either. But both of them stepped up in this series, providing the front line for a damage jungler like Natan. I mean, providing the front line a little bit too much front line, we can argue here. There's, I mean, it's an all fighter draft pretty much. So I don't know. It's it's interesting that Ruby had zero to eight until pretty much the last of the game. So it shows that they can still come back despite having a little fun with their drafts. Tacos yeah, and I mean, water. And, uh, and that's unfortunate for Bloodhounds. I, I liked their draft and I liked the execution. Well, I liked the, the execution from the beginning. It's just you um, have to kind of continue with that. Make sure that you're not making the mistakes because eventually a team like Gaming Gladiators, they have a pace in mind. They know where they're going to struggle. Yeah, KFC this. for dinner. Uh, especially you're still hungry. Game, and they're just waiting for that opportunity. Once I got some like chili in the fridge. I got some that, chili. That, I got some uh, pork chops. Spike in their damage they're gonna start coming forward full blast and i heard that do, clip and that's uh, not really clapping hands it's clapping my <laughs> kind of i'm like with. clapping my th my like thighs what all teams kind like of that in uh nact here but just like what private is saying the power spice that's me like patty kate patty cake in my thighs you know masha was able to pick up the first bod i think that's masha counter changed in the Rome position right? <laughs> um you know who didn't really stand out too much with the penalty zone but did provide a lot of the frontline uh cc and just like you're saying ruby the impact wasn't there quite until that mid to late game spike after he got that <laughs> two, zero, two, and and eight, he was able to kind of come hands back clapping and the impact the i'm dead up, uh the side of gaming I'm gliders dead. to prevail in the series I mean, it almost seems like the fact that um, Ruby and Teresa popped up is because they were put in that penalty zone for maybe like, do not <laughs> the do girlfriend the in the back getting so clapped by Tyrone. I am the Tyrone. What you mean? Back, uh, mid lane, but still, what you mean? And when Shark was going up in that Masha, I saw all the cams. They were actually laughing and having a lot of fun, even for Boca Roscoe was having fun you want to knock pop off towards the late game so Dude, you way looks like the la very, the, very the lost avatar <laughs> that was never found yeah, it, very intense especially uh i'm joking it, it's it's <laughs> a comp and a character that went well here against bloodhound oh boy the last airbender because they weren't able to kind of uh enforce their will from the early game and keep it pushing on into the mid i'm not sure how successful it would be definitely <laughs> change your pace uh especially towards the late game where masha, just masha counter a cc or your tank or mage be a village and, and then your your yeah. mage is dead and it's like oh i don't know what we're going to be doing here i think uh next Oof. one on the list was the uh xp and then masha uh it, it's very we can't ever see, interview uh, best player because like he never gets that, on like uh, the camera uh, these new patches come in to see just how far we can push some of these you think we could like interview yeah, players Mario but not have them on cam uh, just like have their photo watching it but i know who didn't sleep definitely did not yeah. uh in that last <laughs> fight he just kind of got hit once twice and just died and then he also got shark like zoning two three members next to the base just killing two three of them while the rest of gg's just there cleaving the front line so definitely a good game coming out from ggs and you know quite honestly bloodhounds played pretty good standing you know tall you thought a stream first, ended like, it's eight minutes for both no, games. No, no, so, no, no. you know definitely props to them for giving us a great match to watch definitely and the mvp goes to a best player with that natan like 
Private was saying there were a lot of front lines, so everybody is setting up for best players engages, and he did well. Now, UA, why don't you take us through it? Because you've played Martin with him, so you know a lot about his Martin. Is that yeah, Riles I mean, with his camera yeah, turned the wrong way? That has, uh, quite a oh, lot no, that's Night Horde. Uh, he's really, you know, not famous for the utility jungle. So seeing him on a lot of the damage carries. Yo, yo, what's up, guys? Into mind, um, along with coming in here, get a VC on check on you guys. See how you're doing. Class. So seeing him perform so extremely well, so dominating in both <laughs> games, you know, it's it's, it's not unexpected. This doing good, man. Doing good, you know. Before, Drinking some water. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, especially in okay. these last two games, I mean, uh, especially on the Marks, we talked about the value you get out of that. Uh, coming online, bringing in the kills, and then yes. the second game with yes. Natan. After, I mean, after you had the Are you guys that, hopping you on cams? To tank all the damage by himself, any, by himself right, anymore. Uh, just uh, an amazing gameplay there. Let's and get actually, it, let's get it. it for us I think it'll be starting I I sometime really soon. The best player I think they're trying to roll through, like, an interview game. real fast, and then after the interview, they'll want to jump right into games, so... We're gonna see more of that Masha in the room position. I know Yue talked about how he wants to see Masha back in that room, but do you guys think we're gonna see it in the games where they're facing some more dominant opponents? No. I, as <laughs> much as I like seeing something different, I'm not that early game. What was it like? O and six, O and yeah. five for Shark. <laughs> There's not many teams that I want to say. <laughs> that you can go Drink in some. and five against and still you always excited to, to why is he excited i was i was too busy it talking to the teams to be a risk too many people are, are willing to take well i mean you know the side of gaming gliders they they they, they pulled up with a great game plan right it's not only do they have I no heard, magic I heard. damage uh range carry the natan in both games quite honestly they have a very strong physical side at the same time. So, you know, it was a very well balanced comp for them. I'm not saying it's going to succeed against a lot of the teams, but definitely in this game. Hop, uh, hop on the games whenever you can. All the yeah, Night Hordes in there already. Completely viable in ranked games. Go try it out. Uh, don't take my word. <laughs> you don't have a camera. Uh, don't take his word for it. You don't got like an minute. iPad? You don't, you don't got another device? They actually do have a game plan. Come on now. I mean, of course. You know, it, it, it was well drafted. The Natan, the Masha, the you're Magic, poor. the Physical. They had the front line sets. Uh, you're in America. Sure that, you're not you know, poor. The, the Natan is in the jungle while they played a 1-3-1 style. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not saying it's gonna work in every you game. You telling me you in don't? This case, they played. You don't. You. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our movie I, I actually thought uh, Bloodhounds mm. had some of oh those. Oh God. Those engages in for them. Listen, they even even homeless people, people have two phones. Both games, Bloodhounds had. There were rookie mistakes coming out from GG <laughs> that Bloodhounds capitalized on, but ultimately uh, GG had the victories in hand. But for the upcoming <laughs> fights against some more dominant teams, it might be good for GG to kind of clean up that game. Come on now, man. A you got parents, right? Yeah, they I mean, swam with you, right? Uh, I, I want to say, like, a, a lot of people get. Uh, you just swam alone? When, like, the top teams kind oh, of. Damn. Uh, I want to say get a little loose with the <laughs> draft, maybe go a little bit more experimental. <laughs> but I mean, you can't be at 110 percent every day, all day, uh, without some. We gotta type work of on that. Out that occasionally can happen. So it's nice to see them kind of, especially when it comes to things that are relevant to the meta, uh, things that are relevant to the most recent patches that we see. A good <laughs> limit test on Masha to see how far we can take her, see where she fails, <laughs> where she succeeds, and things like that. Not a bad opening. Uh, for gaming gladiators but and then on the other side All right, Dave's uh, gonna come in here if we don't hurry up if not for the fact that we're, come attack. we're taking on a team like gaming gladiators I want to say a very uh more yeah, successful man. Than I've seen them. I've been in the the past. I mean, where the from I, Bloodhounds. I was like, what the fuck? Where's LG game. at? Maybe uh, uh, something that needs to be of note for them is to kind of continue. It's you on the board, man. Holding on to even though playoffs don't really, really matter. More objectives as we move on later. If you still but make still, it. Like we said uh, showing that they have more room to grow. I'm sure they will definitely. Show hey, definitely want to get a win. Growth in the upcoming weeks. But first, let's have an interview with Zia to get a sense of what or actually back in mind. Green is good, red is bad, flames and CPU is Hello, overloaded. Zia. Welcome to the show. What's up? How are you doing? Your mic's a little bit um quiet on my side. Uh oh. Zia. 
Looking good though, you're growing out that mustache, Zia. <laughs> I'm gonna take it out soon. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> yep. All right, so last game, guys. Zia, what was what was happening last game? I saw that 0 to 8 uh, Ruby all the way until pretty much end of the game. And then and, uh, that to Rizla. None of you guys get on Masha. cam? So it was Riles getting on? Um, right. to be honest, we're just get, we're just trying stuff right, right now. Mm -hmm. And so there's only two of you. Was actually, just not on flex, but yeah, man, you're, yeah. you're my team. I'm managing. Then I just fuck tried. night horde. I never played it though. Oh, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck night horde. <laughs> I mean, we can kind of tell. <laughs> Were you guys trolling a little? <laughs> I, d I don't mm, vote. <laughs> really. We're still trying, but. Mm. I mean, it'll be, it'll be fun to see that you're not trolling. So, okay, so were you trolling last week? <laughs> Just <laughs> chicken will say hot, yes. Hot take. Chicken will chicken say yes. Mostly yes. Chicken will say yeah. yes, but you wouldn't. I wouldn't. I tried. I tried that game. G, what up, Pika? And so about so chicken adding into you guys does he know his mic's live i do i do know my mic's yeah. live i was just fucking yeah, around this year <laughs> it seems like we're adding a new addition to the roster chicken how do you like the what's roster, up or do you what's see up? any changes happening um i don't think we're gonna oh, change the lineup and that's not my fault <laughs> i think makes us more stronger maybe we just have to fix a little more a little more on the synergy because we're, we're kind of still used to Milo, you know, his play style. So, yeah, maybe just, I think just the synergy for a bit. So you like having chicken more than uh, the goat? Yeah, because it's chicken, you know. <laughs> well, we know what, uh, what Zia's favorite animal is. And now, with you as the um, marksman, so do you think you're the best marksman right now in NA? Or do you think there's anyone else who is a top contender? Maybe basic or anyone else? Or you're just that dominant? No, I don't think I'm the best, but I think I can beat anyone though. I'm not the best, but I, I think agree. I can beat them. Yep. I agree, I agree. And now, if you were to have a chance to head into MP, uh, MPID or the Philippines, which team would you want to join? No one. I want to stick here. No one. No. <laughs> Dad. So Gia saying oh. GG oh, is the best they. team in ML right now. <laughs> no, that's it though. But I just don't want to mm -hmm. go there. That's true. That's true. I like it. I like GG. I think you guys are coming in very strong this season, and you're gonna do even better as we move forward. So thank you, Zia, for joining us in the interview. We're gonna have you back at the seat soon. So keep practicing and um, and enjoy uh, CW Airlines. Yep. <laughs> Take it, <your> Liz. <laughs> <laughs> that Liz looking for those clips and, Z and Zia dodging them like Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> There's some wild Ooh, I, questions. I just, you know, I want to make it on the Clippers Liz today, so I'm just <laughs> trying my best, you know, to get myself out there. <laughs> that was kidding. a great interview, though. Great interview from both sides. I mean, Zia definitely gave us a lot of answered a lot of good questions coming out from you, Liz, and Zia, what the preparation for that. A lot of good moments in that. I, don't know. I mean, it shows that. Uh, Whoopi is. Has been always been a humble. Uh, player. yeah, I'm guessing um, so. Yeah. yeah. It's like in game, there's gonna be moments where. You get yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that'd be it. Um, let off by certain certain plays doesn't mean you're you're a bad player. It just means you had a bad day. And I think the uh, the best thing about. Uh, production. Did you catch that? We for the side of legacy, PDR is going roam. Whoopi is being subbed in and Ken's out. A lot to look out for for this player. Yeah, and it, it kind of says something about North America. This is probably one of the strongest game and gladiators that we have seen uh, throughout all of the so seasons. PDR Rome. Likewise, uh, here that means I'm guessing PDR's the strongest. Our Whoopi is going to EXP. Of the teams here in North America this season. 
Yeah, and I really what enjoyed seems. the last question. It's like, I know, Joe. Know, like, which team would you want to go overseas? And he's like, no, I'm sticking here. Did Zia? It, it kind of shows like... Did Zia, did Zia say I was his, I, his, uh, yeah. you know, they've been his idol? the scenes for the last year, last two years almost. And I could even argue the last three years before that. Did he say that? And, you know, now I that see they're that really shit. cherishing each other, they want... Um, to be honest, we're just, get, we're just trying stuff right now. Mm -hmm. And the plan was actually just not on. When do you say it? But yeah, something like that. Then I just tried Ruby. I never played it though. <laughs> just here right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, we can kind of tell. <laughs> so for <laughs> were you guys trolling a little? <laughs> mm, not really. We're still trying, but mm. we're still trying. I mean, it would be fun to see that you're not trolling. So, okay, so were you trolling last week? Just. Chicken will say yes. Chicken will say yes. Chicken will say yes. But you wouldn't. I wouldn't. I tried. I tried that game. And so about so chicken adding into you guys' roster. I mean, you've stuck with the team for the past whole year, and this year it seems like we're adding. You still, you still like Liz at two, two k, two times speed. Um, I don't think we're gonna change the lineup. And having chicken, I think makes us. Said I don't think we're gonna change the lineup. A little more on the synergy, because we're we're kind of still used to Milo, you know, his play stuff. So yeah, maybe this. I think it's the synergy. So you like having chicken more than the goat. Yeah, because it's chicken, you know. <laughs> well, we know what uh what the favorite animal is, and now with you, you say hee hee. Marksman, so do you think exp exp right now in the or do you think there's anyone else who is a top contender? Maybe basic or anyone else, or you're that dominant? No, I don't think I'm the best, but I think I can beat anyone though. I'm not the best, but I, I think agree. I can beat them. Yeah. I agree, I agree. And so I'm not the best, but to have a chance to head into MP uh, MPID or the Philippines, which team would you want to join? All right. Someday, oh, I like it. Um, back to the casters. Know, back to the yapping chat. You know, I can speak Chinese. It's not 100 perfect, but back, back to the yapping. To go over to that region and see <laughs> if we can I mean, I can speak Chinese too, but um, for me, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, the opportunity sounds great, but I gotta say, like. If I was to go true to my heart, I think NA is the region, is the community that I really love here. And part of me loving to be a host is because of the lovely community we have in NA. So definitely, we got a lot of um, heartfelt answers from. So you're saying um, Zia got the inner inner blackness? And Jesus. As well, so everybody loves NA, and we love. <laughs> so we Liz at times two speed. <laughs> you're you're fucking crazy. We'll go. Rise on top, we'll find out. The land of the free. Yeah, they're they've been ready. They gone. But yeah, that early black dragon, a little questionable. An implosion though, not questionable. We only have Riles and um uh, and and uh Nash on cam though. Oh, that's it. Yeah. It's supposed to be Joel Lee, but he wouldn't get on. They tried to get Whoopi on there. I don't know. Yeah, I just. I don't know. I can. I can ask what the, the excuse is. He's not. Uh, he's not playing today. He subbed out. I don't think we've ever seen PDR on cam. <laughs> I tried. He said that. Hold on. Here he ha he probably has or going towards that demon hunter sword is just gonna scale infinite towards that late game and also Hoon completely you know untouched in this series and oh I'm offended. Four men set short on fire with the ruby day. I'm offended. Catching basic, catching chicken, catching Zane. Maybe if we get some more core world, he's gonna take down chicken. That's gonna be a two for three trade. Nicolette, find short. My goodness, you wave. Both teams giving it their all, but gaming gladiators slightly ahead. I forgot to mute the pause screen. I think production needs a break. I'm not quite sure. Isn't that the countdown timer? All right.
All right, guys. We're starting in like two minutes. Just FYI. All right. I'm super hungry, chat. I might have to like smash a taco on stream. Can you show my socks? I'm not wearing any socks. I don't wear socks. Who wears socks, bro? You gotta free those toes, bro. Free hashtag free the toes. <laughs> Frank, my roommate? I don't have a roommate anymore. Moved out. I said prank my roommate. Those live matters. He stopped paying rent. <laughs> so we kicked him out. I got a new keyboard, chat. <sighs> Get the new keyboard. <laughs> pretty cool. It's pretty cool. What switches? Uh, I actually don't know what switches. They're, uh, I, yeah. It's the Naruto. Let's see. Let's see. They are. I don't think it explains the switches. I don't fucking know. They're really smooth though. Yo, what up chat? What up, what up? Oh, it says scan to learn more about your keyboard. I, I just, I really bought it cause it was uh, Sasuke and like Naruto. It's really hard to type on though. I can tell you what it is here in a second. How big is your belly button? Sheesh. All right. It says that they're geo switches. No, oh. there's a lot of fucking. Oh, no. geo switches. Pre lubed. I'm ready to. Uh, the geo switches are pre lubed. Going, especially the second half uh, where we have uh, some exciting matches coming, coming up. Yeah, no, it's going to be between Legacy and Night Horde. Um, you know, both teams we actually know quite often. Legacy itself um, haven't had the best performance in our uh, first half, but they're definitely looking to overthrow a few games here in the second half. Someone got muted. And we also got Night Horde. Uh, a. Branded team There's like stabilizers. The is completely new, so excited to see how these two teams face up. It's a gasket yeah, mounted design to with silicone sockets. Custom high ground geo switches pre lubed. Zero gravity zone. However, Custom PCBs with universal five pin hot switch swap sockets. Pre lubed, screwed yes, in, <laughs> pre, pre lubed, screwed in stabilizers. At Night Horde, I want to say we were just talking about how RG, season, RGB lighting with south facing LEDs. And I want to say this is the best triple dampening Night Horde, maybe not P O R O N PCB foam yet, but they've shown that continual increase, that continual uh, step up the ladder that uh, tells you that's incoming seasons. And it's a even weighted now, brass medallion, and are, are showing just uh, some huge 
uh, positives. From this is like dressed like an yeah, anime. Yes, yeah, what up? What up? Go ahead. Coming up, so let's you wait, take us through the roster and continue that sentence. <laughs> Night Horde's roster, we got R on the gold lane, Momi, which you know has done quite well, Sayori, Oh My Fo, and Sleepy. These are, you know, s s some pretty known players, especially over on the East Coast. Um, a lot of them have played together uh, before, so you know, I actually yeah. quite know all of them uh, pretty well. It's really um, heavy. It's, it's, it's like it's, it's a strong the board's like probably saying, like five pounds roster, but it maybe a little less maybe like three pounds i don't know it's pretty heavy a lot of the results especially in the past series yeah, 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 yeah. it has the brass plate right there it's got sasuke's like uh sharing gone so you wait take us through what changed Let's go. There is going to be a roster swap between Kuya Ken and Whoopi. Whoopi is going to come in instead of Kuya Ken, which is playing in the wrong position. But I do believe that Whoopi is going to be heading into that XP position, switching PDR into when, uh, the now. When you plug uh, it in, it looks like that. Know, PDR is a very old school player. I do believe he was in Ghost at some point in time. I got like uh, LEDs on the side. Also, when he was leading a group and you know the wise man especially <laughs> with that type of haircut i'm like, telling you you could definitely, definitely do bicep curls with it but it ain't gonna get you it ain't gonna get you ripped complete the legacy roster a lot of people from the boy trev's everywhere all the streams open youtube he's been trying for a while to kind of break into the top eight and i want to say after breaking in very successful in breaking into the top eight, has been faced a full with, uh, cnc aluminum NA frame has to offer and, is, and triple dampening foam uh, in his to create a luxurious yes. feel and keep hurdles, your hurdles keep your uh, keyboard in place no rattled so anchored keycaps pre-lubed screwed in stabilizers <laughs> it's hella funny oh. of course of course Yo. we got the black dragons in play you know they they they've they've, they've all right they've everybody else well. is voting for oh, night horde i'm voting for lg gonna, uh go easy against legacy right like this is a strong how much did it cost it was like 260 i think to two city yeah and it's, two it's, city this is the unfortunate balance when it comes to a team like legacy right now who has yet to get a victory and yet to really catch their stride here in the top eight of north america still trying things out still trying to get that synergy in the rotations <laughs> right and uh unfortunately have kind of come up behind a who lot is of the 15 percent that suspected that bloodhounds was gonna win with the fact that uh, we saw night Horde has some changes on the roster maybe lacking some synergy there it's all an opportunity uh for legacy well um i mean with uh, <laughs> legacy actually is the one who had the roster changes but those oh, yeah, roster geez. changes might actually be what they needed to get that dub today so who knows this is the match that we were actually looking for and for night horde though night horde is doing very well this season and um, if you guys haven't checked out okay how can you be slower from uh, from <laughs> their mage sayuri who gave us a little tutorial on playing that nana so if you haven't seen that check it out and now we're gonna go straight into draft a great shot yeah out. i had a little bit of a tutorial that uh, nana versus the lu yi last weekend gave us a little bit uh you can check that out on the mobile legends north america channel here as we step into this draft immediately night horde going for the x borg ban well i just want to kind of point out the timestamps are the hardest not gotten a very good win in nact yet all right the first half was quite tough they played against a lot of great teams and just was a little bit unfortunate this is still a very top tier team right they're going to be able to dominate in kind of the north american rank ladders but this time around <laughs> facing against the best of the best that north america has to pdr offer. gives you Once cartel again, vibes that you know our group in north america everyone is getting stronger it's getting harder everyone's getting much more competitive so this match really kind of determines if that's Legacy what i was doing the step out of uh their current standings because quite honestly night horde is a team that you know has shown some success but it's not as consistent as they would hope for so legacy definitely a match that they almost must yeah i had the in order for them I, to I took the stream the times season 
and then I downloaded the stream. But then when I downloaded the stream, the times weren't the same. It was weird. I don't know why that was the case. They still have that name that has the history here in North America, but these all of these members basically brand. So I downloaded the 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 actual like MLBB stream because from from the the channel, and then I I took timestamps from the actual stream while it was live, and they didn't match the actual like downloadable live stream that I took. Ban or yeah the pickup. I they, they were like 20 seconds off and sometimes it'd be it sometimes it'd be like 18 or 20 seconds off i want to say some recent buffs but still kind of been keeping yeah so like yeah 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 so like the downloaded time and the video and then the live stream time was completely different i like 20 seconds give or take but definitely it was super bad on all of our minds as we cheer for legacy now you know in terms like of say bands, say if you went back and watched the live stream out, you know chicken had a great export game and you you time. took the the time stamp out, so of like say like a minute and 30 strong, uh, out of a 600 six six to, uh six hour want, stream Novaria, the if i went to the mini uh, the minute and 30 time uh, on the video i downloaded it like the full live stream i downloaded it it's completely different than what what is on youtube to go for lilia which she has uh, done quite well in it was bad uh, I want to say with the uh, most recent nerfs to Ruby we've kind of well, yeah I mean, sans the gaming gladiator correct correct yeah Rosia admits he'd never First played pick. her before <laughs> uh, I want to say like she's kind of Ruby's kind of fallen off uh as far as we've seen from the first two matches uh kind of replaced with CC who's pretty dominant in that XP lane we're gonna see if that's gonna get picked up here then usually followed up with that uh, yeah but you gotta find it though it's not as easy as just like oh I want to go yeah, like to so an hour and 30 and minute and the, the stream you know but i'm I, I don't is there like a way to clip lovely opening a lot of the teams uh especially in the roam position arla is a very tricky hero and i played roam for a very long time i don't really want to touch that i got you because it, you that go makes it easy you can't go out it's just very hard for me but there's plenty of great people that have done so well right to name a few t is extraordinary on this R lot, and this time around, Night Horde is gonna be the one that flexes it early on. Mm. Legacy countering that. With I was trying to CC. explain We've that. Seen plenty of CCs uh, in today's performances. Kind of want to. Well, see time to watch Sayuri. Uh, I was talking about like how I was uh, trying to like create clips and edits for like uh for yeah, content thing. on the one side uh for the side of night horde our lot packs uh, a lot of team setting potential i was uh, trying to create like uh, clips for the pro teams, the teams but i couldn't team fighting potential on the other side i want to say is cc uh, everything was like 20 seconds focus, off of what i like took from the live stream of, uh, a cc for your team but can kind of be in your own editor is like almost the only way to do it to or you have to find like an editor that knows mobile legends go with these compositions and oh where we end up i do see that uh that Nolan, Nolan pick up for the side of Nighthorn. <laughs> yeah, so typically <laughs> when warfare or the women's tournament. There's a setup for the Harris. Does VH well. and Legacy play each um, other tomorrow? I can tell it you. It seems like they're still contemplating. Sayori has a few of her heroes getting taken off the board. So I do think the option is to plug her in with a mage that she can use. Now, I do not think the Na uh, the Angela is the right decision here why because arla is not going to be that extreme frontline that you're looking for you need somebody that can set and to uh get like the bush pressures with the nolan right something like a grok or something that is uh you know bush pressure so like a minotaur could be something solid but the angela does get picked up it might be a deny pick because we all know angela with cc angela with joy <laughs> is so extremely hard to deal with uh, so it might be a deny pick, but I do Yo, think Night is chilling. something like a Harith would have been a better opening for the Black Dragons. Yeah, and especially now since we're going to be into the ban phase, which does leave those options open for mm -hmm. Legacy and for Night Horde to possibly ban out. They do pick up the Claude, so they're going to be able where, to... Where is this banana? Down, but my big thing here is the early game matchup for the Nolan. I, I'm expecting Night Horde to take Martis off 
the uh, off the board uh -huh. for Legacy. That's another great opener for these teams. Uh -huh. It's something that can help kind of counteract how fast. Because Nolan, I mean, he he flies <laughs> through the jungle so quickly, and uh, his ganking potential is so fast, and it's it's so surprising. And once he gets rolling, it's very oh, hard God. to stop. And the only thing that can counter that is something that can do the exact same thing, which is somebody like Martis. Uh, we do see that on the other side, we have uh, Brody being taken off, followed by Tigreal. Mm -hmm. I think Legacy could set up for a utility jungle to pair with the Novaria. Something like a Fredrin for a knockoff and a Petri to, you know, really set up that. Thanks, CC's ass. Did your Reshi be bullying people at CC? It's not a significant kill pressure in terms of early on, but it definitely is team fightable. And, you know, now that team fightable. Taken off the board I really want a taco right now, Sam. It's 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 a very interesting uh, ban, but I you know there's still a lot on the board, right? The Lilia is still available uh, for Sayori to pick, and quite honestly, the buy? at this point, maybe a Nana Mage is something that they're looking to run paired with the Heron. Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting day to see Nana up on the <laughs> all, and uh, as someone kind of recommended the French boy the FBI right about to be right opening right up uh, so <laughs> champs house sure take that off the board for legacy now we're just waiting to see what legacy can kind of counter with if they're looking for a uh, a jungle pickup here or a roam mm. yeah with the Fredrin being taken off Something like a Boxio or an Akai. Yo, you ain't got a for Riles. But Lurry. They could also play the five man small ball comp. Me? You know, that's that's what I like to talk about. Um, I am uh, I am mixed with uh, Middle heavy. Eastern Going blood. Fast for the I think a lot of us and, are. Uh, try to get the CC online. Maybe not the Claude. If he goes Where do you think Ibusa, half of North America like came from? Snipe, right? the Middle East. Ibusa goes in. Uh, with with uh, his ultimate paired up with the Navarre I guess I don't know if I'm I'm I'm, like I'm more of like a far I'm more of like set up that legacy does the west have. of the east picks up this minotaur and I think it completes their draft quite well also it's not the five man boss I wouldn't say the middle the east I'm like the middle west the Claude in a way where he doesn't have to deal against the knockup huh I goes a fellow the, bro the push checks that the Navarre <laughs> Zimbabwe I want to say this kind of coming in I'm from like uh in that it leaves that jungle position oh, open for the last I'm definitely from like, like somewhere in Europe and because at least my dad was a possibility with does Hayabusa work? A lot of my this? family on my mom's I mean, side is German. The possibility of him kind of latching on to Nolan. I my dad was like European. The, the Angela and the the carry, maybe not the greatest picks for a Hayabusa to try to charge into. They're going to be, especially when it comes to the mid and late game, where they're going to be a little bit more tankier and a little harder to kind of pick out. So, I mean, it's, it's I mean, it's up to Riles here. It's, he, he is the master assassin when it comes to playing that role. Uh, but I expect possibly, uh, no. yeah, a little bit more uh, damage when it comes to it. The Martis uh, not taken off the board. We discussed this earlier. Martis would the perfect, uh, I want to say the purpose, the perfect opposite side for a Nolan. He's got that early game damage. Once he gets going and the enemy starts getting low, he can start chaining together those decimations and absolutely lay waste to an enemy team. Martis definitely is the standard combination in the jungle. I know you mentioned it earlier. Riles definitely has a great Martis in play. But for the side of What's showing up correctly? Have Angela and Grok on the mid. Now, Angela and Grok, when you pair it up together, Grok provides the the, the lane. Oh god, the Angela, that bro. Angela doesn't have, so it's a great pair. Both of them can go into kind of like this roaming-ish uh, <laughs> position. But Raul over here, Raul Teasy. And burst potential huh? for the side of Night Horde. That oh, yeah. might be where Legacy can look to uh, target in terms of their sure. weakness. Now, even though they don't have magic, they have the true damage from carry. But bring us in, like Orange Starch. Yeah, true damage from carry. You said my Night real Horde. name, Nab. Legacy game one of our third series of the night. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting series. We're just about halfway through today's show. We definitely have another great, exciting four series coming up tomorrow so don't miss out on that night horde with it with, with a pretty good opening the grok decides to block the waves into the mid so kuya nash is going to have a little bit more trouble in terms of <laughs> getting some of that experience so a very cheeky good opening from the side of the black dragons yeah especially because angela has a very i want to say 
scary and misjudged early game she is so strong in the early game that having those minions on the side mean you have to come forward and you have to deal with all the damage that she's able to put out there you can see here with the waves on the pdr does have an immobilization does dodge a sphere from kuya nash though mm, i just want to say we do have the 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 audience prediction on the bottom side so thank you guys all for voting for that and of course the production for putting up that overlay but you talked about the angela pick you know i actually like i want to say angela is probably the best early game hero um just just in terms that she can stack up the heal heal in such a fast burst and kind of spam up the spells it's almost like she guarantees wins and trades and also has that slow and snare uh with the second skill so angela is definitely a very formidable hero early on you can see momoi denying riles that camp so a little bit of extra gold and a small lead for the side of night horde yeah, it's not much here in the opening seconds of the game, but I mean, it'll stack up to 200 on the 200. You keep denying a lot of that jungle to your enemy. Eventually, they're going to start becoming a super under farmed. The first turtle is out a little bit of an engagement at the bottom. Whoopi takes some damage and decides to back off. This is going to open it up for Riles, who's going to be combated by four members of the night or coming in here. Big stun comes on the PDR. He's going to have to use that flicker, but not able to save himself. Sleepy actually with the hearts guard not able to catch the kill there whoopee on the backside helping to defend his team diving in is sleepy and sayori minoan fury dives up sleepy is he gonna be able to get out of here slips away in the night here as the rest of the night horde able to pick up this turtle yeah, he got sleepy zoning four members of legacy onto the backside <laughs> wrecking havoc and getting out alive i thought he was going in and never coming back out but you know, the side of Night Horde, they're able to grab up the very first objective quite cleanly here. No deaths on the board. Some ultimates were, you know, traded out from both sides. But Night Horde with a great opening so far in this match. Yeah, Momoi, you're going to have to use that wild charge defensively to get himself out of harm's way. But you were talking about it before that uh, the dashing from that R lot can be a little bit. Uh, it can be hard to kind of pass Tricky. your way in and out of a fight. But that just kind of shows you the mechanical ability of Sleepy to kind of get in there against four members. Oh, whoopsie, in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, bursting down, Sleepy. Okay. There comes the final slash and a fracture, but not able to put the finishing touches on to Whoopi. Yeah, now I do think they have pressure on the bot side. They're looking to kind of siege onto this gold plate. CC should look to defense and the rest of the members from Legacy are rotating down. The side of Night Horde is it's quite interesting, but for that, yeah, we do have a nice a little Minoan Fury. Siori's going to have to create some distance. Sleepy with the final slash onto Whoopi and PDR. No worse for wear. Actually, uh, pretty far into the game with no kills yet. Both teams very respectful of the damage of their opponents. Yeah, I think both teams are quite content with what's going on early. Uh, you know, they're both playing slow, looking to farm onto that late game. But topside, a little bit of a small aggression. I do think Jolie should be able to handle this no problem. But there's going to be gold plating for the side of Night Horde to eat on. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, uh, not much that they can do right now. Oh, my foe still kind of running around, has yet to really get those kills and chain them together. I mean, that's a plus for the legacy as about this point in the game, usually you're dealing with a Nolan who has two kills and is starting to steamroll. But instead, the Night Horde using this advantage to kind of claim these objectives uncontested, as you see there. Oh, my foe. Yo, chat, how long have I been muted? In his way. PDR caught here how long have I been muted, chat? or gets caught be behind a wall and that is going to be the first blood for oh my phone. lay down buddy yeah just want to point out that the side of legacy do have five armor boots to deal with all the damage coming out from yeah the damn so i said some funny ass CC shit that, too you know there's gonna be no tenacity for so all the ccs coming out from the i said some and funny ass shit too our lot is gonna be quite damn hard. To deal with now dude when side, when yeah, grok threw up that when momi threw up the wall i was like man he's he's like trump he built the wall stop this team pretty much that boy said bro i thought you were in a street <laughs> but on the other hand you got julie going for a yeah, i'm good early on no dhs the flicker you guys were all like attacking in the in the i was like dying oh shit oh a little bit of a clap back light wheel and oh my foes damage on that boy almost said speedy white wheels nowhere is safe even with that mortal coil
Yeah, it's a three for one trade. We're all Talking ears. I said it, bro. Fights off I said it. And then, you know, you have PDR and Ralph <laughs> kind of both falling. It seems like the aggressiveness for Night Horde paired up with, you know, the mobility that they have. <laughs> it's, it, it's doing quite Yo. well. Them, they're able to pick up a. What happened to Meow? Meow fucking. One. Now the towers. Got us. Even. Appar They're apparently, night night or uh, Bloodhounds is is, is versus Legacy tomorrow. Side. So, someone's popping their yeah, cherry right tomorrow with their first on win. The backside here, you can see Momoy and the rest of Night Horde doing their best to kind of put some pressure. There's me out. Bottom tower. They want to. I was making. I was. I was Looking seeing. I was seeing how you doing. Here. Get some damage here. Wall is gonna. Ice no way. Complimenting you, team. dude. He jumped over that wall. PDR said, Nah, bro. We're popping their cherry. The I'm just chilling. With the finishing touches, the GG. Yeah, 5K gold They're popping their 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 they're uh, they're actually getting a now, win cherry. If uh, if LG up in terms of the early game, Night Horde. If LG like doesn't win here, small trades here and there throughout the map and just winning on it, right? You have the Nolan kind of just farming the jungle. Oh, great job what? Looking for fights. Why is it to the FBI? Necessary. And also going back into the jungle to farm a lot. And you also so just on the gold lane one zero and four pretty much been in. Someone, the, someone you know, order some soju to my house. On the map. And he's just pushing on you the know how streamers be Honestly, people be like shipping be like point. pizzas uh, to their houses and shit. That's a uh, night horde has created. Yeah, it's very dominant by the night horde. Oh, you do see a final slash. Damn. Texas, two members from Legacy PDR in trouble here, getting bursted down. Tries to jump in, but sleepy putting the finishing touches onto him. That's gonna be yo. R R Legacy is big ass chilling, bro. The finishing touches on this mid tower. That Whoa, is you drink soju? Soju is so Legacy, good. Who have found struggles in I've this been trying to get to like flavored least. soju. All I can now, get is the like trashy the soju here. One thing that, the, that that they have in their favor to kind of delay uh, the snowballing from Night Horde is that they have you traumatized. Ooh, Jesus, what does Soju do to you? Yeah, that's a big set there. Blazing Duet into the back line. Is it going to be enough to put some damage? Yeah. On? Sayori might be in trouble, but oh my, uh, Riles gets taken down. Oh my, foe putting on the damage there. PDR. <laughs> he said I might commit arson. I don't know. I, when I was in Vegas, we had quite a few. The strawberry was really good. There was like a dragon fruit, I think, that was really good. Watermelon was. Okay, lead for the black dragons here nine to one is the overall scoreboard they're looking to you know open what didn't so do right what Maybe the, the fuck what time, the hell at the same time they end up the bot side tower they're looking to push even more and Yo. Like, just in all the small skirmishes you can see PDR strawberry oh yeah man set earlier but the final slash yeah, we'll be caught in there. Does Watermelon was good. With the Strawberry is really good. I've been trying to get the, some, bro. I think I have to like order it through Amazon. Three, zero, and six right now, sitting for the Night Horde's Mage, and this is unfortunate for Legacy because I might have to pick some up. Proper sets, which we just saw. It's so hard to find some, bro. I've seen enough. Skip the BTK's game. From Legacy, they are not able to find the finishing touches or be able. Yeah, yeah, yeah and positive engagement they, they sell soju on amazon mostly but it's like eight dollars a bottle yeah and you can see sleepy zoning members away with the answer just two versus three in the back this was a pack of one yeah you see even jolie with the blazing duets gonna Ooh. get caught there sayori claims another kill as r takes down riles whoopee in a bad way here even with the vengeance down to 10 percent health how big is 12.1 ounce this second to last fluid ounces tower. it says it's four top, pounds Working on the minion wave, going to be looking for this last and final high ground tower for Legacy. Only three members up right now, stuck to defend. Three waves coming in. Is this going to be it? You're looking for the heart guard right now, looking for an opportunity. PDR gets caught with the final slash. He's going to use that flicker. I think it's super tiny. The tower. Half health left onto the core. They're still able to fend here. Minions. Yeah, it's like nine fifty. Nine nine dollars and fifty cents, bro. Here. The Lord coming down into the bot lane. Oh. Sleepy finds a kill on the BDR. Julie tries with the blazing duet, but that's going to be all she wrote as a Night Horde claims a very quick game one.
It is a one-sided game here. Ten minutes in, Nighthorn was able to get the victory. With the you said you saw you game. saw my but wallet. I do want to say this though: the Black Dragons they played perfectly in this game. I wonder if so they're so do here. They only lost pretty much one death. The members that they were looking to feed, right? Uh, foe on the Nolan. You also got the carry uh, coming in from R. Those two damage dealers have done so well in uh in pretty much farming up to the items that they're looking for, and you know dealing the damage that they needed in order for the side of night horde to get a 13 and 1 performance a pretty job well done for the black dragons yeah i mean you can see it here the stats pretty much all on the side of night horde whether you're talking about towers or kills they they got the advantage that they needed maybe a little bit of a very yeah, soju is really hard to get chat. start for them and once they got rolling they absolutely took off you can see three zero four for oh my foe even sayori on the board as an what essay four nine dollars for a hundred mg game play is it i don't know if is it a hundred mg it's 360 mg Inside of Night Hordes, it's 360 mg s carry style where they go for the belt the endless battle and some damage items on top of that so everything is relatively standard there now the rich guy i think R1 it's a pretty a, a, a decent that. size Kuya Nash PDR is gonna be the sandbag maybe i should just get one just to, to see Moy on the wrong position Motherfucker says a pack yeah, of and, one. Uh, I mean, this is how do you? Tells a story how do you? How do you? Zero, four, what's a right pack now, of one? Uh, versus Riles, who was one, three, and zero, just not able to catch their legs here uh, and get some momentum. I'm gonna just get two side. of them. Once the once they had it, the the rugs like pulled. Oh from their fuck! Street, there just was no. It's a 14.99 delivery fee. The what the fuck? From Sleepy, though, leading the way for the. So you pay you pay 9.50 for the drink, you know, but then 14.99 for to be to be delivered. Damage falling that's crazy from R. So, all the members from the side of Night Horde they played a great game dealing tons of damage in different types of department. But definitely, Sleepy is the one that stands out here. We saw him that's much crazy out out rotate uh, pretty much the whole team of Legacy. So <laughs> what three the four fuck? Away what am I? Flicker out. And then you could also see the very last Lord fight where it was almost like a two versus three, right? You had the Arlot paired up with the Angela and then like they were just- I can't do anything. Shredding numbers on the backside and that's a tank no. Arlot with a Thunderbolt for a second. <laughs> yeah, and then we were talking about the, I mean, the Angela eh. in that early game that she could have, uh, especially as, as strong as she is. Oh God. Wave after wave, which does more because it lowers- And, the and then I, and then someone gets a, a broken uh, ankle. <laughs> next hit, hit even harder, and then it's healing up your team as well. And then of course you're dealing with the slow- I think it's the worth stun it. from her. A, a great job by the team <laughs> overall. It's, I mean, it's on a legacy right now to see if they can come back with something here. I want to say- uh, Oh God. A draft that wasn't it wasn't an awful draft from the legacy it's i can out drink anybody is that a talent every single step that they take forward whether it's rotations uh coming forward trying to get objectives they find themselves uh, outpaced uh by a team like the night horde at every step we can do like a bet the best is you know the best dress to kind of come back and win into this game or you could talk about the series or you even talked about the last half of the regular season right what they need to really do is they got you ain't out drinking me i'm japanese that, uh, they are proficient on they've came all the way through the qualifiers to get to this point and and, and it still feels like they're missing kind of the standard of dude i i'm got, i'm russian right they can look I'm back part russian in america the that they're looking for it could be a key element right they could be like oh we just need a yeah, yeah, yeah. Set up early so we could go in or it could be you know ryle's on a hero that he's a little bit more oh god with. i'm not saying the martis wasn't great it was who's just got the better the steroids they had a much better <laughs> game and they executed it quite perfectly only dropping one death in that game oh god yeah and what uh, is I mean, going on next draft i'm gonna assume that uh possibly uh you're gonna need to take nolan off the board <laughs> especially if, if there's just we saw that they're just they were not able to deal with the early game Even that's why the russians love me as a caster marches, i know bro they, uh, they were like this fucker this guy this guy's where it's at as, as quick as he's able to farm work his way through the jungle get those rotations and and then especially with a, a heart scarred on his uh on his side as well well yeah i mean the angela honestly provided a lot of damage and a lot of pressure in that uh mage position we saw the early game aggression that uh the oh angela god had 
uh, zoning away, uh, especially with the Grok early on. And you, you mentioned it, right? Angela is a lane bully early on. There's not many heroes that can deal with the sustain to deal with uh, the damage that she can do. And uh, paired up with the CC that she provides, like the impact that Sayori had was quite good um, in that game. Now, Legacy, they definitely need to find a way to bounce back. And I think- Oh God, uh, for oh me, God. I don't think I've ever arm wrestled. Is <laughs> we saw kind of like the standstill. That'd be wild. One in the gold lane I'd be down, I guess. You and I laughed about it a little bit, but like bringing in something like the Brody, the Herod, having a little bit of kill pressure early on. So when your Rome and your uh, mage goes down there in ganks, they could find a way to kill Jesus. or possibly right go for the route that the first two series had get that uh lane switch onto the top and bottom they're over side. here trying to Find talk about to what we're doing in the offline venue through. chat the advantage uh maybe through the mic can i show you the, the standing I can. The I can i can i can right, we got a roster swap here <laughs> I think the uh, the musical chairs continues with uh, the Night Horde as a Sleepy <laughs> going to be taken out for Nikoko here. So I want to say uh, two uh, subs in for the Night Horde, but I mean, still showing uh, a dominating performance from the last game and uh, looking to continue that on through game two. And uh, right off the bat, uh, Angela taking off the board. They're not trying to deal with that at all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I like the roster swaps, right? Everyone gets to play a little bit uh, for fun. Um, you know, it, it may not for be as, fun. as we would like. Um, and quite honestly, when you're looking at a lot of the top teams, for example, current standings are right here, it, right? BTK generally not much roster swap. And then when you look at took me a second to get there, even though they have currently we got GG fiends, BTK, devious activity, so well area 77, night horde, legacy and bloodhounds roster swap. So, you know, it could be leading some charge early on, but definitely it's nice to have, you know, so many different players join and we get to see so many different faces private. Yeah, and this is, I mean, honestly, I, I have always not had, like, the highest opinion when it comes to, like, a lot of the roster swaps and how positively or negatively it can kind of sometimes affect the synergy of a team. But, I mean, here tonight, we've seen nothing but uh, success from a lot of these teams, maybe mostly because they're in a position now where they can do these swaps, uh, get some experience on some of those characters who have been... I felt uh, like I was pretty far really behind. Get out there and uh, get some of that, uh, that NACT experience. Uh, as we move on here, I want to say kind of the, uh, the same bands that we saw uh, before, Matilda and the Barats going to be taken off their strong combos from them. And on the other side, for the Legacy, we have the Angela and the... Jesus, I was far behind the board very interesting too i mean we had a the yappers are super yapping on to say super yappers bro but i mean it didn't matter you she picked up the angela and it was, was absolutely super successful on her yeah no, i mean this time they decide to kind of swap around the bands from the side of legacy they're not really all out focusing on sayori and you know it's quite interesting sayori even with the focus ban still did so well with the angela and now the fair miss the novaria is out for play the nolan that got taken out uh that got taken away from the side of night horde is now also available and and you know there's there's a lot of assassins that you know are up for grabs as well uh the joy comes into mind uh definitely and something like the natan the harith you know those magic damage dealer pair so well with a physical damage at mid <laughs> oh man it's funny too because I, I just uh i mean uh sayori is everything that you hate about an angela you went for it uh, especially when it comes to, like the kill steals and sayori interview so nah they're not gonna do it team. uh i didn't see that uh, kind of taken out there they're we trying a lot uh shades of the last game too uh our lot very prime and a uh, first round yo the chabby uh, wild and you guys just, we're gonna you guys be just having a good old time with you, with each other yeah, I think this is quite standard. The last game, if the side of Legacy did not take the Novaria, you could bet that the side of Night Horde will. Now, Let me hold some points, gang. Opening. Push interview. Picked up for Legacy. We don't want us to, to interview Kush. Um, I do know PDR a little bit. I don't think he's going to be the one picking up. Uh, the Actually, yo, da Dave well. wanted to have a Magic Mike challenge show. Uh, an and he, he told me uh, that I needed to... Flex my muscles and take my shirt off in now, Vegas. On the side of the other hand, Night Horde has kind of paired up or for Mobile Mario Legends. What I, would say I was like, oh god. Rails. Um, to to have that frontline CC to deal tons of damage and lock an opponent down in one spot, paired up with the slow, the burst damage. Oh like Jesus Mario, Christ! It's a very very. Yeah, I said whoa as well. Has to find a way to deal with. 
Oh boy, it was getting wild. Yeah, and and uh, it's, it's very interesting here. For, for me, uh, I want to say, like, uh, if I can bring it up, it's been <laughs> surprising for me that Riles, I, I want to say, hasn't really kind of come along for the picks like the Joy, the Nolan, other assassins mm. that I feel like might match his play style. He's, been, he's made his name on that Hayabusa, but there's other heroes that, like, are, are still meta. <laughs> Dave's still crazy for that one. That he was so trying to create good lethal, content. when you talk about players like uh, Best Player, where we see in the drafts that mm. Joy Nolan taken off immediately because they don't want to see they they know how strong it can be here and uh, it's a very very curious to me that Riles has uh, either not picked them up or just uh, doesn't really favor them over the the support type uh, they picked up the low the, e the heavy tankier jungles here that. He's, ah. uh, I want to say had uh, not as much success in. We do have the Terizla. It's this is the, the second time that's I've what i was Rizla thinking I, I feel like we should do that at all <laughs> from the nact uh, he's still yeah just like, like the photo and, like just uh, the, the, the highlight i uh, do like how we uh, we normally do in the, the pre-record pre which opens it up for uh oh my foe opens it up for sayori to kind of keep them locked down in a place for you to actually be able to deal a ton of damage but we're going to be moving into the second banning phase and the nolan and diggy taken off the board yeah, you talked about the Trizla. It's it's an interesting pick that uh, has kind of come back. I feel like the there's just like a lot of people that would um, they've been people just want to hear from, but they just don't ever Trizlas, get to because no um, cam. Yeah. When they like to go this assassin in the jungle, right? We're talking about the Joy. We're talking about the Nolan. But this time around, it's a paired up with a Fredrin and a Terizla. Now, the side of Legacy, they have what, 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 what it takes to deal with it. They have the carry. They banded out the Diggy, which could be so lethal, Maybe, especially with the two front lines that the side of Nighthorde already has. It's a good ban. But, you know, Legacy, I still want them to kind of figure out how they can set up Jolie on this carry, right? If they can just pin a target down for a long period of time, allow uh, the carry to uh, pretty much just shred and single target burst Damn. a single unit, I think that's going to be the success. So here's the cat, chat. Needs, uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the win condition that they yeah. need to uh, go on in this match. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing here, especially uh, with the Lu Yi pickup, uh, that you're going to have uh, that uh, yin yang. We saw how great it could be, especially with that diversion. We saw how Hoon played it and was basically using it on cooldown to kind of close the distance around the map for his team. The only problem here is there's not a lot of. Did someone remove Streamlabs as a moderator? You know looking for the Lu Yi. You know, and Lu Yi does not have a lot of escapes. He does and this and this time is playing this oh, competition it. right now we're Ooh, not gonna what you to fucking do to kind of pull ye away uh when the going gets tough especially if a penalty zone comes down on her okay oh. um you know i was gonna kind of make a joke and say hey you know what's good against the navaria the hayabusa right the novaria is looking to kind of be at a range and typically does not have anyone protecting her from the far side so the hayabusa can perfectly jump onto the backside. but now mamoy has picked up this Raphael, the similar kind of the ube strat that i was talking about instead of a group heal uh she does and what's the meaning of night horde different cooldown but it's more of kind of like a reap like you know uh you bait out the opponent's spell you get them to gap close you, you use your utilities go away and then push back right rinse and repeat but the side of legacy often to go for the joy and the joy is quite interesting here paired up with the nakai which we don't really see these two combinations uh work well especially when or the horde for people to group up and the akai is kind of like that, that reset in a lot of these team fights <laughs> Yeah, that is exactly the point I was going to make, too. The heavy spin, you're going to have to be very surgical with that heavy spin <laughs> to pin, like, maybe two or some water chat against the wall. When a lot of times what we see from an Akai is that heavy spin comes out, starts ping-ponging yeah. uh, characters everywhere, and that's going to make it very hard for Lu Yi to <sighs> lock on to somebody, get that yin-yang. That's why I say it's going to all, right now, it's going to be all on uh, the Akai. Can he be 
very masterful on those engagements to pin them against the wall. What kind uh, of autocorrect was that iPad? Them spreading them out, and especially because Riles is going to have to try to dive deep into. We that should do a subathon at some point. Down, all while you're going to have this Raphael in the back line trying to heal up the team. But ladies and gentlemen, this could possibly be the last match of this series. A legacy fighting to get their first victory of the season against Night Horde. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this for the side of Legacy. They brought up a lot of the CC, which CC has been so important in a lot of these players to win their matches. But at the same time, Akai and Louis, they just don't have the synergy unless you, you know, 100% are certain that you can get the pins. But oh, like shit. In a heavy Camera. is not 100% certain. And, and, and then paired up with that, you have the final Who even added the ball so command? No one did. <laughs> when you, 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 you honestly want the Louis to have the people set in a specific spot. So things like <laughs> Ruby, Tigreal, where they grab people and they make them close together, pairs so much exponentially. Stylus that I removed it the first time. The, high, the, randomness <laughs> the mods are battling each other one. The best case scenario. He gets a two man pin. Yes, that is great. <laughs> but more likely, we've seen so many Akai's come through and play. It's never the best case scenario. Ooh, Rouse has come in, has the electrifying beats, is not going to be able to find the kill onto Nakoko. Actually catches himself a spatial orb there for his troubles, takes a bit of damage, and mm. still nil nil a piece here. So I don't yeah, have well, any I good. Does, I mean, Whoopi does have. I don't have any good light highlights. On to the boss side, he decides to take for the master of the assassins. When a lot of the XP and the yeah. seconds do opt to go for uh, something like the festival of blood for a little bit of regen, so that may be why uh, our lot should be able to dominate that lane. But when it comes down to the mid late game for the sustain for the healing, I uh, fail. Be I don't, much that, that's not a, you, that's the one thing you forgot well, on here. You know, or is the engagements went wrong, I guess? He was just kind of getting out alive pretty much every single fight. Yeah, good positioning here for the Night Horde. Three members I, ready for this Lord. I this zoomed out and I don't know how to zoom back in. Seeing from Legacy. They're unfortunately just not in positions when these Lords come up. When the timers are up, the, the, you can yeah, it's see not working. In position, I gotta like go manually do it. it. And then they disperse. And unfortunately, Legacy just, I want to say a few seconds behind. And, you know, the turtle, the gold itself is kind of kind of making good, it right? out like, the hood. It's not, it's not extremely great, but at the same time, it provides a lot of gold for the members. But I think what the turtle buff does so good is the experience that everyone gets on the map. You can see Legacy with a small, tiny lead. <laughs> I think it's due to the fact that the Arlot is dominating um, in the Trizla lane, and also on the top side, Jolie Deathless, even with the faux gank, and is holding out. I've been playing well a lot of AFK far, Journey. So you know ah you are too legacy but oh shit able to that's crazy objectives like they did on the very first that's turtle, insane it's gonna smell a lot of trouble as the side of night horde is just going to exponentially get those experience <laughs> get those rotations and ooh, yin yang coming top yeah what's your power nice level there is Mamoy, <laughs> is able to get his team away mm. and out of harm's way i mean a, a, a good attempt there and then on the point that you i didn't i didn't i didn't miss oh actually we'll be in a big uh, I didn't. Of a trouble here between two members he's going to use that yeah, point to get out of harm's way. but uh, the point you made about AFK like, arena get some of these objectives nah actually having yeah. a decent side lane this is the perfect opportunity mm. to kind of ignore the turtle go in and try to get some damage onto some of these side lanes maybe my, even my power level is 312k turtles, uh turtle objectives yo can i just point out if he was hayabusa he could just ult, <laughs> right he, he would have just singled out the xc i'm just mad that you know we don't get the oh, i didn't do the boss fight yesterday yeah, oh my foe and the PDR deep into the lines. Oh my foe might be in a little bit of trouble here. Gets taken down by Whoopi. That is going to be a first blood for the legacy. Yeah, that's a good news for the side of legacy. They actually have a or the G opening for the first time because I'm a top G. Some time. No, I used to go by um side, I don't know, my my know. favorite character in Naruto is yeah, Gara. I can see it here right now, legacy. And, and I used to have a uh, um, objective they're gonna be able to get. You can see oh Riles picks it. What stage? So good on them. This is gonna be the first. I want to say, dare I say the first objective 209? from legacy that they've gotten from this series. 
Yeah, definitely a good oh, advantage God. inside of Legacy. I, don't, I haven't played the, I haven't done one of that. Some of these team fights. They have the early game. What's your they overall the level? They got the first kill. Uh, picking yeah, you're like uh, resonance. Right? So they definitely have a little bit of advantage. But again, Night Horde, you know, I'm 77. A lot of dominance in. Yeah, I'm 77. They've honestly achieved quite high here. They've get, been getting a few wins here and there. So it's very solid uh, for the side of Night Horde to kind of go through and snowball in this game. But the opening that Legacy has in this match is most definitely much better than the ones they had before. Yeah, it's just going to come down to them being able to push this advantage. Keep with it. I think they've been a little bit stalled. They haven't really taken advantage. Do you have any Let's mythics yet? Hiding in this bush, not creating a play. And that's kind of what's been the, the big problem with no. them when it comes to some of these other compositions, these other Yeah, I got faced. I got the CC, uh, the, like PDR dark. The heavy spin again, the yeah, like the dark chick with the is... loot quite hard to achieve there on the economy. i pulled her three times yeah, in a row a bit worried now it was crazy advantage early on but it's just a little bit hard to synchronize all the spells together <laughs> jolie taking down momoi riles finds a kill onto r and finally some life coming out of a legacy now they're chasing down four yeah she's super good oh yeah yeah razor's wrath finds a kill onto kuya nash and another yo chat anybody oh else in the chat play some oh, af uh Nash's journey kills unanswered for the night horde right now nikoko gets taken down as a last effort from the legacy who's up from that engagement four to three yeah, it's a good response coming out from Legacy. They're able to win in some of the small skirmishes that I was kind of quite what honestly the? scared. Did I like looked but away and then LG's winning. Through from the side of Night Horde, paired up with the uh, the let's go. Bio, right? so a lot of the people yeah. To, uh, these Can we support, add each other? Is it like servers kind of or do we? But to just kind of define it a little bit better. Most of the time, a lot of these healers are just much better in the mid game. Yeah, you have the heavy spin there. Actually, uh, do I know what server I'm on? Trouble here, Riles against the turtle here. Oh my foe in a good position yeah. right now. All teams are up fully. Turtle down to about half health. They're gonna go ahead and drag it out. Looks like oh my foe surrounding PDR. Here comes oh. a full barrage from our. Uh, I'm server kill, 18. Whoopi can find a kill of his own on to the night horde marksman. Oh my foe in a bad way here does get taken down by Jolie. This might be another objective going over to the favor of legacy huge fight coming out from legacy showing that they have what it takes three for one just that boy said i played dog simulator three of the members side of night horde high priority targets too right it was our foe and also Mamoy, right so they're able to kind of zone away i still feel like the team fight is not uh quite as beautiful as it can be but definitely the priority <laughs> from the side of legacy is just much better now they're looking to push even more onto the towers yeah, big heavy spin comes down. R getting zoned out. Jolie finds the kill onto them with that speedy light wheel. Now starting to transition these kills into objectives. We have mm. two towers for the side of Legacy. And this is the breath of life that I think most fans of mm. Legacy have been waiting to see. Most definitely. And, the, you know, quite honestly, the heavy spin coming out from PDR has a lot of impact so far in this series. He's able to get, you know, <laughs> Yo, that he's that's crazy. Kind of disengagement, displacement, zoning members away. Now, is it perfect? I don't know. Uh, you know, he, he was pinning the Fredrin onto the objective when the carry was not there. You know, they're, they're, they're not synchronizing. They're all, you can see right there, you know, Ryle's getting out alive with the mel melodic beats. Um, you can also see the Louis doing a lot of the damage, pretty much displacing and messing up our there. But the siege looking like it's going to be continued from the side of Legacy as they snowball through this mid -game. ETK members? Oh, wait, if they're in it, they have the same developer. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're the same people. The kills been a part of putting on that damage and spraying that damage onto the Night Horde. So doing the job, especially with the six assists. And that's been a big and a main A journey is like very, uh, it's not like. The cleanup crew. Uh, to be I feel like it still has like a really good, like. Fights, and which is what has been the main. Like a play aspect to it. I don't know. Nine to four and a 5,000 gold lead for the legacy mm, and i and i, and I also want to mention kind of the matchup between a lot of the sustained heroes like raf and estes versus a louis but before that 
Yeah, a little bit of a fight down here as we got an odd angle. Full barrage is out. PDR looking to get his way oh. away. Big penalty zone lands on the three members, and Kuya Nash, the only one to be able to flicker <laughs> himself out to safety. This is going to open up the objective. This Lord that was her, going I was, to, to I was uh, distracted. Daniel Riles going to get caught in this bush. He was looking for an opportunity, but Nikoko doing a great job of zoning him out. Riles not even able to find an angle to get in there as Oh My Foe cleans up this first Lord. So, you know, going back to my point, You're so lost, the why? Typical, uh, the typical timing of a lot of the supports is that they want to go 0 0 and kind of play onto that late game, right? The more sustain that they have, the more cooldown that they have, the, the more ability that they can spam their spells and create a fight that is in their position of winning, right? And um, the side of Legacy, what they do have to deal with that is typical uh typical sustainers like the Raphael estes require an ube strats require members to be grouped mm. up and louis <laughs> does so much damage for that but top side oh snap yeah. oh snap jolie jolie's going here oh, oh, yo i think are actually able to get the final touches he almost had it down Oh, R? One R next? Lead for oh. Legacy. I want to say that lead starting to slip from their fingers as they're starting to get answered and replied by the Night Horde. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit unfortunate because I do think that, you know, the Legacy, they had a 4K goal lead. They were pushing in a lot of the objectives. Unfortunately, they did lose that fight earlier, especially when Whoopi and PDR was so deep in the enemy lines. But once again, the Lu Yi especially with the power spike that she has both Raphael and louis are looking for both sides to group up and the Raphael is it just gets countered by the louis it's not an unwinnable matchup but you can see nighthorde grouping up in that death ball much perfect for the yin gang overturn mage to kind of get the assist that she's looking for one one and seven creating all sorts of headache and having essentially uh you know one of one of the higher kdas of the match yeah, that's going to be the interesting thing for me, too. Do you pick up the anti heal on the Lu Yi to yes. kind of start continue to counter out this? Uh, Pika would have destroyed right him. He has the flask, so they're starting to get a little bit, I want to say, those heals and then that shield coming mm -hmm. from the side of the Night Horde becoming a lot more to deal with. What is that? We have to see if they can keep up oh, this, this sauce? Him, if they can keep on uh, continuing on. They're trying to play a very patient game. That's sweet. They, they're doing a good job of kind of zoning Ooh. out. Uh, using <laughs> that Novaria to kind of scope out a lot of these bushes, good. and then I think an on something uh, would be better to kind of scope out a, a lot of the bushes there as well you see them catch PDR mm -hmm. it's and good it's got a weird a wild taste to it a lot of these utility and sustains it is a, a fight between like kind of being proactive and reactive right proactive you know typically you talk about a Terizla flicker set a Fredrin going in our lots going through right and the reactive part is where the Raphael comes into play can she sustain the fight long enough for topside Oh, yeah, they catch Oh My Foe and burst him down. Heavy spin by PDR. Ooh. And Jolie gets caught by a full barrage from R. So they do trade one for the jungle. But that's going to mean that they don't have a retry for the Nighthorn. This is the perfect opportunity. But they're charging in. PDR takes a heap of damage. Whoopi comes in there to save him. Final Slash is out looking to put and connect some damage onto Momoi. Whoopi, unfortunately, uses that dash and puts himself back into enemy territory. Meanwhile, 10% oh, no. left onto this. The electrifying beats is out. Riles might not be able to get. He gets stunned, taken down by Sayori, who also oh, GG's. the Lord. And what a reply GG's. from the Night Horde. Night Horde's going oh, crazy right, right now. I think they feel like they're in a desperate Damn. position. They had a 4K gold lead through a fight here. And now with the 1K gold lead, they end up losing the second lord of the match it smells a lot of trouble is it the so last game of the night to, to now already to do in order to btk versus devious activity here right you saw riles using his ultimate on the objective when there's four members kind of clashing through yes it ends up getting taken away do i think it could have gone the other end maybe if legacy decides to uh you know look for the fight or everyone go on to the lord but legacy is just so spread apart right we talked about the synergy of the akai now the arla is the one but before 
Yeah, big penalty zone into the back line. Heavy spin gonna push Nikoko into the enemy core, and that's gonna be all she wrote as Whoopi gets taken down on the back side. Riles down GGs. as well. And the rest of the night horde pushing, yeah. looking to close this at the 14 minute mark, half health, and that's gonna be a GG for the night horde taking advantage. Early night of, today, chat. Say, Early of, night today. Fights from Legacy. You think you yeah, think devious activity gonna legacy pretty much had to lead the whole keep it up game, but again <laughs> The Night Horde snowball is just a little bit too much to handle. Side of Night Horde, they were just able to kind of uh, get whatever they were looking for and, you know, pretty much dominated this whole entire match, uh, especially when you go past that mid game. And, you know, 15, 14, 33 kind of just smells that, hey, it is not. What you guys think? You, you think Devious Activity or BTK chat? This time around for the side of Legacy, they did fall a little bit short, but we can see they're definitely gathering their thoughts and you know drawing up better game plans game by game yeah, let me uh the, 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 we, we we're gonna get the new poll up we're gonna get the new poll up chat to let's get it let's get it that last engagement gonna win far apart i want to say maybe a little bit of communication when it yeah. came to, to having pdr and whoopi so far removed from the rest of the team getting picked off and then you had to deal with the whole of the night horde coming at riles who was trying to take the lord and that's just unfortunate that's mobile legends for you is you gotta keep your your uh, sword sharp throughout the entirety of the game uh or you're gonna be taken advantage of especially at this point by a team like the night hordes i think the most important thing for legacy to kind of pick out is that they need to be a little bit more synchronized in terms of their fights right there's plenty of opportunities where i saw that like riles could have gone in or maybe <laughs> used a better ultimate or you said maybe, stella's you know, got sense heavy spin was just a little bit too early before jolie was able to kind of get into play and try to make the impact he was still eight two and zero but once again you know when it came down to those late game team fights he was just getting shredded and there was nothing said was da's no logos from google tried to get a winning team fight they did have a good diversion but once again, the heavy spin was just a little bit too random to have the impact that they were. Yo, looking chat. For. Did I did I ever show you my veil pin? Look at look at this veil pin, bro. Yeah, look at this veil pin. The story. I mean, you can see it's all basically in favor. So this is veil. Legacy, Jolie, Jolie here at PDR, yeah. but uh, unfortunately, it just took one bad fight to turn. So this is veil. For in favor you see that? Night Horde. Like you can tell that is veil, right? Uh, like it's a it's a clip for our and Sayori it's like a clip very well i think Sayori didn't right get a single look at look at this shit there as well on that Navarro. what the fuck the there's veil's ass wasn't an answer to try to get what to the fuck to be able to why does the pin and be a veil's ass out. hanging out the back side yeah, about Navaria, right first I with his name on it you know from an extremely far range like, also what the heck to, uh, why uh, specific what looking to engage why'd they do of, this the kit itself is just really really strong that's why it gets banned or taken almost every single game there and then uh towards it right you know we, we talked uh, about some of the fights this is my it's beatrix like, pop socket the damage deal there's a pop socket is just not good enough if he chose like let's say the hayabusa Potentially, she doesn't she doesn't have her ass hanging out doesn't have an escape he could choose to go on top of that and, you know riles got the whole the bakery <laughs> he's got the whole bakery but unfortunately it just doesn't it doesn't have an ass no creating the it, impact that um, where can you buy legacy. one i got it from the the, the last nact in vegas yeah they weren't able to secure that win but you know maybe it was in las vegas you got the backside too ritz got the got the veil better with the back and forth in the game they are actually getting an advantage in the veil ass as well and they see team wild and he just got all booty booty the game turned yeah i'm dying yeah, and uh, I want to say uh, uh, a wonderful you game. You have Esme? Uh, another wonderful game. By what? Sayori. First game. There was an Esme? Uh, I mean, they sure up gave me Veil booty, but not Esme booty. The game, and then that second game. Yo. Uh, Varia, uh, part, I think it was 80% I've been, of the I've been had. So always, uh, landing those orbs, always landing uh, a lot of the damage there, and being just a I've been had, chat.
Yeah, and I think it's quite great today that we get to see so many different heroes being played. I, in so many different roles. I like get an Esme booty. Uh, position. We saw Damn. in the jungle, the Masha came back. Does she got a bigger ass than Veil? Like, it's it, it's been quite the great three series that we get. A to Veil cast. booty. It is another exciting game coming up, but <laughs> boy. We, we, do we have like a oh, boy if it's a chip uh, clip <laughs> got all that booty on a bomb on <laughs> yo as the mvp of the last series a private take us through it i mean I, <laughs> you can tell, especially okay. here i believe this is the uh, first game you can see all those oh, shit. games coming out there uh, uh, just an instrumental part especially helping oh, out what with the fuck? what did i grab uh, on that to nolan in, in the early game and, and the, the kill steals is slowing down pdr getting the stuns out there doing a great They're job about the here. same no kills here that's cat at this point in the game but as we start moving ain't no here, way veil has got a bigger booty a phenomenal job and, and it just kind of proves i mean you mobile legend capping in the draft but there's just a, such a deep hero pool and so many different angles that she can come at you from that i mean it's it's almost you no need nana to ban against her and try to counter what she does pick up here that's see crazy here, the, the, a lot of the damage coming out there and then uh finally from the the oh. hearts guard there uh being able to pick up a lot of those kills there <laughs> four zero and seven <laughs> at that point in the game uh, a great game uh for sayori and for the whole of the night horde most definitely i mean sayori has popped off um, great of different heroes and you know in, in in this day of age the mage meta has widened uh quite significantly back then you know it was all about like eve farsa going for the long range <laughs> a post a photo of it in there. the discord around right there's a lot of share votes, share it in the right? discord and i'll show the stream both games again so send, send a picture of it in the discord and i'll the share it to the stream of every single game the lilia which i we haven't seen today is honestly quite good against all these heroes so plenty of great mages available nowadays you said it you For weighs sure. hair I'm sure the audience wants an interview with sorry at one point but we're gonna have you gotta that. find it you don't got like a shelf of mlbb merch with oh my foe Welcome back, Bo, to the caster's table. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> well, so we noticed another roster swap today. So what happened to Sleepy there? Did he, did his parents ask him to eat again? Yeah, same thing. Same thing. What time, what, what time zone are you guys playing at? Because that was nine o'clock when that happened. So was it, are you guys playing in the West server then? Um, no. Were you playing on, I think, Central, maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, same time as usual, like 7 p.m. Well, 8, 8 p.m. Oh, okay. EST, he has to go. So, like, same, okay, so, same so time. How are you guys stash, you, sta you like, stashed you stashed Esme's booty away? Rosters, Damn. Uh, during your free time, or are you trying, like, because that's going to happen, continue happening throughout the season. We don't even practice. <laughs> Damn! Like we oh play my like god, couple, everybody! <laughs> we play like a couple rank games, and then like... Uh-huh. We just make it happen. That boy said we don't wow. even practice. What is going on? Every team that we've interviewed today says that... Disrespectful. So I don't know if you guys are just, you know, saying that in front of the screen no. and actually working super hard. No? We haven't... Well, we, we haven't screened <laughs> in like a month, mm -hmm. so... Oh no. We're making miracles. Bro That's got the god out of himself. <laughs> well, <laughs> after, after tonight, you guys will start doing the scrims. It's good to have some practice. So, um, yeah. Damn. Yeah, for that. Now, for the team, I heard Sauriori is actually your captain of the team in game. Is that true? And why is that? Captain? I mean, I don't. <laughs> I see myself as the captain, but Ooh! people say she is. You know, she's a captain. Well, well she's a don't mind. she's a captain and the end game leader, right? Like in your squad leader. Oh, squad leader. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I mean, she is, I think. But well, like captain well, in we, game. we all know. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who the power actually goes to, right? Yeah. It's foe all the way. Now, your team. No, yes, 24 7. Fo is actually uh, the power. Show us the Discord notification. Oh, oh Jesus. You guys, uh, the team at, at least. Night Look Horde at the Horde Esme Horde chat. Here for the last NACT. So, what does the team name Night Horde mean? And why did you. Damn, the photo is massive. Oh, uh, I mean, I joined the team because uh, Juki was the manager and we kind of needed a manager. 
And since, you mm -hmm. know, he's a great manager, why not just make create a team with him? I don't know anything right, about the uh... last time Because I just mm -hmm. came back like two seasons ago. There's but Esme's he's face. He's a great manager, so... you know? So what is the, what is the <laughs> Do you know? Yo, what? here's Esme's face. I have no clue. I think it's the branding of the company, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's well, been around. And then <laughs> here's <laughs> Esme's <laughs> booty. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to see the guess. face. Well, show the booty. The you're gonna have to go back and do some, uh, uh, do some scrims as well as learn uh, about the team history. For sure. <laughs> We'll do. <laughs> for sure. We'll do. All right. You guys heard it. Um, thank you so much for joining us. You guys did a great match and a lot more great matches to come. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Liz dishing yeah, by a lot now to our uh, to our players, <laughs> making sure that no they're uh, keeping ready. on top. <laughs> Looks like all of BTK is on though. Yeah, no, I mean it's uh it's it's, it's always a pleasure. To I'm gonna go jump in the chat. Interviews with the players. I know this is not something that we traditionally have uh, in our NACT, and I'm very thankful to you know one we get the players review for the faces. It's always been our faces. Yo uh, that yo yo yo. There, but this time around, everyone gets to what up, what join up. the show on the boat. And you guys ready? The host itself, you know, coming through. What up, my guy? Questions. How you doing? Like, it's 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 nice. It's and then what? I mean, of course, this is we're getting <laughs> yeah. to what an actual match is. Oh, like. LG does we the same too. Questions and behind the scene interview with every match, and now NA is finally making that progress, or see player face cams as well as player interviews. That's a great progress that we saw, and I'm loving it now. For our lovely fans, we have another giveaway. So take out your phones and be prepared. On the screen, you have this the code and you have a QR code to scan for the hero skin dark scent for Roger. We saw Roger in play a lot today. So make sure you're one of that first 31 person to redeem that code for a permanent skin. First come first sir, get your phone out and get that skin in. Now, as everyone is getting that skin, Getting ready, next match is the match, the series of the day. BTK 3.0 versus BTK 4.0. <laughs> How are you guys feeling is, about it? I think this is the match that uh, a lot of people were coming here to, uh, to see. It's one I'm actually really excited about because a lot of the, the team members uh, on BTK, on Game and Gladiators, have said that a Devious Activity is one of the strongest teams in North America. Uh, they've said it from the scrims. They've had a great uh, synergy here in North America in the NACT so far. So this could be one of BTK's strongest battles yet. Yeah, but, you know, BTK did get the victory over Gaming Gladiators, which, you know, I had the pleasure to cast. Um, I do want to see them push for the momentum this time around. Uh, and uh, with, 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 with a team that doesn't have that much synergy, it definitely takes a lot of time. So I'm excited to see what they bring to the show today. Yeah, you mentioned they got a victory against GG last week, but A77 also got a victory against BTK at one point, and DA beat A77, but they also lost to GG, so <laughs> it really shows that this season we're going back and forth between all these teams, and that's why the competition is so exhilarating, exhilarating to watch. Now, break is ready, guys. We're going to come back in five for the series of the night, so be prepared. Minden, Momoi able to catch Yato, finds the back line for Devious Activity, off to a good start. <laughs> yeah, we could fight. G? Or we wait for... We gotta fight. Oh, hold on, man. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I was with uh, I was in the chat with uh, with the players.
All right, sounds good. Let me let me know. Let me, let me let them know. Yo yo. So you guys got about like five minutes. Come on now. <laughs> God damn, cool world. Come on now. Get on, get on the cam. <laughs> I me get on cam. <laughs> oh God. Just show up on the fucking a BTK cam. Oh, let's see. All right, chat. I didn't mute, so hopefully you enjoyed a little bit behind the the scenes. How quick was the GG versus BH match? Pretty damn quick. My Milo said I should. Uh, they they didn't, they didn't want to get on cam. They didn't want to get on cam. What happened? Are you are you listening to the casters? Uh Dang. <laughs> The yappers yapping. All right, I'm going to I'm going to use the restroom real fast. Oh, all right. Let me check on these boys. Oh, let's see. One hundred percent. Where everybody else could just not be trying. Same. All right, let me go get him on cam. Yo, yo, you guys going to be able to get on cam or? Come on now. Come on. What? <laughs> come on, Zane. Basic, let's get it. You know, Dave's going to come in here and fucking scream our ears off. 
Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> oh. two, two. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I they, he's not even in there yet, but yeah. Yeah, just minimize it. You can. It's just a screen or a website. So I can minimize that shit. <laughs> that's just. That's just. That's just soft people, bro. Let's see. Yeah, they're all ready. One, two, three, four. Probably. All right, got uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm fighting. Basic said he's too buff, and Zane said Zane said he's too handsome for the camera. <laughs> All right, I'll hunt him down again. Oh, there goes Dave. <laughs> Basic left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Needs you guys on cam. I went, I went back and I was like, Zane's not doing it. Basic don't want to do it. And then he's like, fuck this shit. Okay, let's... <laughs> he did, he did. He was like, he was like, fuck this shit. And then he came, he, he came in. Like that. There you go. Where the f where are you at, basic? A fucking furniture store? <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, yeah, you got a couple minutes. You got a couple minutes. Oh shit, they started? Oh shit, hold on, hold on, let me, let me, let me jump in with Dave real fast. Yo, yo, the, the, they started the match. Yeah, dude, like BTK just started panicking. They weren't even ready, they were like, shit. Do you want me to, you want me to see if they're ready? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're getting. Yeah. Oof. 
We got we got Milo on cam, so the kings, but someone has got to be the odd one out and <laughs> and be that. Sorry, one chat. I, I muted the yappers for a while. Be me this time. Let's see how the match did start, does. but it shouldn't have. And we're gonna go straight into the draft. Ooh, I'm actually really excited about it. This is one of the I want to say. Uh, I, I think I said it before. It's going to be one of uh, BTK's biggest challenges. We already saw them topple a game in Gladiator. So I, I want to like jump in their match, but between uh, BTK members from their streams, from gaming Gladiators members from their streams, talking about one team, and that's Devious Activity, and how surprised and how strong they are, especially yo, yo, yo. in the scrims. We're going to see if they can bring <laughs> that same power here to the. You guys are good, right? I, I don't think they're going to restart this or well, anything. When I look at the faces of da like they remind me of oh, yeah, like, okay pro i just wanted to make sure players like, basic over here. like they got like 300 apms they're like a bunch of you know nerds in a good way and you know quite honestly that's very formidable that's actually quite scary uh to face up <laughs> okay. now btk the roster complete all stars <laughs> you're hitting it dude you're hitting it person that in north america you do not know these guys nicolette mobazain milo the goat basic and also cold world it's the all-star yeah. team versus they're, they're cool with it they're they're so trying to get on cam at the same time on the other end so you know private i know you're excited i'm excited oh uh, no basic straight into the draft Basic's currently in a like a, a superstore right now. A staple right now when going against BTK is to go ahead take away that Barats from Zane. I don't know. He li he literally looks like he's at a furniture store. On the side of DA, especially since they have the first pick there. On the other side, we do see that BTK taking out the joy. Almost, I want to say, kind of a mirror of how they draft against uh, ga gaming gladiators, where they took away those more mechanical. Uh, shining heroes from best player. They're doing the same thing here, especially because Kush uh, is absolutely uh, a monster on a lot of those right, we're back. heroes. Uh, you're 100% correct. Uh, <laughs> the the Basic was like flexing, bro. He was like, he was like, every single game. I don't know. What are you? He fucking. Not play the assassin. I don't know. I've seen him done super well with like things like Lancelot um, back in Who's the day. They, they, they built him like a tank. Are you not um, entertained? Again, like, Joy has been a hero that's very, very hard to deal with, especially with the immune uh, going onto the backside. So definitely a good ban on the table. But Zane was like, I don't even got my setup started. I was like, God damn it. BTK is the team. Not only Zane is the that's playing on it. It's, it's a team of full all-stars and if the focus is going to go on zane almost every single time which it has this allows btk for me to shine even more in their draft right zane has to bring up four five six maybe even the seventh pick to be yeah, midnight to midnight's helping he uh he could go i think get basic on cam early as a bully <laughs> man or he could just let the pressure go off onto him and you know alleviate the the other pressures that the other teammates can uphold right nicolette great hero pool basic plays almost anything from you know the morning to the night milo he is who he is in the animal <sighs> ladder and he also got whole world the new shiny midnight armor is not on cam no right now in the wrong position one thing, all right basic though, basics that in not being <laughs> out that i think it is going to be is going to be the matilda that's cold world you know <laughs> got the mvp of last week yeah, and that's something I, I wanted to bring up too, as you were talking about. Uh, the, it's a very risky play when you focus on one player and put all the banning power onto that one opponent, especially like Mo Bazane, where he was able to show last week that you can do that, and he still mm -hmm. has something Dude, in the reserve. Basic has his uh, because it's like camera. Team, it, it's not the Mo horizontal. Show. It's it's the you want me to... show. There's five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's four other members on this team, equally as dangerous, equally able to kind of make i think there's muscle milk for from this btk that i didn't see in the qualifiers uh that i've been wanting to see here which is that the rest of these players start stepping up here uh to make up for the fact uh get mobazane on something that maybe <laughs> might be his fourth or fifth <laughs> pick but the rest of them able to have their coaches are in the discord yes with that midnight's in the discord they're gonna, go for, they're gonna go for the faramas pick up here yeah i mean the from is getting banned out matilda now gets taken out from the btk side so it's not like r.i.p obama it, it, this hero is not something that i personally feel like um is extremely scary 
right it's it's very very good and it's very very fast and especially since bdk likes to play those tanky front lines in the utility where they don't really have the best mobility yes i think it is great but is it all you know does it counter every hero no i think you know Raphael can do a great job against the matilda i think the estus can pair well against uh the matilda so there's definitely Moba a Obama. Sustain, you know <laughs> as uh, matilda gets a, a lot of the who, who for, was uh, his, his own teammates you know estus and Raph can just heal right so um you know banning it out i feel like it's a little bit of a waste of a ban but it's definitely understandable since that btk they were able to up throw kings i'm gonna grab some water real fast very interesting we have the five the first actual pickup here the cc being picked up by devious activity i'm expecting mm -hmm. uh the lane answer to be along the lines of possibly the r lots or the tarizla which we've seen an uprising here and i know Mielo, especially last season favored that tarizla was very good at getting those sets when it came to some of the objectives here i mean devious activity i i i'm very eager to see what they can do here because if there's one team that i've been that I've been uh, theorizing that can go toe to toe uh, with a team like BTK that or uh, Gaming Gladiators. It's been DA, and I'm definitely interested to see what they have in store. Now I'm a little bit surprised that DA did not opt to go for the R lot, right? They could flex it onto T. They could leave the XP a little bit open, but maybe the CC, especially right now. I'm not sure if there's a War Axe change, but it seems like a lot of the teams especially in the series today they love to pick up the cc now the response coming out from btk is is just so beautiful i know you were like nodding your head with that basic on the quad we've seen him do pretty much go series from series back doors out plays in the back side you know dealing because it, it's yato on there high is so damn good on the clod it's so exciting oh, to see and moba zane bringing the akai back into i think he turned his game off so had a successful uh, series uh, going up against the gaming gladiators this time around they're gonna face against da which is a very very strong i try to tell them that they need to yeah very strong we actually we weird. just saw how dominant that this pairing can be the angela and the nolan uh you're Oof. gonna have that early game damage the suppression that that an angela can bring uh to your team and then the nolan we oh shit, we got the panda zane jungle mm. clear once he gets rolling the, the only problem here is uh when he's gonna be able to kind of find these opportunities to catch some of btk's members alone to get that fracture out especially when you're gonna be dealing with something like a heavy spin out there that can kind of that can uh really screw up your positioning mm, and you know whenever i see the no used to go in the rule book next season what does up for a magic damage dealer on the x on the gold lane, Wait, like right? cams btk they do have the first ban available i'm not gonna what we talk about what we talk about ritz or also the natan gets taken i miss a question but you are going against melon um i am not sure if i've actually seen him perform well on a Harith before oh well, having really, cams I yeah he would stick to the more traditional marksman so in it's, it's kind of hard maybe the brody and the bruno but i think this is like the baby good, steps into print. that probably not so good you can't take the i do feel like everybody that. needs cams uh, brody, i think uh is gonna ritz do, wants uh, to be on cam a uh, bruno with a also can deal with the implosion and the heavy ritz can stream with me no, btk wants to take out the late game damage that uh da potentially has yeah and it's very interesting here too because carry I'm, I'm not actually a huge fan of carry into da's <laughs> composition just because they they don't have a front line yet milo will go lapu lapu very kind of I, I think we're getting at that point that can tra traverse the map very quickly they can back up very quickly um and they're like especially against a, a composition that that btk is showing right now this is a very heavy cc heavy setting uh heavy front line uh that you're not really wanting to get caught in there you're gonna have cold damn to to with that implosion ritz was like I mean, nah he catches an implosion on these guys i mean that's pretty much a wrap they're they're so uh squishy that the the amount of time they're going to be cc you're going to be able to kind of finish off most of them there and why do you think that btk decides to ban out a lot of the late game marksmen that melon is very pro efficient on i think it's a good ban also um you know instead of dealing with the early game marksmen they say hey go early game get that advantage that you're looking for we're gonna take <laughs> out some of the late game of uh, the mobile spirit i think they might put uh, me with someone really hurts 
a lot of the I think they might room like they might room me with someone. I might I might have to get my own my own room in Vegas too. A very interesting and I think it's a much more different perspective a breath of fresh air for me uh to ban out a lot of I have uh, I have a few real life friends coming with me uh to uh to Vegas. advantage but that is a weird hero. <laughs> um <laughs> So Hannity. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Ooga Booga, I do think I'd have uh, to see I, another I Hannity in my my, <laughs> my I think Ugabuga smiling right now. Hanabi. Uh, the pickup. They have uh, Nicolette gonna go ahead and pick up. Uh, gonna go ahead and pick up the. Uh, <laughs> the finals are yeah, in Vegas. Uh, yes. A, a Valentina. <laughs> That's gonna. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. I'm beside myself with this. Uh, with this Hannah. Right I, I feel like um, us. And, us and managers in the NACT should definitely have our own room. CC on them. Uh, and then uh, and we're uh, managers. If that anti CC. If she's gonna pick up. Uh, if you're gonna pick up the Agus for Hannah, you're gonna have an escape for that marksman, which will be good for that implosion. Uh, for a lot of the CC that you see on the BTK as well. Yo, if Angela means you have and Hanabi combine. Team as well. That's gonna be something. If she constantly applies a shield doesn't that mean like she never uh, can be cc'd on this beatrix is going to make them even stronger with that heart scar i'm going to see how this is you might have to go to the finals time. you definitely should come see me come see me i'll bring some uh i'll bring some flex cards of his he's you know been so good with this hero pretty much ever since the release of it and you know it's a very high skill <laughs> my own room for the pizza party he has an xp lane he's definitely going to be i owe uh, i owe rid some pizza switch, right so uh you know expect btk to have this four-man synergy you want uh, pizza you want pizza in vegas and, and late game and just have milo uh dealing uh uh you know split pushing on the side but going back to da's pizza party um, at ritz room it's four it's three <laughs> physical <laughs> nah it's geez. Just going to be yato <laughs> on the major this time it's it's not like it's a sayori thing where it's like you know she was able to get assists here and there you're facing against like the heaviest comp and without you know proper magic damage dealing like i don't see the damage coming out from da to be able to overthrow the draft that the kings have built is that my room i i want to say do, you, do i think esme squats i think esme squats yeah here, but ladies and gentlemen we are going to wing on to game one of devious activity taking on the blood thirsty kings yeah this is gonna yeah, be yeah, yeah. the hottest series of the nights i know everyone in the chat is going uh quite crazy here but once again it's da versus btk the standings right uh da and i think btk they are both tied for third place um as for for second and third place fiends is falling short behind but this is going to be pretty much the match that determines are they going to be standing on the third place throne or are they going to be pushed back onto the fourth place? If one of oh these my teams God. Gets sweet, they're going to be standing next to Phoenix, basics being destroyed two, right like, now. We expect them to pretty much, pretty much battle it out. Look at that damage. Yeah, a lot of quantum charge out there for BTK. And then matching that up with some uh, two brave smite on the side. And was able to get 40 activity. gold out of that. Uh, I want to say, like, I, 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 I'm... I'm not sure is this part of the game plan from Devious Activity or were was BTK able to find a small crack in the armor of Devious Activity in the the marksman pool of Melon here that forced Ooh. them onto the Hanabi. Hanabi, like I said, it's not something that we see too often uh, in North America that's uh, super successful. But, I mean, anything could go here. I think basic is that at the gym. Definitely. And, you know, just, just to point that out, both of the marksmen decided to go for master assassins to have a little bit more damage and kill pressure early on in their lane so definitely see a lot of early aggression or just pushing each other um on the What's top that? side but very first objective is starting uh, side yeah. of btk and kush is in a great position Ooh, slides in, uh you can just make a bowl slides out very and smooth put it all in one activity yeah you can see a small pause from zane he's like whoa guys where did he come from but a small gold lead for the side of devious once again the spotlight of the match is going to be that hanabi onto the top side there's not much of a front line for the side of devious so you know if t ends up being the only one and he doesn't get an early game basic never game, leaves you know the side of the, the the front side of devious is actually quite weak and i'm not sure if they're going to have what it takes um to be able to push through uh to to have this hanabi skill into the late game here 
Ooh, Melon catches a face full of uh, Nicolette damage there as T trying to waddle his way back to his line. And uh, no worse for wear. Either team's both at 0 0, both very patient, but I think that might change when this first Lord comes up. Still 60 seconds on the board. Yeah, I, I, you know, I feel like both of these teams, they are okay with playing the game slow. Especially when you get it up to the higher competitive levels, you know, a lot of nah, Zane, Zane, okay. Zane, Zane, Zane turned on a light. Zane you know, turned on a light. Not looking to make a lot of the mistakes, and that's kind Zane of the turned on a light. Game. A lot of action coming in, no kills on either side, but it's just going to be a lot of sieging, a lot of macro rotations, and you can see. Ooh, Milo's dead. Oh. Yeah. Yellow gets caught. I want to say I saw that coming. Devious Activity saw him trying to Yellow. Come away very quickly mm -hmm. going down to respawn. They're going to go respawn here looking for Thank Melon, <laughs> who is uh, basically hiding in that bush. Oh, he's got some homemade some orange chicken, base, chat. But you're still in a heart's guard onto him. So he's going to be able to defend Homemade orange this. chicken with some rice on top. Not take a death. Yeah, that's actually quite good for Melon there. You know, the, the heavy spin can't even be triggered. So Zane just decides, hey, man, he's on the top side. Let's just walk away, rinse and repeat. See if we could get an another advantage. Holy shit. And that's good, right? I like the setup. That's delicious. That going in to this next lower uh, ne next oh that is yeah, delicious about half health cold roll down as well it's kind of hot though and a pop-up is that gonna be a oh out. yellow finds a kill onto yato yellow very low is gonna there, there's himself. rice Safety. underneath it turtle still up as the rest of it's underneath it Nicolette. good positioning gonna come in yeah. is not oh, you can't really see it make a change there as kush picks up the second turtle yeah. Right. Yeah, still one for one on the scoreboard. Devious does have two turtles in the lead. You can see small experience going to the side of DA. It's not 100% significant, but a lot of the members of DA are just a little bit higher in terms of the levels. Now, let's take a look at some of the items. The corrosion has been built up by both. Do I have some Marcy Asian lineage? I don't know, but I love a lot of Asian food. The They're not <laughs> opting to go for that DHS. The corrosion is good enough. Oh, basic comes in with the blazing duet to clear out the lane to kind of defend this. I don't cast from DA. Good uh, zoning there from him. not here. Are you going to cast? Am <laughs> AMSR a as well. We're watching the party, bro. Oh, a little bit of an engagement here. Mobazane taken down to half health, but no worse for wear. That is a tanky Akai. <laughs> and, you know, both teams are okay with a very neutral beginning right there i still gotta catch highlights same objective is to get the base crystal at the very end so honestly he said just, i can't you know, believe you did that very slow i could have ordered like a hundred dollar steak to the mid -phase. i got some orange it's, it's chicken honestly generally okay uh coming out from both teams the bot side here small <laughs> aggression the hanabi actually is, is quite hard to deal with especially with the amount of cc that they have but she has ages so it's gonna be a lot of cc immune i'm a simple team. man I'm a simple yeah, man. And I want to say the only drawback to the Hanabi with uh, a lot of the oppression that they can put out is the fact that it doesn't do as much damage as you usually expect from some of mm. these marks. When you can see their tower taken down to about half health and yellow going to have to go home. Still I got a rice steamer too. At the six minutes. So no real aggression just yet. Both teams being very a rice cooker their engagements. Mm, and you know at the same time though like melon he, he seems to have a very good time with the hanabi so far picking up the corrosion into the golden staff quite early on he's gonna be able to shred a lot of the members um especially if there is no response test, 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 uh, coming out from btk and so far with the test, 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 and akai i feel like it has to be the valentina or the claw to be able to get onto the hanabi and at that point it might be too hard oh might be a little bit of a bad way for oh mikasa God. he does have the hearts guard there i can you get rid of the ads for the ads Lord here gotta get like youtube Mobizane premium for an opportunity to i'll try to i'll try to stop all the ads that come in for you guys this, kind of hanging around there 10 percent rice cooker it steams it though now we have started an engagement implosion is out t trying to find i can't i can't take highlights and do this at the same time they lost the turtle save the day and get a dash to safety a third turtle on the hands of it makes sticky rice you could already see one level above on kush one level above on melon and nah you deserve that you know have you know a higher level and that's going to lead to a much harder team fight for the side of btk to be able to sustain against and you know even look at melon here he's not scared of milo at all 
Yeah, I mean, he's doing a great job of kind of putting the pressure on to that. Even Yellow has to think twice about it. You saw earlier that he had to back off from there. Actually, T might be in a bad way between four members of BTK. He's going to use that passive. Heart Scarred is looming above his head there. The rest of BTK decides to back off of there. Kush sitting yeah. in the bush, and they're doing a great job. I want to say both teams doing great jobs of defending their territory, making sure that these towers are still standing. As I say that, Melon actually finds the first tower for devious activity, and BTK Okay, uh, starting to slip slowly behind. Yeah, and you know, the side of BTK, they did have basic on the bot side to deal with Melon, but I, I feel like in terms of the matchup, they don't want uh, the Claw to go up against the Hanabi. It's just too painful, too hard, especially in the early game. So now BTK do have the uh, Claude on the top side to try to deal with the CC. They're not, you know, in favor of trying to get the towers, but here we go. Yeah, big heavy spin is going to put Yato into enemy territory. That's going to be one for BTK. Kush comes in with the fracture, but not able to find a kill. Cold World patiently hiding in the pixel bush <laughs> by uh, by the look. Oh, it does, oh. does find an implosion, followed by a push. Mikasa able to get an escape there. Oh, shit, Kush. Kush. He's trying to dive himself to safety. Blazing Duet is out, followed by a heart. Yo, okay. And they didn't get a kill. Oh, Milo. This fight. Melon actually might be in a bad way here. You see him. Oh, my God. He's going to go ahead and Milo. Uh, find it on the backside. Mikasa finds a kill. On what happened, now, dude? Sitting at two to two apiece. Yeah, and you know, Mialo had a little small mistake there on the backside. He, you know, was that dude, able to. That dude like dived like, in there, but didn't get anything. Dying for that, but Cold World here does get a small catch onto Melon, but it just seems like the Hanavi actually is scaling quite well into this mid late game, right? He, he's dealing a lot of the damage. He's, you know, almost out trading basic or anyone that comes into play. And the heavy amount of CC with the lack of burst damage from the Valentina. GG, they're you know, getting zoned out. It's like Melon is having a Are they gonna attack? Now. Yeah, and right now Kush can be able to find Jesus, himself the GG's. first Lord of the game. No uh, way! The is out. Basic finds a kill on some yellow. Yo. Tree, so they do find the large Moba Zane gets taken down by Yato. Basic in trouble oh. here. Gets DA taken down just by a destroying from BTK Kush. right it's now. Going to be a Lord and a three kills for the side of Devious Activity. Yeah, Devious Activity actually dominating with the Angela mid uh, strategy. And, you know, it's paying dividends here. Their, 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 their lack of magic damage is made up by the amount of physical that Melon has and the amount of resources that the side of BTK have to put in order to shut down Melon. It's, it's already enough. Now they have to deal with Kush, which has dealing tons of damage, tons of bursts onto basic. It, it's even to the point where Yellow he just uh... able to dash out there. Right, so doing some crazy okay, shit right now. Caught in a pickled situation, they have to set up basic a little bit better onto the backside to either pick off Melon or Kush, but they're just unable to do so this far in the game. Yeah, and it's a good point there. It's just the amount of resources Melon going to have uh, that that ability that's going to give him shield already, and then also going to have that Aegis in store, which oh! means that you're not only do you have shield that you're going to have to burst through to get Melon. That was a good take combo. That was a good. That was a good tick and a heavy spin combo. Uh oh, basic though. Ah, yo, he was so overextended. And oh, Nicolette, yeah, that's a dash. She's going to be able to dash right over that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're able to pick off Kush there, but unfortunately, was that like 11? Their basic did 11 15 to like a 11 30 uh, for the side of DA here. And you can look at Melon. You know, nothing that Zane and Cold World can do is gonna scare this man off the Hanabi. And you know, I kind of want to look at the items that the Hanabi has built corrosion. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Demon Hunter's sword into the Golden Staff. Yes, along with the Wind of Nature, he's gonna be able to deal with some of the damage that comes out from uh, Basic here. <laughs> What? Cold World took an entire yo-yo spree uh, from the side of Devious Activity. Couldn't move anywhere because of that alt from Mikasa. Wow. And you know what? The one thing I didn't even consider. That is Freya. That is Mikasa the Freya. Is Yato, the heart scarred mm. onto Melon. That's going to be another thing that you're going to have to worry about because that's going to be even more shield. As we take a little replay here, look at Kush getting that next, uh, that first Lord. And this uh, basic tried to go in there, was able to take down Melon, but in between four members and got bursted down.
Yeah, it's a tough fight over there for the side of BTK. Almost looked like they were getting the sets that they were looking for, right? They had the Tigreal set up on the Hanabi. The Claude came on to the backside. Unfortunately, Myla did miss his ultimate, but they were end up, you know, they they were able to push back the members of DA, and you know that is quite good here, right? Uh, but milo here getting picked off the ultimate is used so the side of da they do have that advantage here yeah they're gonna go ahead and start on the moba zane who's getting bursted down moba heavy spin and out 10 health left on him he is gonna be able to find himself an escape basic hiding in this bush putting some damage oh. on them yelling out comes does he get a set delay. does he get it having to create some he gets out he gets and out you can see their basic mikasa actually, gets caught though mikasa wall charge returning Mielo and uh, a, a great return for him six and five right Yo, now private didn't as, even uh, know what happened right there resetting for this lord they want it they're trying to bait it out but you are a player down on devious activity btk has a full members so i want to say this is a fight that they should be looking to take here even though they are about four k down lord being slow played right now by moba zane i think he knows that t is in this bush right now a little bit of a push onto the mid lane and uh no worse for where we're gonna go ahead and reset yeah i think oh! the reset is here, but Lotion lands onto two members and hooked oh against the wall is t and kush dude the take implosion paired with a heavy spin is just so op lord for btk like you're just know, locked hitting her chair right now it's a good setup coming out from btk though right the implosion did catch true the members they weren't able to get the immune that they were looking for but again, what was that 14 has been a problem in 14 a lot of fights later 100 to like 14 attached, the more cleave that the hanabi does and it's it's, it's gonna smell a lot of trouble but once again btk they do have this benedetta on the side right they they could get the split push opportunity but the whole world here gets taken off before the lord even comes yeah, I mean, and, and that's Melon who was just farming up at the bottom there, just uh, chunked him down. Oh, Melon takes down to about half health, being topped up there by Yato on the side. In comes oh. Mielo looking for the kill. Melon taking down a Mielo there. Didn't even need the hearts guard. Nicolette being chased down and destroyed. Basic on the backside, trying to put the Delicious. damage onto Mikasa T <laughs> here, looking to put some damage on, but gets thwarted by the battle mirror image yeah it's a good engagement coming out from the side of da they're able to pick off three members right one of them hanabi was just there hitting the trigger with the corrosion scythe even if the flicker or the implosion was available hanabi still had the shield to be able to immune that and then they ended up picking off two other members milo and nicolette both nerf know, hanabi core members this vdk roster so it's gonna be a reset uh, coming out from the side of BTK, right? They kind of have to gather themselves, bring up the members, set up a better team fight. I think one of the things that they do have an advantage is that Mialo is able to kind of rotate onto the far and the weak side of the lane. Uh, we, you know, we call it the highest priority lane. Uh, after the mid, it's going to be on the far lane of the jungle, uh, the far lane of the Lord. So if Milo is able to get the split push in his favor, rotate into the team fight. This is uh, a split devious up uh, from their it's quite the team with the heart guard and the Grok and the Aegis that Melon has. But if DVS groups up into that death ball, Melon is completely protected by the Grok, by the Angela. It's going to smell a lot of trouble for the side of BTK to be able to get a victory in these small fights. Yeah, we've been seeing they've been trying different things to try to Mikasa get giving huge call to outs here to Melon. But the, the problem is once you're on him, it takes a decent amount of time to burst through the amount of shield that they're able to output from the uh, I want to say the first ability from the Aegis and from the heart guard. You can see the damage dealt here highly in <laughs> favor of Melon on that Hanabi. I'd never thought I'd see the day, but I, I want to say uh, Hanabi works here. Look my dog just melds especially well with the heart Heart's guard here and the trouble that BTK is having trying to get the kill and trying to get onto that back line. Now, I want to say a little bit of a standstill as both kind of vying around for position, especially now that the gold only about 2k advantage for devious activity. But at the 17 minute mark, that's not a huge lead. No water and, yet. You know, to, to, to be able to draft a Hanabi into your comp takes one takes a lot the of rice is super moist pretty decent draft and you know da 
quite quite honestly they're shining with the hanabi draft right now they're one of the only teams that have been able to prove this hanabi that is relevant especially in such a high tier match right the last person that we got to see the Ooh. hanabi being played is going to be uga booga and you know he did so well he did take btk off for his <laughs> spin and you know and, and and then he got the hanabi banned pretty much every single time so it's it's still a very good draft coming out from da i do want to see how they are going to attack the i think they're zoning lines, them pretty the, well though the stun potential that btk has here though does kush does kush yeah, get it just such an even be ready game right now even mm -hmm. when you look at the XP ready. laners both cutting each other's lanes in enemy territory oh. right now lord being baited out again i want to say uh, the t gonna walk in here into three members heart scarred ready i, I want to say even the threat of the heart scarred is enough to make BTK kind of back off a bit. Like, all right, we're not gonna be able to kill this guy. We are Milo's like keep, keeping keeping him down. A little bit of a fight there between the XP laners, but uh, worse for where? Uh, I mean, it's just such an even game. Be hydrated, right chat. But now we're kind of in the gap between the utility jungle and Dream also, Snipe. also kind of like this bush checking the front line versus <laughs> hey, yo, calm something. Down. <laughs> uh, like what Devious has, where it's a Nolan in the jungle. We also got the Angela, so T is going to be the only one that gets the front line vision. Oh shit! Did so you T get an ad? Actually, has a very important role. I can't one, skip the ads. I'm, I'm currently first, like doing right. Um, two. He has. I don't know if I can like stop every him. single bush that Devious has to kind of walk through. You can see the pathing of Melon. It's very passive. It, it, he's hiding behind um a lot of the mid river for a very good reason. Da just does not I have the front him. line capability. Ad to should be only like every twenty seven minutes so is you know proven to be a lot of they hydrated bay matilda to get the advantage isn't both roams just kind of chilling in the same bush hello <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this might be a long game we might not need to buckle up here as uh melon gonna go ahead and start things trying to bait out the lord both teams i mean so calculated right now neither one wanting to make a mistake this actually might come down to this split pushing ability I need to right feed now. the so dog you can make like the more ads. There to make somebody who has to Cl click the more ad button maybe create some type of opportunity at the lord i mean right oh uh, you can see at mid buy you two premium on to melon is not able to find it melon actually very low though so they might have an opportunity here for the bloodthirsty kings kush sitting here in wait looking for an opportunity mobazane realizes get oh. up there on the side kush still in the bush he might not be able to hearts guard is on him is he able to find the retribution he's not yellow able to find there we the go kill on to kush this might be the advantage that bloodthirsty kings were looking for as mobazane picks up the lord as well I think one of the biggest reasons why, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a standstill at every single objective and they're willing to play this long game is because, you know, BTK, they, 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 they quite honestly have all the engagement tools that they're looking for. The heavy spin, the implosion, the flicker, the I am you. You also got the Benedetta with the Petrify. <laughs> like they have a lot of abilities set up for a good fight. But for the side of DA, in order for them to fight, they're looking for the implosion to be used. They're looking for the heavy spin to use. And the only target that BTK has is going to be T, who is checking a lot of these bushes. But now if that push comes to shove. In, in, in the play right he's able to kind of just chunk out yeah. a lot of the front line of da and that's just so hard to defend against yeah, you see Mikasa coming in from the backside does get pushed out and try to put the damage on the basic. Mikasa wow. getting very low, still has that immortality. Cold World might be taken down. Yellow finds a, uh, uh, able to take down the tower as Kush finds himself a kill. Yellow very low. Immortality has been proc'd. Nicolette and oh, the suppression. Yellow, suppression out there. Oh, 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 he made it out with the, the winter trench the mid high ground tower still trying to put on the pressure wow. using that bmi to get away and now we have waves that need to be answered by da yeah it seems like da they do have a great early game advantage but unfortunately they're losing a little bit of steam when it comes down to uh engaging in a lot of these team fights Ooh, Melon does get by a wild charge from T with the flicker as well. Moba Zane gonna dive over that wall from T. One or two down for the side of Bloodthirsty Kings. Eleven to nine butts. I want to say Bloodthirsty Kings kind of showed that when it comes to like this bait and play, this <laughs> Lord dance, uh, they're able to have a little bit more patience than devious activity. So it's gonna be up to them to try to counter that with something. Look at Moba Zane. Have fifty seconds left. Oh boy, on this it's, next Lord. He's 
Yeah, and Fuck. once again, you know, the side of devious activities, they have to stretch in his beard for the ultimate, the heavy spin, the implosion to be used, and quite honestly, a vision on Claude to be able to look for any engagement. Versus for the side of BTK, they're very well disciplined. They know they have the advantage. If they don't pull the trigger, the side of DA will never look for a fight. So, you know, BTK, they're looking, uh, you know, they, they, they quite honestly, they have the ability to be proactive in this game. It's just a matter if they can get Melon onto the backside, because if he lives in any of these team fights, especially when uh, Basic dies, like he's going to be able to out damage, out sustain, out, you know, attack um, anyone that BTK has to throw at them. Yeah, and the only problem here I want to say as we move later and later into the into this late game is devious activity, as you brought up before, a lot of physical damage on it. The only magic damage you have mm -hmm. is from Angela, and that's something that they can be building into, and they, they're going to be able to sustain a lot longer because all they need to do is build those physical defense items right now, whereas Nicolette can actually output a surprising amount of magic damage while also taking on the form of that heart scarred from Yato. Yeah, not only the hearts guard, he can also uh, take the wild charge coming out from the Grok. And that could, you know, provide a little bit more CC to force the Hanabi to use the Aegis a little bit early. So inside of BTK, they honestly have a lot uh, in their arsenal. The side of DA, they're just waiting for the right opportunity when the heavy spin is down, when the implosion gets used, or even when the Claude is in a bad position. <laughs> You can see a little bit of a toying here. T and Melon. Oh, actually, T in a little bit of trouble here. Melon moving forward. Not sure this uh very risky here. And that's the thing is, I, I think it's risky, but you still have a ton of shield there. Cold World, Kush dives in on him. Not going to go ahead and get the fraction. Listen, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Calm down. It almost would have been a wasted effort. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both teams are <laughs> kind of caught, caught in a stalemate. If Diego's this lord... <laughs> You know, you, Your spoiler. you can pretty much say that DA is going to win this game because, you know, BTK doesn't have too much insurance available. They only have outer, they only have inner towers available, but it seems like basic is doing so much damage to T and it's really, really hard for T to be the only one in the front because right now he's Oh, snap. Ooh, big pop Yo, did they use a turtle cam to, Melon has the to do a side card. cam? Trying to lay down the damage. That might be two members. Oh. Mortality has been activated. Yeah. Melon in a little bit of trouble. Look at how much damage he's doing. I think so too. On top of that, Mobazane finds the Lord Retribution and DA Sheesh. trying to make him pay for it. Kush Milo. finds a kill on the back door. The back door. The back door. One down for Devious. The back door by Milo. Yellow yeah. with the kill onto the Sheesh. base with the split push. I didn't even see it. I was so focused door. on the fire. What a great play by the goat. The goat comes The goat comes through the back play. door, not the front door. BTK. You did see at moments that, you know, they were definitely going to lose. Zane did get the retribution on the Lord, but that was just part of the plan. Milo was on the opposite end, split pushing. <laughs> and I kind of talked about the ability that Milo has on the Benedetta, right? It's not looking for the team fight. It's not looking for picks. It's looking to split the members apart from the side of DA. And unfortunately, DA, they were kind of, you know, desperate in that situation. They had the Grok, they had the Hanabi, kind of both low in position. They had a great team fight and they were definitely going to sweep BTK off the floor there. But Milo on the back side, the, the saving grace, the hero of the Kings, getting that backdoor play. And quite honestly, I think Milo probably had to build all damage items to be able to chunk down the towers <laughs> like that. <laughs> Yeah, and this, uh, I mean, this is what I was talking about before when we were kind of coming into that stalemate in the second uh, stalemate in the second to last Lord. And it, it's probably going to come down to a split. Even the cameraman didn't comes, notice. Both teams are going to kind of sit on the Lord <laughs> You know it's bad when you when, when the cameraman yeah, doesn't so even notice. It was hard for me to even notice there. Got into that bottom lane and able <laughs> I to remember when I when I caught basic failing the back door and uh, and the, the last in ACT. I have to see his BOD. Uh, endless you know the the, the reason why M milo was able to get that back door was because he decided to opt to go for that full damage right i think one 
It what happened to the double cam? To with the damage that melon comes out. They were if told not to fly that as much. Especially when he's not in a great position. The casters, the casters got like debilitated and, and didn't know, know how to uh, didn't know how to cast. They didn't know if they were supposed to cast the so left smart, or the right side. So well crafted, and especially since BTK members, they did not fall completely in that Lord fight. They had like two to three members just walking around trying to get the defense on and trying to give Milo just more time, and they just executed that strategy to perfection there. So the yeah, I mean, the casters uh, uh, the time. casters complained as much as uh this was a btk win i want to say this was a great and very interesting strategy from devious activity the only problem is as you came into that late game especially as you were talking about even without Miello there to get that uh, that sneaky play in there btk was and did win that last fight at the lord mm -hmm. they got the uh they were able to get the, the retry onto the lord and we're starting to take down da members uh, just that Miello was uh, too fast for that <laughs> able to get the lord there as we can see here look at the damage out there 100 mm. uh, basically 160,000 by melon i do want to talk about the team fight participation from both of the teams though it seems like da a little bit more focused yeah on and splitting up right? come and back due to the fact that milo gives so much pressure that they have to send one two to three units on the opposite lane to be able to uh uh -huh, be damaged split pushing pressure coming out from milo but on the other that hand, was DK, that was because paired with the members, angela like you just have infinite shields 80 90 80 percent team fight participation it's pretty much that banana split that onik has been so known for overseas here and they they executed it perfectly there yeah, I mean, uh, a great a game banana split by, by Onik chat. Talking about DA was going to be probably does, one of the does Onik do a lot of split uh, pushing? BTK, just like any other of these teams here uh, facing Devious Activity, they showed it there. Uh, unfortunately, I mean. <laughs> A great call, whoever made that call on BTK there to go ahead and get the split push, especially with how much was invested as everybody was kind of sitting there watching because they knew the this mate was coming. The big fight happened and yellow on the side. I just did. That's just amazing. Yellow. I'm just so shocked by it. <laughs> I, I mean, is that really honestly, how you say if, his fucking name? If, if the Benedetta did come into the team fight, it, it could have turned, right? It, it potentially could have turned. But once again, Melon's damage, the outputs with the corrosion, Going to with Google the golden Translate. staff, the demon hunter, the sustain along with the shield and the heart guard, it just pairs so perfectly in that team fight. He was it's Milo. all the members and you not know, Yellow. We talk about the Lord fights, right? Uh, you know, PTK on that Milo. last Lord, they were low key kind of losing that fight. Um, Google they, says it's Milo. Uh, Milo. Quite early on. Milo. But, you know, the side of DA, they still had a lot of damage and they were Yellow? chasing BTK kind of out. Where the of fuck the does the double now, L come from? Fight, DA Milo. They showed that they had the ability to win those team fights. But again, yeah, it's Milo, not Milo. Milo. Decision making. Everything Milo. just worked out for him. He was able to get that. Yeah, it's Milo. Tower, but if he didn't, private. <laughs> if he Milo. Didn't, that siege that was coming with the Hanabi would have been my elbow. <laughs> Yeah, you can see here, like so much focus here as Miello up at the top lane, pushing in. Nobody noticed. Just call him the goat. Even trying I like to go it. Back to base. You they low? Were trying to focus on this. Milo. Push, getting the kill on to Cold World. But man, that was the end of the road. We Nobody could stop him. Yellow up at the top. Oh, and we even got a basic? nice little angle here from uh, the side view, too. You can see Miello while that whole fiasco was happening at the Lord Pitch. Miello doing goat things as goats do. Oh, yeah. And, oh, my uh, God. Yo, basic. Are you getting in the game? Down. <laughs> yeah, a very. You, very, very you disconnected. The members of BTK to really get that split push in place. Typically, when it comes down to a lot of these split pushes, it, it was a do or die situation for uh, Milo there, right? Uh, the, the, the the team was getting split apart. They were losing a lot of the team fights, and now like it's it's honestly unbelievable. But once again, DA played a a wonderful game they would have won a lot of the five versus five team fights but dealing against the banana split is just way too tough I got him back especially here. since milo built full damage on the banana that's crazy <laughs> yeah an exciting game there i mean i'm and i'm actually super excited <laughs> to see what we go with next here i i was man 
I, I'm not gonna lie. There, there was a little bit of a pause when I saw the Hanami mm. pick up. <laughs> it's not a, it's not something that's usually very. And they want you to ready up, bro. In North America, and I was almost curious. I appreciate if it. Maybe we had hit the end of Melon's hero pool, uh, and we, and we were just kind of going with whatever was left. But I mean, it was a plan, and it's something that played through, especially having the heart scarred on your team. The amount of damage he was, you saw there. Uh, what was it 160,000 damage he was able to dish out there? I just feel like the only the only real right. problem is they Milo 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 <laughs> hold that advantage that they had um, and really kind of like clench that choke to to really be able to kind of my Milo sounds early. cooler Milo sounds late like game, you're basically it's what it actually game. is you're basically waiting for somebody to make a mistake you no longer have the I guess advantage. it just depends on like 50 50 and how you really view things an odd you want to go with you always want to go with the advantage and and uh, I want to say, once you get into that late, late game, it's basically you're, you're waiting for a mistake. You're waiting for somebody to take the advantage or you're waiting for a um, yellow at the top lane to take your core <laughs> during a, uh, a Lord fight. I mean, you kind of talk, you kind of mentioned uh, the hero pool of Melon. I think the strategy that they had in place was trying to find a hero <laughs> that can use the Demon Hunter. Yo, how they say it? Um, to deal with the front line. How they say it? Uh... Yes. Right? The Akai, the Chamber, those are very tough units to deal with. You go with something like a Brody with a Hepatocies, that's not going to deal that much damage, especially with how dominant the physical draft that the side of DA has. Now, there is plenty of options that I do think Milo. could have had potential, right? The Natan that we've seen quite well, um, the Herit that could come out to play. Milo. But then if you, if you switch it to Spanish. Mielo. 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 Milo. That's a big ass mouth. <laughs> Arabic. Milo. Let's go to Portuguese. Milo. Oh God. That's not a fucking language, apparently. Fuck. He said, Nate, no way you doing all that. And their synergy <laughs> is that even with the the fact that there were uh, better picks. <laughs> Uh, Japanese. Hanabi played well into it, even though they had no real. Put it on Endo. It's gonna say either. goat. So you still <laughs> the me goat stacking up that physical defense, and they were st and devious actually. Try Mexican. I did to have a Mielo. mild success Mielo. against them, which kind of says something about their ability as a team and and the uh, their synergy and their rotations there. <laughs> PTK, mm. uh, they're just gonna go ahead and they're like, ah, oh, yeah, we're we're done with that. We're gonna and Endo needs. Asian, it's Milo. The Nolan right off the board. You know, in terms of the late game team fights, it seems like they were able to figure out how to deal with the Nolan. He said, but let's see more Esmeralda. Game, you see Kush grabbing the first turtle. The second objective went to him. Also, Spanish. To get those really good team fights near the eight minute mark. Uh, you know, bursting down basic, pretty much hundreds of Japanese. So there's definitely power in that pick. Now, for the side of DA, they opted to ban for the Matilda and the Barats, two of the strongest heroes that BTK has. They like emphasize the low. I'm not going to be surprised if we see They're like DA Milo. Go for an early Milo. Game right? Unfortunately, it seems like Melon. Yeah, Yue is growing hair, though, bro. He's a Tamagotchi. I'm not a Tamagotchi. This time around, I think DA is going to respond Fuck. potentially with like a second pick carry. I think that He's a Chia uh, pet. could be potentially. They could also go with a Claude ban and, you know, just protect Melon's pick. And, uh, you know, he could decide what he wants to do with that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting here. We do have the uh, Barats getting taken off. I'm wondering if <laughs> we're going to see a Fredrin ban from DA here to answer back. And then, uh, or are we just going to give that up to BTK and then deal Free. with uh, Gia, with Gia, the Gia. pick? I, expect, I mean, we saw it last game. They were they banned out both Barats and Fredrin here. So I'm does expecting it, Nicola have an IG? Game. She does, but she doesn't yeah, give it out. I mean, the bans from BTK is quite standard two assassins that Zane refuses to uh, play. I, I don't know about refuses, but he's just that utility guy in North America, right? He's known to be a menace on a lot of the frontline junglers. And, you know, quite honestly, I like that, right? 
play that tank versus tank matchup. I've been here since season whatever, and I've been dominating the scenes with this utility, especially after M3. Come at me with your best pick because I know exactly how this matchup goes, and I think that's great. Now, DA opted to ban. Yeah, she did. She does not give out her Instagram, them, buddy. And by plenty of teams beforehand. So it seems like the CC has been quite popularized today in all our series. Yeah, which uh, which leaves open some picks uh, for the side of uh, BTK Fairness, here. Do you pick Nova. up the Fredrin first or pick up something else? Well, I follow her or no? But that kind of risks DA getting the Fredrin over you. And then you're going to have to play this game of... Uh, uh, I want to say Mobazane uh, on the uh, Akai again, which I mean, uh, you, you were just talking about it. I mean, just because he, you've taken out Fredrin, just because you've taken out Can't, can't wait to see doesn't mean he has, he doesn't Sounds have like I have it. Let's go follow Lizbeth. He might not be the star of show, uh, getting like all the kills for his team, but he's definitely I do out not, there. I do uh, not have a difference for BTK. Elect hmm. for the Ruby, who we talked about earlier. Uh, has a, a few nerfs in the system, but uh, uh, still valid. I don't, I don't like valued for BTK simp on here. players like that. I think it's a very neutral pick uh, for the side of BTK. It's a flex onto the XP or the roam position. So, you know, it doesn't really give away too much. Nicolette's a very like beautiful person, but uh, DA to pick up all the heroes that they every, want every people have their uh, response to counter, right? Or their, their own, the Akai is their own stories and their own problems, you know, is also there for Moba Zane to take. And he could also go for the alpha. Right? I don't know and if no uh, they're, they're up this carry. It's something that I'm a very social uh, guy. Expected it, a very there, you know what? Marksman, uh, line up You're in management. No, bi no funny business with your now. employees. Pick up the cloud to uh, protect his own pick, which is going to get banned out in the second phase. I don't know, man. I'm just I'm a very social person. Like I'm I'm everywhere. Like you know what I mean? Zane's hero pool going to get shrunk down even more. Listen, decision that BTK. Houdini's another manager. That's manager to manager in object. right now that is a very <laughs> uh, strong opening i don't i don't simp on her yeah um it, very interesting here you brought up i mean it's it's very interesting you brought up a bunch of picks that could go i don't know and then the i mean some people have a product bro activity bro bro no, mm. they're gonna go ahead they do pick up the Faramis for nicolette and mobazan gonna scoop up no more Akai, simping uh before no more the simping chat phase so uh he's not gonna have to go uh, something maybe he's, he's a technically less an employee too. On. Mikasa oh, here, God. I'm assuming we might be looking at uh, the XP. So damn loud. Uh, for maybe. Uh, the side of devious activity, possibly the roam. Maybe, I don't. Maybe an X Borg to deal with uh, the sustain a, that BTK, the frontline powerhouse that they have. I'm a reborn anti sim. A Novaria to protect. Uh, the pick because quite honestly these drafts that they're pushing out there's still a lot available but they're banning out a lot of simp on ritz <laughs> the vexana gets You're just going down the line i'm huh, not Andy? sure on how the vexana's matchup to go against <laughs> the Baroness, but it might be better oh God. than the navaria pick why is everybody yeah, that's starting that's kind of shit? I was uh, a little curious about the pick. On one hand, if you pick up the Valentina, you can send uh, for me. You, you can send for me. Yes, a, yes. Another Hold realm to match BTK. Yeah. Uh, but on the other side, all here, hail you have a huge the GTA of crew. Realm comes out, you can still lay out a huge amount of damage and a huge. I didn't diss Riz. Who uh, diss Riz? There as well. The Novaria does have some play as well. You, we've talked R about Ritz it is beautiful as well. Uh, what I, do you I, mean? I Novaria, it takes a little bit of time for her to start coming online to really be doing a lot of that chunking damage and my chat you have to be great you have to be able to hit those uh <laughs> those uh, spheres as well you know what i mean like i mean it, it looks easy oh make it look easy Jesus but i mean Christ. it can be pretty easy the chat is just listing everything okay. very interesting ritz is like leave me out of, of this often the band out the uh, late game a, a kind of a bite to the bullet uh from the last game where you know btk was able to single out melon in the second <laughs> phase ban but it does give btk an interesting setup all Rich wants to do is be part of the pizza party. Yes. And physical paired up with the utilities on the mid could be potential. Yo, it all it always like boggles me how the other team against Moba Zane can always get the Frederick. The Brody and the Clint. Now the response from DA potentially right the R lot which does a lot of the CC, a lot of the AOE CC. Minotaur, Tigreal, both are available. They could also opt to go for the Grok, which Tig I has fart? pretty much did an exceptional job being the only front line in the last Is that game what you to, heard? You know, bush check and get the engagements on. 
Yeah, it's very interesting here right now. We're, we're uh, the fray is an interesting. You said Moba man. Zane's uh, uneducated. I mean, Casa is. <laughs> does he have a degree? Global. I don't know. Whatever title that you're looking for, he has all of them with Freya. <laughs> oh. Oh man, so it's gonna be it's gonna be down. We do see the R lot pickup, a good pickup, a very solid, uh, a tanky XP lane can get the setting potential there as well with the final slash. Not waiting to see what uh, PDK <laughs> is a high school here. diploma. I mean, uh, with who's left right now? Hey. I mean, we've got the Brody left out there. It can still even uh, even if I had a million, even damage. if I had a million a subs, I still have my bachelor's. He can throw out there as well. PhD so and hot things. That could be an easy target to get. I'm working on my masters, so it could go one of two ways. Either basic goes Harith or Brody or some like early game or Harith, right? If he goes Harith, Milo's Isn't gonna Harith go, go band or... But on the other hand, they could also go for a Diggy strat to go against the Arlot, right? Pick up the Diggy, go for a Ruby in the XP, and then pick up some heavy physical damage dealers. Yellow the the Most likely it's gonna be the Harith. No, it's gonna be the Ooh. Exia, but T here. A very solid. She hates pick, BTK and Zane. With the carry, Damn. the Kaja could be detrimental. Single out the Nether Realm, force that ultimate to be popped, and just completely deny the engagement coming off of BTK. I just uh, when I've seen the Kajas, it has not. Yeah, I'm ready been for some sleep tonight, chat. Yeah. All hell, Master G. I've just the the counter engagement answers have been too much for a lot of these teams to kind of withstand. Zane's got uh, the retro diploma. Then you have to answer. <laughs> the Nether Realm's gonna uh, be able to keep them topped. Oh, I, have, I have a bachelor's and accounting coming in for an engagement that you're gonna. I have a bachelor's and I have three, three minors. Distance from Yato to get even further minor back degrees. From the divine judgment. Kush is gonna have to be in the front line. Kind it's creating, MLBB uh, day. Oh god! To get the taunt on all of that. Oh, and T, a good and a solid pick up here too because of the stationary effect of that ultimate from basic on the Ixia. The full the uh, the uh, the ultimate from Ixia is got to stand still. Uh, and Another six a.m. Pray you're still gonna have the flicker, but now you're gonna be dealing with the petrify and <laughs> the uh, minor degrees. <laughs> and swoop through the entire team and he's going to be looking exactly for Ixia. Not only for the Exia, it can also pop <laughs> the Nether Realm just like that, I knew you right? fuckers were going to do this shit again. Comes through. That's an ultimate for ultimate trade. Not sure if it's going to be advantage for Devious. I have three minor degrees. Solid One Flex in business, Arlock, two right? and in management, and three in so finance. Well in XP. This <laughs> it would be a nice so well, <laughs> I knew you fuckers were gonna say it when I. That's why I had to emphasize minor degrees. How well the Yuzong does into a Paquito. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of burst damage right after level four. But ladies and gentlemen, BTK is up one against Devious Activity, who is looking to take this to a game three. Will they succeed? We are about to find out in our last series. I do have a degree in casting too. Yeah, I mean, expect a very tough. Uh, Ritz wants me to stay at very Ritz. I'm gonna have to go get like a bottle if that's the that, if, if that's the case. The kills, but in terms of the mental strength, right? Both of these teams, you know, they do know each other. They're gonna have you know good rotations. Expect you know, I think a lower zero and zero score throughout the mid and early game. But an audience prediction. I got a degree in my percent. <laughs> Damn it! For the kings of the I have kings. three course, minor degrees. Uh, I do think it's warranted, <laughs> but devious with a very, very strong job once again. <laughs> Yeah, God damn it! Once we take a look at these, uh, at the emblems here, what the fuck? Quantum charges that's a out there that's a basic head right, right there. Kings, and I want to say a much more uh, fluid opening for the uh, emblems on the side of Devious Activity. Both teams, ooh, we have about a little bit of a gank here. So I was worried about for the bottom lane and Mikasa on the Yuzong's gonna get crowded around and nice blow on to Mikasa. Hey, good one, time. Twenty five. The first two, mid clear one, rotates onto the bot side. 30. They're able to get the advantage on the XP quite early. In terms of that lane, right? <laughs> Yuzong with Petrified doesn't really have that much mobility. So typically, when he does go aggressive or he goes looks for a gank, he's going to get punished quite well. And you know, BTK takes advantage of that. Uh, you know, quite honestly. And here with the turtle coming up, their setup is looking quite good. 
Yeah, not only that, and I kind of, I, I have to critique Mikasa using his Petrify as he got ganked. Save that for this engagement for the turtle so that you can kind of at least uh, have it during the team fight. And right now, it's going to be, uh, oh, actually, D DA in a good position here. Mobazane, half health. Oh, nice little pop up there. Terrified. And that Ooh. might be a Cold World oh. using the flicker. Able to get away. Black Dragon is out. T finds a kill okay. onto Cold World. And I can't see Mobazane gets the first turtle of the game right now. Mikasa in the back lines a deep amount of damage gets put onto him as Mielo goes down for the side of bloodthirsty kings two and two apiece yeah i think uh it was a 2-2 two -two trade even for both sides btk was able to come out on top with the objective but i kind of just want to go back to the game um from our last series da honestly proved that they were they had the ability to win all the team fights unfortunately the split push was just too much uh, to we did not them. give so honestly, nicoletta DA, cam they have the ability to win knowledge. this game quite well um it's just a little bit tough especially since the momentum is going to be in favor of the kings yeah, and I want to say we 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 kind of used Yato used that Eternal Guardian. Uh, he didn't use it on Mobazane. He used it on the fight on the side of the turtle. When you can, we really want to create, especially against a person like Mobazane. You want to create as much CC and headache for him as possible. T in a little bad way. We have this uh, the Milo in a bad way. He's still able to get out of there. Full the gold. Oh, Eternal Guardian them down. Now, Yo. Himself a kill as the rest of BTK forced back into their top. You weigh the bias caster. Oh, dude. To the We're gonna right have to back out. It, so, no worse for wear and still raining damage on from the backside hey. is Yato with that Vexana. Ooh, Kush My cat it. always so tries to eat everything. Deep into enemy lines is gonna be able to find himself and escape. Yeah, huge fight coming out from the setup of T. He was pretty much caught off guard there, used the final slash and got away in that team fight. A well done for the side of DA. Now, looking to collapse <laughs> onto basic here. I think they're going to look to disengage, though. Ooh, 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 ooh. A missed final slash. A bottle. T. That actually a, a bottle of that sauce. The end there. Nicolette chasing down T, looking for a grab. A does not find it as the rest of Look DA how blue my eyes are, Chad. Their tower. Next turtle yeah. is up. Yeah, BTK a strong showing in a lot of these team fights, but you can see some uh, reinforcements coming out from the side of DA, right? Kush got a three-man bonk set up with a Vexana ultimate. Now the flicker gets popped on the backside, so Melon is not going to have that utility available, especially going up against the stationary mage. Basic should be able to win majority of the trades at this point. Yeah, Black Dragon is out. They, they make short work of Miello. Now putting on the damage onto this turtle. Are they going to be able to get Mobazane still able to get the retribution and heavy spins? There into my soul. Yeah, it's a second turtle for the side of BTK. But Devious seems like they have the map in advantage of their favor. Milo cat has like brown eyes. Impact so far in this game. I want to see the cat at the same eyes. Time, BTK my eyes are better. Able to hold up in terms of the gold, right? They got both of the objectives. They are <laughs> down and kill, but it seems like the utility versus utility style. Moba Zane has a slight. You Edge said there. basic or Zia, guys. I, I want to say, Mielo, I mean, you're, we're saying he's not having the huge effect, but he was able to draw out that uh, mm. that Eternal Guardian from Yato, which meant, again, we're not using it on Moba Zane. We're not putting the CC on Moba Zane. Oh, shit, to I got to focus. From getting those retributions. I got to get highlights. Trouble here gets taken down by Moba Zane. Mm, they spent a lot of resources on the bot side. They had Zane over there. So it seems like, you know, the side of DA, they're looking to gauge on the top side. Look at the position of the carry. He's between both the towers and he's just going in. He doesn't, you know, he, he, he knows that the members of BTK are going to be slow in response because Zane was on the bot side. And now it seems like they have that advantage in the top side. They have even the gold lead being down two objectives so far. Yeah, right now, Amielo does find himself a tower in his name. Oh, uh, I mean, an even game right now. It doesn't, I mean, a lot, it might be a little bit more pressure being put on by BTK to devious activity, but the game's still very much even. 17k a piece. Oh. Ooh, we're going to come in here now to try to put some damage on Kush. Does find himself an energy Ooh. eruption, but no kill yet again. And this is kind of shades of the first game. Very deadlocked.
Yeah, very disciplined, very good disengages coming in from both sides. You just rinse and repeat, try to hit some of your spells. If you get that burst, then yeah, you know, well, 100 to zero a person with like two, three ultimates. If not, we're going to rinse and repeat. The ultimate school, uh, cooldowns come up in 30 or whatever seconds. Now with the next objective coming up, it's going to, you know, both teams are going to be a little melee? Amazing. Facing a flicker from Melon does get taken down now. Starting on the Lord is DA. They do kind of get it zoned out here. Oh, coming okay. in on to Nicolette. They're going to go ahead and try to. Oh, there's oh. three members, four members of BTK. Oh, Black. the dragon. dragon is out. Might be just a little early. Who is he looking for? Not going to be able to find a target. That means you're not going to have a Black Dragon for this. Yeah, but Melon's pushing that top tower. Health. So trying to bait this out between three Ooh, members. Ooh, Kush is getting. Oh, this might not be the fight he wants. Down to about. Missed it though. Is out looking for the oh, yo. I'm not sure that he was able to find it there, but the oh, Fraser's wrath was able to to get that next turn. Oh, dude, it so healed him so much. He, you know, he had low HP, but he already had the bars available for the ultimate. He got the heavy spin to come out. A little bit uncharacteristic. David Lane. You know, Old when it comes to the objective, you want to hold on to the heavy spin until Jeez. red point direction. But the heavy spin came out a little bit early. BTK thought that, that they was had an the ability play. to get that shut down onto the Frederick. Like Unfortunately, eight, the bonk came through, got the sustain, 45. hits three of the members, and BTK having to disengage there. Kush coming in, trying to put the damage on the Nicolette. The Eternal Guardian does miss the pop-up. Zane gets hit by a, a oh, vital missile. slash. You see that the full barrage is out. Kush getting picked <laughs> off into the back lines, trying to find himself an escape, and I don't think he's going to be able to. Moba Zane finds the kill there, but here at the mid lane, T dives in, gets the kill, but he is going to have to answer Mielo on this piqui. Oh, look at the, the, the moves there, but it's not going to be enough. Mielo with the final touches. Yeah, it's a little cha-cha, but three for zero for the side of BTK. It, it seems like DA, they're getting some good team fights. They're getting some good pickoffs, but they're not really able to let this Yuzong um, Where am you know, I from? Do the things that he's supposed to. He's supposed to be able to catch onto base. Uh, he's supposed to use the form, from America. Cut off here. Yeah, and then that's kind of the unfortunate thing. We talked about it uh, before when we see the, pla dr the Black Dragon in the last fight. It was just a little bit early and not a mm -hmm. big part of the fight. DA were able to come away with a successful turtle even though the black dragon came out early but it's kind of telling you something about how they're baiting out a lot of these abilities now i do want to see if mikasa is able to make an impact from the position that he's Moba in right fail. Now, right? is he able to get on to basic or you know disrupt Nicolette i look like i'm from arkansas or dragon kansas form? that i think that I'm is from Missouri. Have to impact a lot of these team fights, and the way that BTK is kind of close to Kansas, quite smart. They just let the Black Dragon come through, disengage, and rinse and repeat, and you know that's pretty smart. But on the side of DA, they definitely have a lot of potential here. Ooh, basic Ooh, yeah, gets saved, but I don't know if it's gonna to be enough. BTK right now, keep them topped out. You, Yato picks oh, off the basic, and this might be what the I am from the middle of the United States. To be able to take on this first Lord, however, you can see that Kush needed to get topped up. They need to get some health from a minion. Yeah, in not far at all. Here. He is very low. Four members of BTK in good distance, keeping their eyes on. Basic oh, struggling on Lixie. Is Nicolette? Nicolette picks up the kill there. This starts an Yo, but lo the kill Milo Black loses Dragon his life. Is out, but not able to answer back just yet. One to one apiece right now. Good positioning on Devious Activity. Moba Zane looking for an, an opportunity sitting here on the the golden dragon uh, Kai here waiting to find himself to go in with that heavy spin you see the rest of BTK coming in here is Kush taken down very oh, low. Oh, I need a, like, a back massage, bro. health left on it. As now we continue to dance. BTK oh, backs off now. Kush I hit, very low. I hit Look some, like, weights last night, and, and I can really out. feel it. Razor's Wrath is out as a well. Ooh, here comes the Mobazay got the Lord! The yo, yo, the they're able to take down Mikasa as well. Huge dub, huge dub. You have to disengage. That's a huge dub. BTK, 11 minutes in, they got the Lord marching down on the bottom side. And it seems like they got the advantage in the objectives, too. And even in the enemy jump wow. here. So BTK, with a small snowball, even just a 3K gold lead, they're pushing all DA back 
into their base now da they still have the ability to you know have the late game shredding right get the carry online set the vex on a up for a good team fight we have t and kush both on heroes that they're so exceptionally well at you know try to get uh the carry online i think is going to be the most important thing that da has to be able to turn this game around for them and right now they are forced to a turtle into their base we have the lord coming down at bottom and bloodthirsty kings make short work of the last mid tower before the high grounds now left to only high grounds minions coming from bottom and top conceal play is out looking to put some damage out here comes the full barrage on the back side with the nether realm out as well diving deep is the side of devious activity looking for an opportunity but they're getting bursted down nicolette finds a kill onto mikasa the rest of devious activity forced back into their base wow what a team fight coming out from btk you even had basic their full barraging right in front of the tower you had the yuzong coming in the akai and all the members of btk they were just all stuck together even when the side of devious had members on the back side the final slash coming out from t displacement that was insane but they are also the ability to kind of kite back peel and just zone from the side of btk that was you know exceptional in that team fight this is why this match has been such a uh you know great match for all the viewers out there they're all so excited for this because these are two kings two crowns fighting for that second and third place slot yeah, and right now you can see here, I mean, the 2K gold lead uh, by Mielo, uh over the XP mm. lane right now. And he's just having a, a just a much better game right now than Mikasa is to find opportunities for that Black Dragon. Mm. And are we starting to see a trend of damage in the XP lane? At least to my knowledge here, Night Milo has built just pure physical damage in the last two games and you know of course there he's not gonna have a lot when of did call world he can't soak up and tank any ultimates but he has the ability to have the kill pressure and if it's a one versus one uh, situation too expensive for an nyc lose against especially comparing all the members from the side of da yeah and right now you can see oh. da looking for an opportunity right now mobs ain't kind of oh. baiting them out <laughs> I think he knows that they're in there just waddling his way around the map right now looking for the rest of da and this is kind of what we saw from the first game both teams trying to be very patient oh my god yeah, and i'm so surprised they didn't jump on zane uh, right there kind of uh in contention from what we're seeing from mikasa who just yeah, is why i mean why you think it was special my problem when i saw I got, the on as as I oh oh da Yo, they didn't go for that go ahead they're looking to they're gonna assault the can they come in there 10 percent left on there big fight happening you have gonna force the load realm has been activated full barrage from nice good Warding zone good zane. zone zane good zone Lord for his pocket. get out get out get out get out milo a little too deep able to get out as well nicolette a little bit of pressure did we see oh cold world misses the all just for good measure has an appreciation not only did btk grab up that lord milo was able to push out the bot side tower before rotating in they got the inner inhibitor before the lord even came down vegas now, is just easier is to do because the hotels are fast like fashion so cheap. I is going to be able to get the defense on this but again another good play especially when you compare the kits of a yuzong versus the paquita right the, the flights are normally cheap to la to kill a lot of the minions fast the hotels the are kind of cheap rotating but side of bdk can just honestly look for disengage so this is btk's game they have the drop i think this ggs here yeah black dragon is out flying through the air looking for an opportunity but just not able to get the target that we all thought he would cold world oh suppressive fire the assault the back line as they lay on the damage onto this tower looking for an opportunity moba zane with a heavy spin they're not able to get this high ground just yet I'm oh, gonna say, oh i was gonna say a successful defense Yo, as they're gonna go ahead and, and then they lose cold, cold world, world gets taken down by devious activity Everything's yeah, cheaper in Vegas, 100%. LA was pressure. expensive, kind of dude. And it was also a little bit too far away from the airport. Devious, they still have the ability to just, it was like a know, pretty long drive to the, the venue. That late game, the Vexana has the burst on basic and T, you know, with the mobility that he has, can get onto the backside. But the setup for these Devious fights, you know, the impact that uh, Milo has right now, even though he's just 3-3-3, three, 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 he's just a lot more mobile compared to the Yuzan. Look at this. 
you know, DTK, they're still running the bananas. Uh, they're, the they're MGM is uh, pretty cheap. Strategy, leaving the pack on the you can, uh... lane, far lane of the Lord, and it's doing work. They, 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 they've used this strategy almost every single time, especially uh, in their last game. Uh, Luxor. Uh, Luxor, I think uh, when I looked no up a room, on it was only... It was only well, like, uh, I think maybe like 520 the bucks for the Miel four days. Be able to split into that, into that lane and be able to kind of save Vegas the on the other with, side of the uh, world. Push. So now there's something Sheesh. you have to answer for it. And you're really taking Yuzong out of what his entire it was like 520. Was, which is to be able to get to that back line, get the basic, get that pet. So it's not super and expensive. Potentially, uh, take I definitely down, get my own hotel room. Yet to be able to do this entire game. I've yet to see a black dragon out there that has successfully gone in and get gotten a pet yeah like spirit spirits yeah, got it right that da still has that it's the carry with the full build 11k gold on him he's pretty much fully stacked out other members of da are missing just an item or two but if they're able to push this game back let's say like another five minutes defend this lord they should be able to grab up their last item and then G, you don't bring the ladies that themselves how many they're lady friends you know long run <laughs> jesus it feels like they have a, lo a little bit more advanced. He said, like, get it, G. I'll bring the ladies. <laughs> I'm having a pizza party, apparently. So oh, it actually might be a little bit of a, a play here right now as the Lord is down to about one third health, looking for the rest of DA, and they drag it out and reset it. <laughs> this has been yeah. the uh, the game here between BTK and Are you and half Asian? Your taste right buds now, Asian? Still looking for an opportunity, and this is kind of the same way. No ladies till Sunday evening? Damn, we can't have, have a pizza party till Sunday evening? At about half health, then BTK spring on him, are able to get the CC on him. Ooh, a little bit of a fight down here, and Yellow in trouble it does activate that immortality mobazane sees it final slash is out melon finds the kill on Tamiel. that is one down look at the minions look at the minions seconds too late the now, minions back door nah, pizza party's different to all right damage on. is it gonna be enough no full way. barrage from basic to push the players to the and risks <laughs> team proxies immortality mobazane had him pinned against the tower yeah, no way DA was able to come back in that fight. You saw Melon's position. He was just hiding on the boss side tower. I thought he was going to be able to just cleave all the members of BTK, but Zane looking there for a loyal girl in, late in Vegas. The tower, able to get that. Now, I do want to talk about this though. Milo on the top side, you saw him getting chased by Yuzon the whole entire time they were Lord dancing. He got yeah, got minions it. to crash onto the inner tower. And now DA doesn't even have insurance on the top and bot side. It's just going to be slow pushing. I feel like Milo has done his job great. Now, you know, the side of BTK, they definitely just look to group up near the mid, have the top and the bot push by themselves. And they should be able to just grab a four versus five fight, you know, when the time comes here. Yeah, and right now, I mean, this has been the, the 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 push that we've continued to see from DA, and this is where BTK has been shining. Uh, we have the good positioning, uh, both oh, XP coming. laners up at the top lane, about 33% health. Oh, do you have a concealed play? Coldwell coming around for the flank. Oh. Does find an I'm offended. Down comes the Eternal Guardian. Basic, basic finds a kill onto Melon with that full barrage. Looking for an XP. Kush finds the final retribution onto the Lord, but he is going to pay for it with his life. The blind hook coming out from Cole, that's crazy. He's able to pick up Melon and especially with the full barrage, but now bot side. Yeah, Mikasa in trouble. Look at me. Yeah, oh, sorry, Chad. I already, I already kind of know what happened. I had to, I had to go prep a player. <laughs> Here comes Mobazane. This is game. A clean sweep and BTK GGs. continue their dominating ways. In the ball. Oh man, the blind setup come out from Cole singling out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to go prep the the Milo MVP. Or well, no, I wouldn't say the MVP, but dominating in the XP, he doesn't have the best KDA, but. He, he, he had the Zane, Zane said, what the fuck, the man? Interview me. Denied the Yuzong early on. The Bokito pick was great. Yeah. And, and you know, it's like this bull crap. The, the point given, he, they uh, decided <laughs> DA picked the Yuzong 
at the last slot and end up losing <laughs> the lane. That's not something we he want said. To I see turned my happen. camera on for all this and not to get yeah, interviewed. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I, and I want to say, like, uh, right from the draft when I saw the Yu Zong, the, the biggest thing that I see a lot of teams do is they put a lot of pressure onto that lane, a lot of early ganks where Yu Zong isn't going to be able to escape. Then you kind of shut he did. down. Yeah, it seemed like it. To get that black dragon to get into the back lines and be a nuisance. He's like, this bullcrap. Very unfortunate <laughs> for devious activity and their game plan here and just a, a different game from the first uh, from the first one between btk and devious activity uh but very dominant uh for the side i'd be awesome teams. i'd be awesome and it definitely feels like the side of btk their strategy is coming together quite well right zane just put him on a utility jungle right that's the main thing and then they put this four-man death ball i'll pair it up with basic and just have basic carry along with nicolette and then they almost <laughs> always said. toss milo on a split pushing hero we've seen the uranus come through we've seen the pack come through the benedetta those are the heroes that milo has it's a very kind of almost blacklist centric or it's crazy even where they're just doing a lot of banana split that was push, for my my normal crazy mlbb after dark up. and if a team does not have any split push to deal with it right the yu zong <laughs> It's not going to be able to split push against uh, a Benedetta or a Uranus or even the Paquito. And and look at it. I, I ate some orange chicken and rice. Okay, securing the win with the two and zero. <laughs> you can see here, rich guy Melon. Even though I mean, uh, able to still kind of keep his gold up through here, but damage dealt. Nicolette from <laughs> the mid lane, and then damage taken. We talked about it, Mobazane. I mean, what? even on the how Akai, do you stay still so a, skinny? A force for BTK. What's your secret? These opportunities and did not. I don't. I think oh, he missed God. one single retro. Are you sugar? Here, and that was the last one. Kush that's got it. it though, and there's one brownie a day. That's all. That's all that keeps the and create that game. Uh, uh, winning push. <laughs> yeah, the Kabash on the Kush. You know, there's plenty of moments where DA kind of showed greatness in a lot of the team fights. Kush got that two, three man bonk on the top. Show, side show that Esmeralda. Off left Hold on, the right. interview is coming up. Early game, you know, Esmeralda. Kush, uh, on the Nolan, getting the retributions. On oh, the you, only, you only get the face. Trades, getting those burst. Like, DA showed greatness uh, pretty much throughout there's the whole the booty. series. But again, BTK just kind you only of get a quick glance them with the split push overwhelmed them with the, the patience you only get a quick I'm glance at the booty you're right there kush shows That's greatness right. but btk <laughs> the whole entire series what the fuck? again btk just kind of overwhelmed Flip it. <laughs> them with the split push overwhelmed yeah. them with the, the patience as ain't had there the fucking right chat there, kush showed greatness but <laughs> btk showed that they're better than great and we know what that means a goat meal oh man that play i was screaming i love to see a backdoor and then the fact that he was able to carry that through was just so much fun to watch yeah, and it was, uh, I want to say the solidifying game plan for Miela was to put him on these, as uh, Yui pointed out, these heavy attack XP <laughs> laners, especially Split ones push. that were able to close the distance and move around the map oh very quickly. Oh god, so you guys fucking kill me. Split pushing, and then if their team needed them at the Lord, they were able to close the distance very quickly there as well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a very good strategy. Uh, and it fits with the Zane style where they're just willing to wait out uh, a lot of these team fights to get a be happy like, today. I'm always happy. Advantage. You go four versus four. It's almost 50 50 most of the time. But you got Milo pushing on the top side, dominating the, the tower. And then Milo comes in first before the enemy XP. That's a five versus four. That's a fight that, you know, the he said I sell screenshots of as Ash. <laughs> every single one of these teams and a big booty. Do that. And they have done it. It's just the execution that they had. You create, build. you create. Create a criminals. It was great. And guess who the MVP goes to? The goat Milo. <laughs> a lot of screensavers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can see here. I mean, this was kind of the first a game where Mielo, I mean, wasn't exactly having trouble, but I mean, it was a very hard to kind of lock down onto Melon into that back line as well. Mielo able to find himself some pickoffs, but the, the true story of the game was him creating that those problems from the side lanes, continuing the pushes onto the yeah, side. Yeah, there's lanes. an ACT while tomorrow. Yes. In the mid yes. Lane, uh, or do not get Easter off. These lords. Uh, and then you see here on the Paquito, this was the first, and this spelled the doom for the Yuzong right from the opening seconds of the second game. And, you know, this is kind of sparking, uh, sparking this fire that BTK has long had. But 
you know they didn't have the best opening especially in the regular season early on but definitely i don't think anything's open right up. now though uh again i feel like it's the snowball of confidence that they had against gg and now it seems like the team is even more synergized they're all in the same place and they've done so well in today's series for sure, and with the GOAT Milo as well as the CW Airlines, I'm sure that's going to be enough to fly a BTK all the way to Vegas. But before that, we have an interview with everybody knows the GOAT Milo himself. The GOAT! Milo, I've Mielo. seen you a lot recently. How does it feel to be back at the center stage again? Why don't you just wear your jersey next time? <laughs> Why don't you just like wear your jersey? It smells like shark. I haven't washed it yet. It smells That's like shark. What is it? What yeah. is it? Oh. It's the rare M3 Wait, BTK so do jersey. Do you not have your own jersey? Not yet. What is going on? Ah. I have a bunch of TOB ones. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to get jersey. swapped out. Updated? I'll, I'll show you the updated with standings the after this. On the front with the crown. <laughs> Go Milo himself. <laughs> so, now, soon, soon. let's break down. Soon, yes. Let's break down the match just now. So first game, you had there was a little bit of trouble <laughs> in the early game with the Hanabi. Did you guys find Hanabi a good pick? Nah, he's a Nihor. Was insane. It only works with that Angela because um, if you guys didn't mm -hmm. know, Hanabi's passive is when she has a shield, she doesn't get stunned, right? So when she has that Angela shield with that flask with her AGs, she's just like a mm -hmm. walking well hitting us and like impossible to kill pretty much like no one can touch her so we concluded so pretty early on yeah the, the best way to mm -hmm. just win is just split out macro it was okay, so who team. called that split push who called that split uh, push just we, we know basic lights that doing that banana <laughs> split before uh was he the one who called you guys to do that split push oh no nah, no nah, nah. i told basic let me cook this ETK is how you do it. Oh my phone this is how you do it okay <laughs> <laughs> no i'm playing oh, uh basic no. was actually calling it a no, mm -hmm. I, all kidding aside, Basic was calling split push actually. Because I, I was confused, mm -hmm. bro. That had to be was unkillable. Yeah, we and definitely when, need to watch when that. he called that split push, did you, were you prepared for it? Like, did, they did fixing you doubt it? him for any second in doing that? Um, it's not like when you split push, you're not trying to end the game. You're just trying to. Oh, did it say, did it Milo, instead of uh, Milo, it said, side, oh my foe? Team, maybe poke a couple people. Mm -hmm. uh, you never really know when they're going to be not really focus on the minion wave and then i just end the game so so when you ended that happen. game there what, what what was going on in the voice chat like what, what were That's you feeling funny. as well oh, nothing. they working. thought they lost they were they lost lord bro they they thought oh, really? we lost I, was, I, I i already knew it was over i don't need to tell them I just mm -hmm. let me end the game yeah because i <laughs> i noticed from the face cams basic when when you actually ended the game basic was like like, yo, <laughs> let's go! Yeah, he was a proud, he was a proud father. He He's a proud that. father. That's my Benny Cutie man right there. Def you've definitely made all the fans <laughs> proud. You made Basic proud, and you made you all made of us Basic proud. proud. Now, noticing from your build now, you actually build a boy called Basic Daddy. As an XP lane, is that a norm for XP now? Uh, with split push heroes, yes. Uh, Paquito, Bennett. Only those guys, pretty much. Uh, the other ones just build that uh, hybrid or full tank still. A humble Mello, goat. Teach, uh, some lessons here. So everybody take notes. Now, would you rate you your team's performance today against uh, DA? How would oh. you rate it? I'd say it's like a 6 out of 10. We Damn. Okay, we said we would play more, but honestly, last week we only played one scrim. We couldn't find the time to do it. Uh, a lot of people are busy, unfortunately. We'll we'll wait for playoffs to start grinding scrims, <laughs> I guess. Very modest answer here. I like it. I mean, every team that we've an we've interviewed today said that <laughs> Take no, scrims, we already knew. Yes, nobody Law. is scrimming with you guys. Maybe they're, oh, well, they're not scrimming afraid us. of they're how strong you guys are. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to scrim us. They're scared. Yeah. Yes, T-Rex is strong. Uh, T-Rex would say it's fear. It's fear. My man T-Rex. Um, I mean, it's, it is it is a competition out there, so everybody is trying to get that covetous spot to get to uh, Vegas. But it looks like um, CW Airlines is getting you guys. Elos, so hella crazy. They have, uh, have um, escalated oh, there no. on that rank. 
and so much all my fucking headphones are dying once again congratulations Milo. this week you've definitely proved that you are the star player in btk i mean no from last week when we interviewed you're like oh i'm so sorry to my team but this week you are one first game mellow <laughs> damn she likes me you want to say out there to uh, everyone who supports <laughs> you support the goat su support btk uh well thank you guys for <laughs> supporting us there's a lot of them it's like it's like 90 percent btk in the chat and uh, for btk mm. fans out there start spamming it in chat btk 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 btk, BTK. BTK. I like it. I like it, Milo. Love that jersey. I love to see you back here. Continue that awesome performance, and we'll see you tomorrow. Sheesh. Bye. -bye. <laughs> <laughs> I it's like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Continue. I, yeah, I was about to say it's interesting that you brought up that wow. uh, in his uh, in one of the interviews there he was apologizing to the fans yeah. about she... his performance and swearing that he was going to do better and definitely came back very strong. She... Showed that in this game it was I mean it was a kind of a a, a yellow highlight reel there. Yellow trying to uh, trying to bag the Liz. Like, course, the entire team trying to bag the Liz. The roll there. See you at three a.m. Uh, when it came to I want to say like. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the game winning uh, pushes and being able to create that pressure away from the lord and in those lanes um yellow definitely uh, the highlight there yeah no i mean yeah he, he definitely did super well in that series Let's giving go. btk pretty much uh, three points in their standings and that that pretty much crazy pushes up their regular season Woo! standings quite high. I think it's just going to be right after gaming gladiators and the same amount of points. Oh, yeah, standing, standing, standings. Oh, are they still the same points, BTK and Fiends? Not very yeah. good at math here, obviously. Uh, I think both get 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely this series yep, was yep, so much yep. fun to watch. I always love uh, unconventional play that leads to a victory and that was nobody even thought that that was going to happen like none of the cameras oh you guys are going to get a, that moment a at the glimpse of the esme booty but then afterwards we saw the replay <laughs> I mean, all right these are the current crazy. standings right now yeah, it's as you can see everybody's played five matches kind of the difference between we got up here. It's those, uh, those tiny little a one two loss on gg realize, bro, there mm -hmm. is no beans and btk are now tied what are we gonna do and then the call is made to just <laughs> all right we just need to start split pushing we need to start getting those side lanes uh create pressure gg else. And just, uh, that's the kind of the beans BTK tied right now. Night Horde one point behind, yeah, so not too bad. Definitely come with a lot of ex experience and a lot of wrong shot calls. And this time around, BTK and then Night Horde yes, and Legacy. Now, crazy sides. thing tomorrow is Legacy and Bloodhounds face tomorrow. I think I said Night Horde. Legacy and Bloodhounds face tomorrow. So someone's yeah, gonna absolutely. win. And I definitely feel One like of them are giving a win. Back to his prime. We've seen <laughs> Who him will it be? More of this Who game. knows? He confident. He has the support that he needs. And that's so important because as a jungler, especially with Zane's playstyle, he needs someone who he believes is going to peel for him at all times. And Pro World is- Is it impossible to call it a draw? Let's see how they do in the future. <laughs> now let's take a look at today's- uh, No. First half, we had a pretty standard day. Uh, we had a Dark Horse Fiends continue to cement their dominance with a All right, all right, all right. And Bloodhound and Legacy. If you guys want to see for effort. the but remaining. In game. So we have However, six and seven. Form them into victory points. Now, the last series of night, BTK 4.0 proved Which that drop. they are the kings and they are the kings with the I'll goat. drop in the chat the for you guys. Just goated. Miello got that last. Oh, I can't even put that many words in there. To the butts. Definitely. Yeah, I want to say amazing. today, uh, basically, <laughs> the story today is uh, a lot of teams 
uh, cementing their status right it's, now. It's 500 words too much. So tomorrow we have Bloodhounds versus I Legacy right out the gecko. The Area 77 versus Night Horde. Uh, BTK versus Fiends. And then GG versus Devious Activity. So tomorrow, technically, BTK is going to be fighting for that second place spot. Will, will BTK be able to take out Fiends and take that number two spot? Or do they stay in the number two or the number three spot I was the same way looking at it I was like or can this doesn't always play or can uh Night Horde beat Area 77 and then exceed BTK so if we talk about some of the previous matches sweep against A77 from Fiends is quite we'll see we'll see it was a little bit unfortunate Bloodhounds and Legacy did not go for their uprising but soon I think those two are going to be playing against each other so somebody's going to get a win at some point of time um, and you know, with the rest of the matches, it's every single match has been quite good today. Uh, you there's know, probably a tiebreaker coming into it. Yeah. That, uh, maybe some there might be a tiebreaker coming in for the, the, the second side, seed. Definitely good matches throughout the day. Beans is such a yeah, surprise to be match. honest, bro. This whole season has been a hundred percent such a pro surprise all the way through. And let's take a look at the standings and if anything has changed today. So private run us through it. Well, I don't really think much has a changed here. Uh, a couple of points maybe have changed, but the leaders are kind of still cementing their way in. Gaming Gladiators at the top with 13 points. Sheesh. Teens and Blood Crazy. In All right, chat. With I got to go to a meet an NACT uh, meeting. Let me do the NACT meeting. Well, actually, I might be playing MLBB. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. We'll see. Points. Uh, but until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're going to be doing the giveaway for the diamonds and the 15 epic sins for tomorrow or the month until then peace out these teams especially if they're getting these 2-0 sweeps they can